Welcome now to Poplar Bluff. It is day three, championship day of the 35th annual Poplar Bluff Showdown. I'm Frankie Castile, and beginning the game today, it is Poplar Bluff, it is Hillcrest, and joining me right now on the set, we've got head coach of Poplar Bluff, Coach Will Durden. And here this afternoon, Coach, obviously seventh place up for grabs, not where the team wants to be. And you told me a moment ago that in this tournament, is there really a place a team wants to be taking on Hillcrest? They're coming out looking pretty good early on. What are your thoughts here against the Vikings in about 14 minutes? <laughs> Man, that's, it's, it's been the same way and probably the same thing with every team that if I had to talk about them, they all play hard and they got a lot of good athletes. It's, you know, it's been a, a nice tournament to watch, especially as a fan, to see some of these guys get out here and play and, and do their thing. And uh, Hillcrest is just another one of those teams. And looking at the, you know, looking at last night, we got down by as many as 21, and we still come back and we pulled as much as we possibly could. That tells me that our team, they don't quit. <laughs> they don't. They don't. But Little Rock Christian was really good. I mean, they. They, they really locked down on, on defense at the beginning of the game, and, man, they got some dudes that could <laughs> to do some things. I mean, we we struggled there early, but the guys didn't. They fought back, and, uh, you know, the fourth quarter, we just came out and was like, hey, let's play as hard as we can, and, and whatever happens, happens. And I thought, you know, they, they did really good with it, and, you know, it's something that – as coach, you can go home and, and feel okay about. We scored 39 points in that fourth quarter, a season high. Let's replicate that in this game. What do you think? <laughs> I'll be okay if it's 2-0 to zero us. There you go. And then looking at Hillcrest, I mean, obviously, they've got a kid, Jordan Allen, a 5'11 junior. He has had a phenomenal tournament. What do you do? How do you stop this kid and limit his touches? He is averaging about 20 points in this tournament thus far. Uh, we really got to fill the middle when he gets the ball and uh, help and try to close down the driving lanes. He's been really effective going downhill and getting out in transition and scoring. Um, he hasn't shot it you know, real, really well so far, but I've watched some game film and he's lit it up. So, you know, he's going to be a tough out for us and we're just going to have to lock horns with him and, and, and try to guard him. You've seen two games by Hillcrest and you've seen obviously our two games. What are some things that you want to clean up after the first two games here in this tournament as you guys take on Hillcrest? Uh, we just got to get better overall. I mean, there, there's a lot of things you can nitpick at as a coach. And, but then you go and watch film and it's like, man, we, our, our guys are competing. They're playing hard. And But, you know, there's, there's some things offensively we definitely can do better. And, you know, I, wish, I would like to get out and transition and, and, uh, and, and score more points that way because it, we struggled last night in our half-court offense. And then my last question, Coach, to, to beat Hillcrest, I mean, obviously it's easier up here talking about it, but to beat Hillcrest and get a win in this tournament, what's it going to come down to in your mind? We're going to need to get back in transition, and we're going to need to fill the middle on their drives. All right, Coach, thank you so much for the time. Best of luck to you. We'll see you guys afterwards. All right, thanks. Head Coach Will Durden joining us live here as we begin our pregame presented by First Midwest Bank. We are live in Poplar Bluff. It is the first first of four games that we're going to have for you today. Obviously, the Mules game is going to be on the radio. Also, we are streaming it on Facebook and on YouTube. i tell you what, Tim, Brian Jackson already on the Facebook chat right now. He is saying the Blyville Chicks are ready for tonight. So you and I were talking. I know we're talking about Bluff right now. We were talking how are we going to be able to bring that crowd that we had last night during that, that uh, semifinal game, which in my mind could have been championship game. It had that feel to it. I was wondering literally all night long, are we going to be able to match that enthusiasm on Facebook, on YouTube, honestly, I think we will. I think coming up later tonight, it's going to be a rocking time. So, Brian, so glad you're a part of this. And, by the way, we'll be talking about this all night long. I got a call this morning very, very early. And later on tonight, during the championship game, we're going to be giving away a gift card of $100. It is courtesy of Academy Sports and Outdoors. My good friend Gene Hux at Academy called me up and said, you know what, I've got to be a part of this. What can I do? And I said, here's what I would want to see happen. And he said, mark me down. So coming up tonight, we're going to give away that gift card during the championship game. 
and I'll tell you how you're. I'll tell you how that you can be entered to win. All you've got to do is share the Facebook feed, subscribe to our YouTube channel, and we'll be selecting a winner coming up during the halftime or sometime during that championship game later on tonight. Paula Webb is tuning in. Afternoon to you as well, Miss Paula. Glad you're tuning in for some Popper Bluff Mules basketball as we begin the first of four games right here at the Popper Bluff Showdown. Coming up next, we'll get you to who we believe are going to be the starting lineups. We are back in just a moment. You're listening and watching Mules Basketball on the Southeast Sign and Graphics Mules Radio Network. All right, we are back now with the Hillcrest Vikings coach, head coach Christopher Adams, and coach here this afternoon. Your team, I like about this team is, even though it's the first game of the afternoon, they are coming out and they look like they are playing for a championship this afternoon. As always, every time we hit the floor, we feel like we're playing for a championship. You got to come out, no matter the game, early morning game, comprehensive game, you you going to be wanting to play at all times. You know, we're talking about this team a lot here this afternoon, and obviously in my mind it's all going to begin with Jordan Allen, 23 points yesterday, Coach, and your team was able to score 12 points off of turnovers. Pop or bluff, they get a little bit fast sometimes. So in your mind, how critical will it be for your team to get out in transition, make turnovers, but most importantly turn those turnovers into points? Uh, that's, that, that's what we want to do. It. That, that we come in the game. Is we, we come in and try to force turnovers for we get in transition, get easy buckets. We want to get as many easy buckets you can. It ain't all about the half court. It's about the transition game as well. You have to be able to pay both. Of them. We want to get out of get out of run and create turnovers. One thing that you guys did very well yesterday against Germantown, get to the free throw line, 14 out of 31. Obviously, you're not happy with that number, obviously. What can you guys do again today to get to that free throw line, maybe as much as you guys did last night? Man, we just got to capitalize on the free throws. We, I think we made free throws yesterday. I think it's a better ball game. But that's how the game goes. How the ball about some days you make free throws some days. Now, sometimes I think it's a mental thing. But if we still get to the free throw line and, and get extra points with a, with a clock stop, I think we'd be a whole lot better today. They got to make the free throw, capitalize on it. You know, what's amazing is this is the first game. And obviously, I really feel like that uh, there, there's no home court advantage here today because you guys brought a lot of folks with you. And your folks, man, they are loud at cheering on the Vikings here today. Yeah, that's good. I'm happy you have a uh, have a team uh, come down here to chill us out. We need it. And so we just want to come out and play it so that we got to get a win before we go back to Memphis. Six minutes to go before tip off. In your mind to beat Popper Bluff, get a win in this tournament, what's it going to come down to in your mind? Uh, cut down, turnover, rebound, and defense. All right, Coach Adams, thank you so much for a great tournament. And good luck to you guys today and going forward the rest of your season. Thank you. You betcha. Coach Adams here joining us live as we continue on the pregame. We are coming up now under six minutes until we tip off between Poplar Bluff and Hillcrest. And I'll tell you what, Coach Adams, man, he has made himself available every day for us, and we appreciate him. And, of course, Coach Adams is a class act all the way at Hillcrest and his team. Believe me when I tell you that this team by Hillcrest, they are coming out. They look like they are fired up and they are ready to play. Miss Paula, thank you so much for the share. We appreciate that. You're entered to win, I promise you, that $100 courtesy of Academy Sports and Outdoors. And last night was so phenomenal when you talk about in terms of how many people that we had watching our live stream, how many people shared it, how many folks commented. The comments in that last, that last two games, they came in so fast, I literally, I could not keep up. It was that it was that phenomenal. I was overwhelmed with all the response. And by seeing Brian on there right now telling me that he is ready for Blyville tonight, that tells me all I need to know that that game between Haywood and Blyville, at least right now, 
I've got no reason to believe otherwise. I believe that matchup may come down to possibly the fourth quarter, maybe even the final possession, and that's what this tournament is all about. All right, four minutes to go before tip-off. Coming up, we will have the official lineups. We will have your national anthem. It is Popper Bluff. It is Hillcrest. It is our first game of the afternoon. Seventh place is up for grabs coming up when we come back. You're listening and watching Mules Basketball on the Southeast Sign and Graphics Mules Radio Network. Breathe easier and extend the life of your HVAC system plus fewer repair bills with Air Solutions Comprehensive Maintenance Plan. You'll save money and get the peace of mind that only comes from calling Air Solutions 785-1500. Want a career and not just another job? It's waiting for you at Briggs & Stratton. Great pay, great benefits, and continuing education. Everything you and your family deserve. Go to careers.basco.com and look at Poplar Bluff job openings. All right, welcome back now to uh, Popper Bluff. We are moments away from the opening uh, tip-off here this afternoon. And, of course, I've got my good friend John Scott with us right now, the Popper Bluff R1 School Board Presidente. John Scott joining me. And, man, we're so glad to have you back on set. And I'm listening to you talk, and it's like you've done 26 basketball games the last two weeks. Well, I'll tell you, Frankie, those games last night were excellent, and that'll wear a person out. And the hard part, man, you watch a couple games like that, you get juiced up and can't sleep. It took me a long time to get to sleep last it night. It took me a long time. We got out of here super late last night. I mean, it was almost 11 o'clock. We'll have much more on that coming up when we come back. We're going to go down courtside for our national anthem. Or what? No, we're not. I guess we're going to do it later. So all the teams, I was confused by that one because all the teams, I guess we're going to do it before the championship game possibly. Yeah, I don't know. a little tricky 2.30 p.m., the elusive 2.30 p.m. game. But it's good to be here, Frankie. You know, if I'm, not, if I'm not mistaken, i got to go back and check our books. But I think, did we not play the elusive 230 championship game last year, too? I think we did. I think we did. <laughs> I think it was, I think it was at the, the elusive it's a, it's championship a, game. It's an honor to get to play this early on a Friday because then it frees up the rest of your evening. Except for tonight, there's going to be some... Great basketball. This tournament has been excellent. Good quality teams. Well, whenever you a lot say, of parody. when you say it frees up your afternoon, <laughs> it might free up your afternoon. Yeah. But for Tim and myself, we're still going to be <laughs> here, <laughs> and we yeah. could be here it's well gonna, into yeah. the night. Right on. But no, those games last night, man, exciting. There's going to be some good ball tonight played. All these teams are really good. Pretty close and at parity, and uh, anybody can beat anybody in a given game. It's it's fun. Good it, good high school. It basketball. really is. By the way, the starting five for Hillcrest: Jared Mackey, Jordan Allen, Xavier Heron, and Caleb Campbell, and La Perez Dyson. For Popper Bluff, our starting five is as follows: Isaiah Neville, Darius Graham, Gavin Rivers, Torrance Williams, David Durbin. So. 
bottom line is, I talked to Coach Jordan earlier on, but the way Hillcrest comes out, this may not be a traditional seventh place game. They want to win. They want to win today. Oh, absolutely. Every every game is a new season, and these kids all have a lot of pride, and they want to come out of here with a win. Both teams have had a couple of close games and really want to get that win today, hopefully for the kids. I like to see the Mules come out with some intensity right from the go. I think they've been a little bit nervous with some of these teams, coming out a little bit slow early on. but. I think they've they've had a couple of tough games in this game today. They should be loose and they should be able to play. And I want to see a big win. I got to tell you real fast, my boy Brian Jackson from Blyville. I was thinking how we're going to maintain that intensity of what we had last night, viewership wise. He's letting me know that tonight this place is going to be rocking full of Blyville fans. I know they'll be watching back in Blyville. He did tell me I've got the maroon on. For the, for the mules, obviously, but he did say that after tonight, I'll still be a part of that uh, chick family. So that's awesome. Oh, that is, man. That's I'm awesome. gonna make. I'm gonna go down to a home game down I do. there. I want to go and, down and, and get some it. good barbecue down there first off. Go down to Dixie Pig that's and then right. head over to the game and watch the crowd. I don't want to watch the game. I'm just gonna watch the crowd. That's what I'm talking about. Here we go. It's gonna be Jared Mackey, Torrance Williams. It is tipped all the way to a Hillcrest, and we are underway. It is the first of four games this afternoon live in Poplar Bluff. Going to be a lot of fun too. Seventh place is up for grabs. Jordan Allen, I did turn in my all-tournament team and believe me when I tell you that Jordan Allen, he was on my list. Oh yeah, excellent basketball player. If he doesn't make the all-tournament team, I riot tonight. <laughs> <laughs> it'll be a fake. It'll be a fake vote or a stolen election, right? I right. tell you what, <laughs> Allen, long three-pointer. That's Ooh. what I'm talking about. Yeah. That's money. That's what I'm talking about. Three-point basket to begin the ball game. Three zip. And now we're looking at David Durbin. It's going to go out of bounds off of David Durbin. By the way, Grandma Jackie tuning in. Oh, they're going to turn it over now. Going to give it right back to the Mules. The officials got together. Good call by Pat Sarda there and says, you know what, we're going to give it back to the Mules. But Grandma Jackie is tuning in from Bluff. She has the dogs all in, ready to go for Mules basketball. Isaiah Neville, good shot on the inbound. He's got two points, good assist by David Durbin. Hopefully she has a good bag of treats because there's going to be a lot of them handed out today. Oh, I Tim, feel it coming. I'm going to have to ban Tim Simpson from our, our feed right now. He's letting us know it's sunny down there and beautiful. Jacksonville, Florida, 77 degrees. Are you kidding me? Nice, nice. We're getting nothing but rain up here, Tim, just so you know. Thank you for letting us know. I'm jealous now. I should go down to Jacksonville, Florida, pull up our feet and call the game there. You know, it's nice. I spent a few days in Jacksonville one time. Never it was been really there. a nice place. It was. Never been there. Isaiah Neville's shot is no good. He gets his own rebound, though. Good job by Isaiah Neville getting that loose ball rebound. Gavin Rivers now. He gets up. We're going to get a travel instead. Taking one too many steps. You know, did you realize last night, and I guess with everything going on, even I didn't realize it to an extent, but Popper Bluff was down in that ball game, 21 points. Oh. And we were able to come they back. They did not quit, hey, man. This we team, scored 39 yes. in the fourth quarter alone. That's that's remarkable that against impressive. a quality opponent. Three-point basket by Jordan Allen is no good. A good rebound there by Torrance Williams. Tim Simpson says, I'm always welcome in Jacksonville, but leave John behind. <laughs> no, he didn't say that. Well, I don't play golf, but we stayed at some golf place down there that everybody talks about, and it was kind of funny because I didn't. But I, I appreciated the beauty of the place, I'll say that. And it was it was nice. I'd never really been down that area. It's big, you know. It's a, it's a big city. It took a long time to get from the airport, but we had a good time down there. It was fun. Gavin Rivers picks up his first foul. 3-2 now the score. By the way, John, you weren't listening. You were talking to, I think, uh, Coach Bill Ray with FCA earlier, who does a phenomenal job, by the way. But uh, I got a call last night, or this morning, actually, from a good buddy of mine. Maybe you know him, Gene Hux of Academy Sports and Outdoors. Tonight, during that Blyville basketball game against Haywood, we are going to give away a gift card. You ready for this? It is worth $100, and we'll give that away coming up uh, later on tonight. I'm not eligible to win that, am You're I? not I'm eligible. Not that I would know <laughs> whatever question if you got trivia. No, actually, I don't, I'm not sure how we're going to do it yet. Yeah. I'm not sure how we're going to do it. Braden Durden now going to check in, or Brendan Durden rather going to check in for Isaiah Neville. Still 3-2 to two now the score. Remember, share the video feed, and you'll be eligible to win that gift card coming up during that championship game. 
And we're going to get a whistle, an offensive foul away from the ball. Going to be on at number 10, Caleb Campbell. And that will be the first foul by the Vikings as well. Well, you know that game yesterday, Frankie, for the Mules, really a good teaching moment for the coach to let those kids understand. They can hang 39 points on that team in a quarter, come all the way back. If they can play with them like that, they can play with anybody we're going to play the rest of the regular season for sure. Three-point basket is no good by Darius Graham on the move now. Here comes Jordan Allen. Oh, what a move inside to a wide open Caleb Campbell. And that's why I selected Jordan Allen on my all-tournament team. Oh, yeah, great player, an unselfish player, great vision of the court. Saw that, a nice little pass, defensive breakdown, and a layup. Too many layups. There's a steal there by Jordan Allen, turnover by the Mules, 5-2 to at <laughs> Mules Trail. Once again, Campbell inside the paint. We're going to get a whistle and a turnover. We're going to go to YouTube here for just a moment as we see Morgan Mario checking in for Caleb Campbell. On the other end, Darius Graham takes a seat. And Marlon Hitman Roberson checking in. You'll love this. John Lewis on YouTube saying, let's go Blyville. He's already ready for an exciting afternoon for high school sports. Also, Kenneth Patterson, or Pennington, rather. Remember him, don't you? Yes. He is already watching, ready for the excitement here today as well. Christopher Williams, he says he is watching Hillcrest High. So good luck to the Vikings here today, all watching us right now on YouTube. Three-point basket by Heron, no good. Good job by Torrance Williams on the rebound. And we're going to go the other way now. It is 5-4. to four. What a move by Durden. You got it. And he's inside the paint. Mules have their first lead of this ball game. 6-5 to five is your score. I'd like to see offense get going early, get some points. You know, we've, had a, we've struggled the last couple of games offensively the first parts of the games. And we're going to get a whistle here, I think, by Brendan Durden, a foul on him. It'll be his first team foul, number two. And by the way, John, I was going back through some of the comments last night, and there was a bunch. I was going through all of them, and your comments, you about got me kicked off the air with that, uh, with all that uh, barbecue uh, street wars you had. Well, I'll tell you, on. it was so late last night, I couldn't find any barbecue anywhere. I stopped at a couple of gas stations, and I just couldn't do it, so uh, I went home. Short uh, shot no good by Mackey. Long rebound going to be last touched by the Hillcrest Vikings in a turnover there. They're going to say the Hillcrest was the last one to touch it. So the Mules will have it back with 3.39 to go here in the first quarter. Only a 5-4 to four ball game right now, or 6-5 to five ball game, rather. Good move by Elijah Vincent on the steal. Vincent goes in, and he's going to be called for the travel. So back-to-back -back turnovers by both teams, and we're going to see Jack Scott. You were telling me earlier today, if you don't mind me saying, that uh, he rode an ankle last week. Yes. Was that yes. in Waynesville when that took place? No, that was at practice, at I practice. think, last Thursday. -ish. All right. And uh, he's had ankle issue for a while. Had a stress fracture last year. But I think he's back getting close to full steam right good. now. I don't see a brace on, so that's a good sign. Good. He don't tell me anything, so <laughs> I just got to figure it out. I'll, I'll learn more from you, Frankie. <laughs> You know, it's funny you told me that uh, we were talking about earlier here today. My son was playing some basketball here on the gym floor, and I kind of was letting him win. And you told me, you said, well, when he gets seventh, eighth grade, I might not be able to let him win anymore. I think you might be right. Oh, yeah, we used to play in the driveway. And, you know, there comes a point where all of a sudden it's a struggle. And then all of a sudden, you got no chance. Well, if I, <laughs> if I could be honest with you, I did find myself earlier today, kind of found him on purpose to slow him down yeah. a little bit. <laughs> That's true. Recovery is definitely not as easy. You no, know, recovery is not that simple. Preston Moore misses the second free throw. Here comes Hillcrest now. Jordan Allen, 23 points yesterday. Good move inside. Vincent throws it up, and he'll draw the foul. So he'll go to the free throw line to shoot two free throws coming up. It'll be on Cameron Settle. It'll be foul number three early on for Popper Bluff. I like to see Cameron out getting some minutes early in the game. He's Absolutely. come on as a player this year for sure. Vincent now at the free throw line. One foul, no points. He may change that now. First one is no good. He'll get one more. Coming back in the ball game is going to be Ricky Robertson for the first time rather. He'll replace, it looks like, Mario Morgan. 
looking at this Hillcrest team. Man, they've got a great lineup here. Coming in eight and seven <laughs> on the year, and Roberson <laughs> jumped off. I swear he pump faked. I think so. <laughs> he did the old pump fake from the free throw line. I didn't know you could do that. I'm talking, you know, looking, twice, really. You know, he really did. Looking <laughs> at this uh, lineup here, what we have right now, Jordan Allen, He, as of right now, entering today's game, he is the number two scorer in the tournament. He pump faked his he own player that his time. Own player. <laughs> Jordan <laughs> Allen entering today's game is averaging 24 points a ball game. He's got 48 for the tournament, including his three points at 51. That's that not tells too bad. You, that tells you he is a phenomenal he's player. He's not the leader of the tournament on that stat he's, line, he's, but he's, he's close. He's in second. Yeah. Now, Cortland Muldrew leads that stat line at 79 he's points. He's so got I mean, 48. He's averaging yeah. 38, 39. Yeah, something. he's going to be hard <laughs> to uh, he's going to be hard to top. Second uh, foul by Vincent. Yeah, he fouled out last night, and I thought that might be it, and it was it. First 14 seconds of overtime, he fouls out. It was a great game, though. It great was. Great comeback by the Chickasaws. Man, you're not kidding. Isaiah Neville back in the ball game. Roberson checks his seat. Darius Graham comes in for Preston Moore. Settle makes his free throw there. It's now 8-5, to five, Popper Bluff. He'll get one more. We're going to see the other free throw up, and it is good. I tell you what, I said this yesterday, the day before, but I really feel like that this tournament, as opposed to maybe in recent memory, we've had we have a star-studded lineup, I believe, and this makes for a really good tournament. Yeah, I've heard from a lot of people. People have been involved with the tournament for 35 years, and they've commented about the quality of the teams and the players and the, the tournament this year is being better than it's been the last few. I think we're definitely on the rise in that regard. I think so. I, I think we're definitely on the rise, and I, I've already been told that many teams are already contacting us now, wanting to get in for next year. Jordan Allen's shot is no good. There's Coach uh, Bill Caputo joining us here. Always a friendly face to see. Always a great face. So, uh, Jackson Moore in the ball game. The foul, by the way, was called on Jordan Allen. Both teams with four fouls here. What a move by Gavin Rivers. Can't finish, though. He was wide open. Jordan Mackey on the rebound. Austin Jefferson, or should I say Coach Jefferson, what a move by Jordan Allen inside to Jared Mackey. You know, Jackson Moore put on some good minutes last night. Spark that comeback there. Oh, what a shot by Gavin Rivers. A three-point basket on the other end. Good assist by Jackson Moore. 12-7 now. Mules out in front by five. I was going to say Coach Austin Jefferson. There's another steal by Darius Graham. Graham goes up and no good. Mm. And those are the ones that you got to finish. You know, yeah, right on and that. he usually finishes he that. It was a very athletic play. And then you see, you see a foul right after that. Uh, which it happens a lot of times. You know, they try to get it back and get that foul. So, missed shot and a foul. Coach Jefferson tuning in. A Popper Bluff football coach. Does a phenomenal job, if I might say so, with the boys. Oh, yes, and a snappy dresser, if I do he say so. He is a snappy I dresser. I like that. Not as good as I am, he coached. Uh, he coached Jack in uh, middle school, and I saw this guy come in. Uh, he was, like, wearing a suit. And I thought, look at this guy. What's he doing? Sure enough, he turned out to be the coach, and he ran his team like that. Very professional. And all those little details make a difference. Well, can I be honest with you about something? As far as the dress code goes, I taught him everything he knows. <laughs> I'm, I'm sure he's not calling you, Frankie. I don't go by. That's fake news right there. He's, he's, uh, <laughs> he, he, he calls me all the time for dressing tips. No, I'm kidding. Caleb Campbell on the rebound on the other end. What a good shot by the Hillcrest Vikings. Now 12-9 to to score. Heron did a great job splitting the defense. On the other end, it's going to roll on. They're going to be uh, goaltending. Ah. Darius got up on that yep. one. It probably was going to go in anyway, but he definitely interfered with it. So it's still there, I tell you. It's a good timeout. Yeah, it was a good timeout taken. We'll keep it right here for just a moment here as Popper Bluff now. It's a full timeout, so we'll step away with them. Popper Bluff right now. It is a 12-11 ball game. You're watching and listening Mules basketball on the Southeast Sign and Graphics Mules Radio Network. Christian Automotive and Tire. Quality name brand tires that you know and trust. They also have ASC certified mechanics that have the training tools and knowledge to fix your vehicle right the first time. Business 67 South and Popper Bluff.
108 to go here in the first quarter, and Sea Dog is tuning in, saying, "Ready for a win, go Jack Scott." Yeah, Charlie Sea Dog Brinkley, my guy. 14 to 12, 14 11 now as Isaiah Neville with a big couple of points there. Boy, this Mules team, they've come out a little bit slow early on, but have turned up the pace, now up by three on the other end. Good shot taken that time by Ricky Robertson. 14-13 now. Once again, we're going to go back and forth in this first game of the day at Durden. His shot a little bit short that time around. Another layup. Another layup. <laughs> So now it's 15 to 14. Torrance Williams blocking foul coming up. That was a good bounce pass a moment ago by Her Heron, rather. Yeah, this team, uh, Hillcrest, passes it very well. Unselfish play on the fast break. Nets a lot of layups. Foul, by the way, called on Xavier Heron. His first team foul, number five. Durden. Durbin, rather, is going to inbound the ball now. That is kind of tricky, Durbin. It Durbin, is. Durbin, Durbin. Especially when they're on the floor together. There you go, Torrance, and that's a big bucket that he needed. Maybe that will get him going here, 16 to 15. We're going back and forth right now. Mules out in front by one. Shot is up. Oh, what a shot again. Jordan Allen as the quarter comes to an end. 17 to 16. This kid is unreal. Seven points here in the early going. Stood there by the free throw line and drained it. We're back in 60 seconds. You're watching and listening to Mules Basketball on the Southeast Signing Graphics Mules Radio Network. Eye Care Specialist is committed to the protection and the preservation of the precious gift of sight. Nothing is more important than your eyesight. That's the way the doctors of Eye Care Specialist see it. Protecting your toys are just as important as protecting your daily driver. First Choice Insurance can help find the coverage for your ATVs, boats, and campers that will give you peace of mind and not break your bank. So don't forget to allow First Choice Insurance to review your insurance needs today. Kevin's Auto & Tire is a family-owned one-stop shop for fast, friendly, and affordable automotive services with the latest tools and technology as well as their time-tested automotive knowledge. They're guaranteed to get your vehicle fixed without breaking the bank. Larry Hillis is a proud sponsor of Mule Sports. Local sports, local fans, and local business. A winning combination. All right, so here we go. The Mules most have six on the floor. That happens sometimes. It happens sometimes. It shouldn't. <laughs> I don't know. It shouldn't, but it does. But we didn't get a technical, so hey. No, it's, it's all part, good. Part of the long uh, term it's all, strategy. It's all forgiven. Yes. So here we go now. We're back to live action here as uh, Brendan Durden in the ball game now. Oh, what a move. Splits the defense. He's got four points. 18 to 17 now the score. Yeah, Brendan Durden really come a long way. Yeah. Bright future for that kid. I'll tell you what, what a move by Xavier Heron. He has really impressed me this tournament. Another assist there as Taylor Kelly gets the wide open layup. We're going back and forth again here, Johnny boy. <laughs> here we go. Three-point basket by Gavin nice. Rivers. Yes, sir. I like to see Gavin get in the game early. You know, he's really a good player. He sets the tone for his game. He can really rack some points. He's got eight big ones here in the first half, 21-7. to seven. Three-point basket is no good by Jordan Allen. Last touch by the Mules, it looks like. 7-10. By the way, I was still waiting for uh, John to uh, get me my Christmas gift. Where's it at? Man, it got hung up in <laughs> shipping. All that snow. <laughs> yeah, all the snow. What a long three-point basket. Jared Mackey, 22-21. My blood pressure won't be able to handle all these close games here today. Uh, it was I'm tough. just saying. It was tough last night. It was tough to get to sleep last night after all that. Torrance Williams, a big bucket on the other end off the backboard. 23 to 22. You got to love it. David Durbin on the assist. He is an assist machine coming in, averaging nearly two per ball game. Well, there's nobody that will put forth more effort than David. No. I like his headband. I got to get one of those. Yeah, that I can see, but he's kids with his long hair. They got to be able to see. Jordan Allen is going to throw it. Going to be off the fingertips of Hillcrest. 626. 
23-22. Tim Hicks, by the way, on the camera. My son Chance doing a phenomenal job on the scoreboard as always this week. And by the way, I did try to give him some money this morning, and he would not take it. <laughs> That's a good it. kid for you uh, right yeah, there. Uh -huh. As long as he got his cookies and his ice cream, but I didn't get my cut. So You didn't get your cut. Three-point basket on the other end. No good. Darius Graham bats it around. Good job there by Gavin Rivers. And Rivers able to control. Oh, good job by Dirt in right place, the right time. Just can't finish. Darius Graham takes a shot. It's no good. Ball still batted around. It's going to go out of bounds this time. I thought it was last touch by Hillcrest. We'll wait and see. I think that Gavin did a good job of selling that one. Yes, he did. <laughs> That's why we don't offer instant replay. Yeah, we don't want to take that to the booth. We don't want to take that to the booth. Marlon Hitman Roberson for three. It's no good as he checks in. Rebounded. Long rebound there by the Hillcrest Vikings. Back in the ballgame, by the way, is Hickman Roberson. Missing that three-point basket on the other side. At 23-22, Jared Allen's shot is no good. Rebounded here by the Mules. Good job by Brendan Durden. 5-22. Durden is going to lose it. Ball is on the floor, still scrambling around. Well, I think <laughs> Gavin may get away with a hold there. Tough to dribble through three guys You're on not this kidding. Team. Mario Morgan is going to draw the foul. Oh, my goodness. A little Mario, bit out of control. Little a little bit. bit. Durden, or Durden, rather, will get called for the foul, his second personal. I'd like to see a little more passing on that press. You know, wait, there's got to be somebody open. you got three guys on you. Somebody's going to be open somewhere. A little hard to see out, I realize, but I think they just need to slow down just a little bit. Second, first free throw is up and good. Taylor Kelly back in the ball game now for Ricky Robertson. First one no good, second one is good, and guess what we've got again, another tie. Isaiah Neville going to check in the ball game. Mules have six on the court. A lot of confusion down there, John. Yeah, that's twice today. It's a 2.30 in the afternoon confusion. We'll call it that. <laughs> oh, I'm telling we're having a good time. Got a whistle here and a... Foul on Jared or, Jer, or make that Jordan Allen his second personal. Each team now in the bonus following Larry Card says, or Sarda rather says, be tough mules. I'm assuming there's a relation to Pat Sarda there somewhere. Oh, I'm certain. Absolutely certain. Pat's doing a good job, Ref, and he's he done is. some good games this, this Isaiah week. Neville goes around the defense. He's got six points here in the first half, 25 23 now. Maurice Ford says, let's get that trophy, Chickasaws. They got a good chance. They got a good chance. Oh, what a swat there by Torrance Williams. Another block for him. So coming in the ball game now is going to be Caleb Campbell. He'll check in for Jordan Allen. Ford's 42 to go here in the first half. Three-point basket by Mackey is no good. Rebounded by Torrance Williams. Here comes the Mules. We're going to get a touching foul on Mario Morgan. That's going to put Torrance on the free throw line. He will shoot a one and one coming up. We're going to give away that gift card later tonight from Academy Sports and Outdoors, valued at $100. To be eligible, share the video feed for us. Subscribe to our YouTube. And you'll be in that drawing. First free throw. It's interesting, Frankie. It's gonna uh, be gonna be it's almost like a turnover on bluff as Preston Moore is gonna be called for going over the line too well, soon. That's, that's odd you see that twice in one game already, but we've seen it but, three uh, times so far. So, yeah, true. And uh Torrance he shoots he shoots his free throws a good foot and a half, two feet behind the line, which I don't know. Torrance is gonna pick up his at first foul as well. Fourteen fouls between the two teams early. I always say the important thing is it goes in. Doesn't matter how you shoot as long as it goes in. Oh, so whatever boy. works, works. But you know who's watching us right now on Facebook, John? Oh, Got us here. pulled up on the big screen. Right. They're doing that. Uh, I'm assuming it's that mirror imaging on the on the TV screen. You got to be careful. I've got my amazing wife Pam watching us right now. Uh oh. 
I'll choose my words carefully. Choose I'll try to keep it clean. Choose your words carefully. Heron now nearly turned it over. Three-point basket by Campbell is oh, up and that good. Nice Boy, that was a shot. good shot. Nice looking shot. 26-25. 26-25. Isaiah dribbling. Neville, what a move to Torrance Williams high off the backboard. He's got six points here in the first half. Yeah, good to see Torrance get some points. Very early. good indeed. A jumper is no good by Campbell. And we're going to get a jump ball. It's going to stay with Hillcrest. Tell you what, we've got a back and forth contest here in the first half. I like it. I like the way this game is going thus far. The Mules are playing tough. They're playing hard. Yeah, pretty evenly matched teams. A lot up and down, back and forth. So Dyson going to come back in now for Taylor Kelly. We're happy that our Hillcrest folks are watching as well. Hope you are enjoying a seventh place game as your Hillcrest Vikings are down just by one point right now. We'll get that seventh place trophy. Yeah. <laughs> it's a big one. <laughs> Here and now. Going to get it back over to Jared Mackey. Mackey nearly lost a good job there by Gavin Rivers. Mackey, though, three-point basket is no good. Preston Moore going to track it down. It's going to go right back to the Mules. Oof. Oh, going to be a touching foul. It looks like, nope, going to be out of bounds. Yeah, I think good it job by Gavin Rivers. Yeah, it bounced off Gavin it a little did. bit. Of a, he took off a little bit. Yeah. Well, I hate that. We get a turnover and then turn it over. Then that happens over. a lot. Andy Moore tuning in, saying, good work as always. Appreciate the stream. You bet, my friend. Glad you're tuning in. Boy, Jackson's played some good minutes here this tournament as well, Andy. You should be proud. 3.07 to go here in the first half. Put those fouls to good use. That's right. Three-point basket on the other end. Oh, Mario nice. Morgan, he's got four points now. Oh, I'm sorry. That's going to be on Campbell. Ah, oh. walk. Mm. Call a walk on Darius. Yeah, I wasn't sure. I thought I'd hey, give him that. It's kind of NBA deal, but give it to him. Home court, baby. 29, 27 to score. Tell you what, Morgan and Campbell, their jerseys look so much alike. One's a zero and one's ten. That's a sign of getting a little old, Frankie. You got to get your you, spectacles out. That's called that's <laughs> called 40 basketball games this month. <laughs> yeah, it all starts to run. All together. the numbers run together. <laughs> Going to get a whistle here. Good job by Hickman Roberson on the uh, steal there. Twenty-nine at twenty-seven to score. Two thirty-eight to go. Joshua Knight tuning in back in Popper Bluff. Glad to have him alongside. You know, being a two-thirty game here, a good little st student section here for Popper Bluff. Trying to figure out what the theme is. I'm going to say that's a New Year's Eve kind of thing. You think, Frankie? Well. It was either going to be – that was either that or it was a maybe a Mizzou theme, maybe. Not a combination. That reminds me. Did oh, you hear boy. about – Here we go. <laughs> that Mizzou beating Illinois and then beating Kentucky. Not just beating them, but beating them. They beat them pretty good <laughs> from what I understand. Rumor yeah. has it. I should have brought some of my Luther Burden chips up here. That's about as close to barbecue as you can get without having real barbecue. That's right. Got a held ball. Boy, one of the officials – not happy with something down there, and he's letting the player know about it. Let him do his job. A little bit of business going on. A little bit of business. Three-point basket, nice. Gavin Rivers, and that's a good, a good spark by Gavin. Yeah, Gavin's got a nice shot. When he's on, he can, he can really score some points. 31-29 to score. Good job by Darius Graham on that assist. There's another steal by Marlon Hitman Roberson. Here we go. And we're going to get a whistle here. Counted count and the foul. <laughs> yes, the they are. Continuation, baby. <laughs> oh, my goodness. That's make up for that last call. Xavier Heron, by the way, is going to be called for the foul. And that's going to be his third personal. He's going to have to come out for a little while. So now Roberson on the free throw line. The Mules open up a big lead. It's up by four. First one is up and good. Oh, the only one is up and good at 34-29. Make that five. Can I uh, say one thing? Uh, we talked about the Haywood cheerleaders, but, man, our mules of cheerleaders doing a phenomenal job this week as well. Oh, yeah. It's been fun. That that has been a show in and of itself for people to come see that live. Those those Haywood girls, man, they I don't know how they walk after a game, but they sure do put up forth a lot of effort. They really do. 34-31 now. Jack Scott going to go up, and he'll draw the foul. 
My well, uh, hey, numbers say that he's at always oh, kind of hobbling a little bit yeah. on that ankle that he rolled back in practice. My number statistics say he is coming in for Sea Dog. He's shooting 95% <laughs> right. well, on the free throw line. So far, he hasn't missed one shot tonight. First one is up, and it's good. 100% for the night, Frankie. 100%. Mark, write it up. Sign, it up. <laughs> Sign that one off. Well, I've. I've been very uh, encouraging about free throws in a positive manner with my son, and he uh, appreciates it, I think. Second free throw is up. There you go. There we go. 100% for the night. 36, Frankie. 31. So do you make him run laps whenever he misses a free throw? No, I just uh, <laughs> I don't make him do anything. I told him I would cut his hair if he put it in the man bun, but I'm not sure I would be able to actually do that. Gotcha. Shot is no good. Good job by Brendan Durden, who flies in for the rebound. I actually told him I would try to cut it. I think it's the way I put it. Three-point basket by Dirt in his money. Nice. He's got nice. seven here in the first half. Mules open up to an eight-point lead. Ed Norton says, go, Jack. Oh, Ed, my guy. You ought to be up here. Three-point basket by Campbell is no good. Roberson saved it right into the hands of Gavin Rivers. And just like that, what a move by the Mules, 41-31. So the Mules here of late, they have turned the pressure on, and now they lead by 10. They've opened up as Gavin Rivers, as he got the uh, rebound tip to him. He's got 13 points here in the first half. Mules have outscored the Hillcrest Vikings 25-14 in this quarter. This is shades of what happened in my mind of the fourth quarter last night. Yeah, it is. And now the, the key to this is something we've struggled with. We get a lead, but we need to go ahead and put this team away. We need to build on that lead and make it 20. You know, a 2.30 game on a Friday, team's going to have to travel. You get them down 20, they might let up a little bit. But we have a tendency to get a lead and then slack off a little bit. We don't need that to happen today. Lisa Fister is tuning in as well. I think she's from Illinois, right? Or she's in, she she's resides from, in she's Illinois. She's from here. She's a proper bluff fister, but she lives up in Illinois That's now. That's what I thought. Her son's both very good athletes, wrestlers. Yep. Big wrestlers in Illinois. El older now, but got that fister gene. One minute to go here in the first half. Campbell now tries to find a Jared Mackey down low. Mackey picked up, or make that Campbell rather, picked up by Darius Graham. Good bounce pass on the outside. R Robertson back out to the top of the key. And now Jared Mackey, seven points here in the ball game. Inside the paint. Mm. Going to get bailed out with a foul. I thought it was going to be a turnover, and so yeah. did Coach Durden. I thought That's he took one too many steps. Instead, they're going to say Neville got him. That's another one of those chintzy fouls. We call that a chintzy foul. I thought it was a travel. First one is on the way. It's up and it is good by Jared Mackey. It is now an eight point, or make that nine a point ball game. 39.4 seconds left. Second one is on the way. It's no good by Mackey. But man, what a good job. Oh, Dallas uh, Williams who just checked in. Skirmish on the floor. You know, Dallas is going to have a bright future. He He's uh, very athletic, can jump out of the gym. Just a freshman but clearly an imposing figure. Probably got a little bit more to grow, but uh, he, he's going to be a good one for the Mules. The question is, is Dallas more athletic than I am? That's the real <laughs> question here, John. Well, well, we might have to put y'all in one of those foot. I, I don't, don't think you do ever that. made your football, your football foot Listen, race. Listen, that's not my fault that uh, they don't want to race me. I that can't was, help that. That was Misha rules, right? Yeah, <laughs> so that's, that's, that's on Misha, not me. They were going to violate their amateur status somehow. And just for the record, <laughs> i got to tell you, as we wind down the first half, I just saw Tim yawn. That tells me it's going to be a long night for this fella. Oh, he's just waking up. That's he's what that is. Waking up is yeah, what it that's is. That's right. He's getting going. Jared, make that all. Oh, what a move inside by Jordan Allen. Could not get the shot to go down. Dunk. Here it is. Oh, what a junk. As little brother gets the rebound, yeah. Dallas. <laughs> right at the buzzer. I like that. Buzzer beater dunk. Boy, what a move as the Dallas got the rebound and then the two hand or the one handed flush by Torrance Williams, eight big points. That was a way to end the first half. Oh yeah, you can see how Torrance made the finals of the slam dunk competition whenever, seems like a week ago, but I think that was yesterday. It was yesterday, uh, that was a good move. That's yeah. the first dunk of the afternoon. We've got much more to go. We're gonna come right back, a loose child here on the track. 
Somebody get that child. Somebody grab that child. Somebody grab the children. <laughs> We're going to come right back. You're watching live coverage for you watching on Facebook and YouTube. It will be quiet, and you'll be able to see our cheer team do their performance at halftime. You're watching live coverage presented by Popper Bluff R1 Schools. Today's talk, KWOC. This is the Southeast Signing Graphics Mules Radio Network. All right, we are back, and we are enjoying the halftime entertainment by the back-to-back -back state champions by our Popper Bluff Lady Mules, the cheerleading team. They do a phenomenal job, and a big kudos to the girls and all the hours that they put in the gym at winning back-to-back -back state titles. That takes a lot to get that done, and they did it with class. They did it with style. We're so honored to have them live here at halftime. And the only reason why we have to talk over the music as they wrap up their performance is we don't want to get shut down by Facebook due to copyright infringements. And I would like to bring back on John Scott, but he's a little bit busy right now. He's either eating a hot dog, he's texting, or I'm not sure what exactly he's doing right well, now. Well, I'll tell you, I was—I got a text from somebody who uh -oh. who inadvertently sat in the middle of the Chickasaw fans last night. Inadvertently. And, uh, and uh, I think maybe his ears might still be ringing from that. It was fun to watch, man, where the whole crowd is, is the cheerleading squad. It's great. Absolutely. I was gonna. I was giving kudos to our back-to-back -back state champion uh, cheerleading team and all the hours they spend on the practices and everything they go through. It's 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 hard enough to win at one time. I can't imagine being back-to-back -back state champions. Oh yeah, people don't realize the effort, the time that goes in for those girls from a very young age all the way till now and now, especially. And, you know, the injuries that they have and the, the risks that they take, uh, some of the stuff they do, I'm thinking, man, if they land wrong, it's going to be a deal. But they really uh, do a wonderful job. Our sponsors do a wonderful job. And our parents, obviously, are really in. Got to give a shout-out to the mamas because they're, they're always helping. And, and it's something we, I don't want to say take for granted, but we've got a long, rich tradition of cheerleading here, competitive cheer. And it's great to see the girls go off and make a name for Papa Bluff around the state and around the country. Absolutely, indeed. So let's talk about the first half here. Let's break it down. And one thing we had in this, you ready for this, in the first half, we had 13, count them, 13 lead changes in the first half alone. Popper Bluff, their biggest lead, 11 points here so far tonight. That's where we sit right now. Mules were outscored 17-16 at 27-15, though, by the Mules in that second quarter, and they lead by 11. 13 points already by Gavin Rivers, and then eight points by Torrance Williams, and then, of course, the one-handed dunk to end the half. That is big. Seven points by Brendan Durden, six by Isaiah Neville, and then four points by Marlon Hitman Roberson, two points by Jack Scott, and one point by Preston Moore. What I like about this Mules team is not only are we ahead right now, we have several in the scoring column as we speak. The Mules right now, you'll like this. 
have outscored on the bench 16 to 5 right now over Hillcrest. Yeah, that's nice. That's good. That's a good stat, Frankie. I like that. You know, we started off a little bit slow like we have, but I like that we picked it up toward the end, the second quarter, settled down a little bit, started playing a little more ball, hitting some shots, and uh, we're going to have to come out second half and not have a letdown. Sometimes we have a tendency to lose our focus a little bit for a stretch. Right now, 11-point lead. If we can come out really hard in that third quarter and bump this up to 17, 18, get it up to 20, we should be in good shape with this team. But, yeah, I like the Mules have settled in and, and, uh, and they're playing a little more team ball later in the second quarter. They figured out how, what it means to pass the ball now and then. You don't uh, you don't want much 20-point lead, do you? Hey. You're not asking for a whole I'll rest lot here. Easy. I'll take 30, but I'll call okay. it 20. Let's look at the <laughs> Hillcrest Vikings for those fans that are tuning in right now. Caleb Campbell, him and Jared Mackey each with Evan, or make that eight points. Jordan Allen, he's got seven points. And then two points each by Xavier Heron, Ricky Robertson, Perez Dyson, Caleb or make that two or one point rather by Mario Morgan. So far here this evening, the Hillcrest Vikings, they are shooting about 46%. They are four out of 12 from behind the arc. But here's a, here's a stat for you. They have been to the free throw line only six times in that first half. They are two out of six. Meanwhile, Popper Bluff, they are seven out of nine so far in the first half. And that's where we sit right now. By the way, the Mules have got 14 points in the paint. Hillcrest, they've got 12, so a back and forth contest. The Mules, though, were able to have a little bit of space. The question is, and you talked about this earlier, can the Mules come out in this third quarter and finish strong? Yeah, we can't rest on this team. They obviously can score some points. They've got some great players. I like the free throw stat, two for six for them, seven for nine from us. That's much better. I like to see that. So far, so good with the Mules. Um, and, uh, yeah, they can't rest on this team. You know, Hillcrest is clearly a good team. They want to get the win today, and they're not going to give up. They're not going to go away. And they were sitting here last night, and they saw those games last night where teams came back, two or three of those games, that their teams were really pretty much done, and they came back and either won the game or got into overtime. So, yeah, it's going to be a good second half of basketball. It absolutely is indeed. So we'll step away as we get ready for the second half. I'm going to let John have some hot dogs. We'll come back in the fourth quarter. No, I'm kidding. We'll be back in about <laughs> two minutes. You're listening to Mules Basketball and watching it live on the Southeast Sign and Graphics Mules Radio Network. Patriot Auto Glass offers chip repair or glass replacement. They provide fast quality service done by experienced technicians. Ask about our veteran and first responder discounts. Call Patriot Auto Glass today at 573-840-5027. And remember, Patriot Auto Glass will come to you. Scott Law Firm is experienced in estate planning and the preparation of documents like wills and trusts. Let the Scott Law Firm help you protect your family and pass along your estate according to your terms. Call Scott Law Firm today at 785-4688. Southeast Signs and Graphics of Poplar Bluff can handle all of your printing needs from t-shirts, wall displays, banners, and so much more. Call their team at 573-772-5566 or get to southeastsignsandgraphics.com. Whitworth Gift Chest Jewelers is a third-generation family-owned jewelry and repair store who have served the Poplar Bluff community for over 60 years. Our family has always worked hard to provide the finest jewelry creations and service imaginable. All right, so we are back here as we get ready. I know what you were doing there, John. I saw what you just got through doing. I like it. <laughs> you got Well... I got to prove where I am, Frank. That's right. Absolutely, indeed. And we're about ready to get started for the second half. 43 to 32 the score. Mules are a half away from at least picking up one win in this tournament. And it is a tough tournament all the way around to win, period. So we'll see 
what the Mules here are able to do as we get started for the second half. And we are underway for the Mules. It'll be the same starting five on the floor that we had to begin this ball game. Same on the other side for the Hillcrest Vikings. Torrance Williams, three-point basket. It's short this time. Wynn caught it. The win caught that one indeed. Rebounded by Jordan or Jared Mackey, rather. Good shot by Mackey. Man, he goes up all the way over Torrance Williams, which is not easy to do. No. Nope. And he gets the two points. No, Torrance's ability is to jump so quickly. He gets way up, but he does it really quickly. Darius Graham, high arcing three-pointer is no good. So Mules have come out and missed back-to-back -back three pointers here to begin the second half. Not, Heron now on the rebound. Not a fan of the back-to-back -back three pointers up 11, start of the third quarter. If it goes in, great, but you know, work it around and get a layup. All right, so we are back with you live here on Facebook, on YouTube, on the radio. Remember, the final three games of the afternoon or the evening are going to be live on Facebook and YouTube exclusively courtesy of Popper Bluff R1 Schools, also First Midwest Bank, proud supporters of this huge tournament. Campbell, he's got seven points here in the ball game, and they're making a small comeback now. It's down to seven. 43-36, Williams. Neville was wide open. They miss him. He's going to go up, and he'll draw the foul. A tough-looking foul. I, I hate it when kid do falls too. like that, falls hard on the floor. If that happened to you, Frankie, you'd be out of commission for a while, right? At least two weeks. <laughs> you'd need a little more than that ibuprofen. I'd be half it. If, if, listen, if I was shooting around earlier today, <laughs> I'd be the guy calling my attorney saying, my back is killing me. <laughs> That's right. No, they shouldn't let you do that. that. We'll yeah, see absolutely. This Bring them down. So uh, we're getting a timeout here, and you know what concerns me on this timeout is Isaiah Neville, he looks like he did take a, a harder bump than normal, and he's not uh, acting 100% right now. No, yeah, he took a hard fall right there. Hopefully, just hopefully, just shaking up a little bit. I hope that is the case. 43-36 is your score. Coach Adams not happy. That's the fourth foul, by the way, on Xavier Heron, and he is not happy, pleading his case now to one of the officials. I don't know if it's going to work or not, but we'll see what happens. I feel like it won't work with that, <laughs> that fish. He's gonna, it may tee him up right here. I think you warned him. Oh, he's getting close. He's getting close. He had to walk away before he got teed up. I never under, you know, I, human nature, I don't know that it does any good to ever yell to referees because if I was a referee and some guy yelling at me, I don't know. Boy, you're not you're not a very handsome mug there, uh, John. Oh, well, I, uh, I saw you on the camera no, for a few Well, minutes. I missed hair and makeup earlier. I don't know what the deal with that was. Going to get a whistle here and a foul. It's going to be a foul, I believe, on Allen, his third, or third person, or rather. I did say that. Yeah, it's his third. That's one of those coach better sit down fouls. Yep. You ever been teed up in a game before, John? I got thrown out of a couple games. Oh, my goodness. I got thrown out of one game for sure. I think the second one I just got attacked. I got thrown out from Kenneth for fighting one time. For fighting? Yeah, it wasn't my fault, though. We don't condone <laughs> that was, here on this program. Was, I'd have probably gotten thrown out of school for six months if it happened now. But some kid was messing with me, Frankie. Believe it or not. I heard that kid was Kenny Hosler. <laughs> no, Kenny. Oh, yeah, it wasn't, a, it wasn't a good look for me. Boy, Mules have missed back-to-back -back shots here. Good job by Darius Graham. After the Mules missing three straight three-pointers, they get some points back, 45-36. 45-36, 6 4 to play. The long three-point basket by Dyson. He was your three-point champion earlier yesterday. Darius Graham with a long rebound. I can't believe that was yesterday. I know. It just seems like it was so long ago. Three-point basket by Isaiah Ooh, nice Neville. Look. Mules are 0 for 4 to begin this quarter. Shooting threes. I don't know. So now Ro Robertson, rather, goes inside, and his shot is no good. On the other end, Dar or make that Gavin Rivers no good. And we're going to get some newer players on the floor right now to try to settle this team down a little bit. Gavin Rivers will take a seat. Also, Isaiah Neville going to take a seat. Coach Durden not real pleased right now with what he's seeing by his team. 
Durbin on the inbound is going to be last touch. Could not control it as Robertson knocks it out of bounds. Yeah, we need to have a little bit of patience on the offensive end. I'll just take the three. Good move by Darius go. Graham. There you go. Coach Adams, he wants an offensive foul. It's not going to happen. Dyson is going to be called for the foul. Durbin again will give him the credit for the assist there. Third foul, or Dyson rather. It's going to be his first. Free throw was no good by Darius Graham. Rebounded by Jared Mackey. And we get a whistle here and a foul on the floor. Was that a, was that Coach Adams wanting the intentional foul there? Or, I think he was. You know, okay, think about it. So. Uh, at times are different, but I and I, I won't lie. I, I have a lot of disdain for referees. Don't get me wrong, Frankie, but I never like a coach that yells at the refs all the time because it sets a good poor example for the kids, and it tends to spill over to the kids, and then things unravel. Darian, or make that Darius Graham, boy, he's got, he gets up high in the air. He's <laughs> oh, he 16 fly. rows up in the stands. Oh, he can fly. That is dedication you know, right there. Great football player as yes, well. He is. Good wide receiver. But, man, when he goes up like that, he can, he can fly. I think I'm pretty confident I might be able to jump higher. <laughs> Get you a trampoline in here. We'll Maybe. It's going to have to be off race. an extra large trampoline at that. <laughs> Oh, it's going to be a turnover, it looks like, as Jared Mackey. Oh, he oh, did, oh my oh, he goodness. <laughs> let down. He let now. it go, and it did not touch it. That is, uh, and that could have been two points very easily. Yeah. Good heads-up play by Durden. Yes, that's a lesson a lesson for that kid. He'll always remember that. Yes, he will. He'll always remember that. Foul going to be called on a Taylor Kelly. Four fouls to two right now here in the half. First one by Durden is no good. Darius Graham will come out. Also back out is for Hillcrest is Taylor Kelly. Jordan Allen back in the ball game. On the other end, Gavin Rivers is back in. Second one here by Durden is up and it's good. By the way, I'm not sure if you heard this or not, or if we talked about it last night, but I was able to have uh, Durden's mom on yes. camera last yes, night. Yes, she, she said did she would job. never do that. <laughs> never say never, right, Frankie? Never say never. The next step is going to be having her call a game with me. Jack's oh, yes. back in the ball game, by the way. She would probably understand the game better than both of us combined, right, Frankie? She'd probably take my job from me, honestly. <laughs> Whistle and a foul. My good buddy Lee Wallace is tuning in. Evansville, Indiana checking in. Glad to have you alongside, Lee. How was that weather down there or over there where you are? It's pretty pitiful up here in Missouri. Yeah, Indiana is one of those states. It's 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 not in the right place, it seems like. When you go there, it's, it's different geographically than you think it's going to be. Oh, Faith is already chiming in about calling a game. She's tuning in right now. She says that will never happen. Well, she might never very well. Never She'd have to get a longer uh, cable on here so she could pace back and forth. Pace back and forth. Or maybe get a wireless deal like those uh, guitar guys, you know, Eddie Van Halen deals where she can go. <laughs> walk around the stadium and talk. I got to tell you, she did a great job last night. People loved her. Gavin Rivers' free throw was up and good. 49-36 now. Gavin, 14 points in the ball game. Durbin well, you know, will take a seat. It's got to be tough to be a coach's wife in the best of situations and throw a couple kids on the team. and <laughs> You can't get you there from all angles. 52-36 <laughs> now the score. Oof. Nice shot. Gavin, 15 points here in the ball game, making both free throws a minute ago. Man, what hustle by Jack Scott there. Jordan Allen a moment ago, by the way, buries a three-point basket. Still 11-point game right now. So Hickman Roberson going to inbound to Durden. I like Durden's hair. I do too. You know, it's these kids with this hair, you know, I say, you got it, grow it. I can't grow it anymore. <laughs> I'm done. Say, my growing days are done. I, I, my grow, yeah, my growing days are done. My keeping days are done. Durden now near the baseline. Good concentration. Shot is blocked. 
It's going to go back toward the other way. Marlon Hitman Roberson, though, bailing out dirt and reaching in for Good the work. jump ball. It's going to go back to Hillcrest, though. Good defense. Very good defense. Lee Wallace says it's warm in Indiana and it's raining over there, about like it is here. A little bit cooler over here, though, right now. Three-point basket again. This one off the mark. Dirt and a big rebound. Here comes the Mules. Good job by Hickman Roberson. It's going to be blocked again. That's back-to-back -back blocks there by Jared Mackey. Roberson for three. It's off the mark and no good. It's going to be rebounded here by Jordan Allen. And we get a whistle here and a foul coming up on Popper Bluff. It's going to be on Brendan Durden. It'll be his third personal foul. We'll see Jack Scott taking a seat. Marlon Hitman Roberson stays in. Nope, he's going to come out now. 3.09 to go. Preston Moore in the ballgame for Popper Bluff. 50 to 39. The Mule's up by 11. Yeah, I like we've maintained the lead. Weathered the storm early in the third quarter, so that's good. Now we need to bump it on up to about 35. Going to be some bumping there in the middle, and it's either going to be on Isaiah Neville or Torrance Williams. Both of them were involved. It's going to be on Torrance. It'll be his second personal team, found number four. So Jordan Allen is going to inbound underneath his own basket. Gets it to uh, Dyson. at Dyson now, guarded by Preston Moore. Man, Moore has played some good minutes here this season for Poplar Bluff. Yeah, he's, he's learning uh, his role. Get a foul on Torrance Williams there, a little shove there as he extends the elbow. And he's playing hard. He's worked hard in the offseason. And, uh, yeah, he's getting some good quality minutes. He he's going to be a bright a bright spot on the team going forward this year and next year. What I like about this kid is he's he's making every opportunity he possibly can, getting better every single ball game. Bright future ahead of him, no doubt. Campbell now on the inbound. It works it out to the top of the key. Campbell. Gets it to uh, Allen. Allen gets some space. How do you defend that? You just don't. You can't. <laughs> you could take a charge and hope for your well-being, <laughs> or you could let him do that. 50-41 <laughs> to score. 2.32 to play here in the third quarter. Good move inside by Darius Graham to Gavin Rivers. A foul going to be called. I think it's going to be on Mario Morgan. It is. And that'll be his second personal foul. Already six or make that 17 fouls now. We're in the bonus. Mules are going to be shooting some free throws now. I like that play, Frankie. That was good ball movement. Got a mismatch down there. Gavin was either going to make a layup or get fouled. So uh, Gavin Rivers on the free throw line. He made two a moment ago. Makes a third. That was a nice shot there. He's got 16 points. Here in the ball game, 22 by the way. Yesterday, he's got 16 in this ball game. We still have a whole quarter left. Yeah, he could really, he could be the floor leader of this team going forward. And that one rims in as well. 52 to 41, the score. Mules extending their lead again to a game high 11 points. Campbell now trying. Throws. Yes, we are. Long pass across the court to Mario Morgan. Morgan goes up, and he'll draw the foul. Preston Moore is going to be called for his foul. That'll be his first. So Hillcrest going to go to the free throw line to shoot two of them. Morgan, he's got four points here in the ballgame. He's one of two on the line, and this one is up and no good. Let's take a look at the free throws here. Bluff right now is 12 out of 16. Hillcrest, 2 of 7 thus far. Oh, scoreboard's out. That's not a good Not sign. my scoreboard, though. <laughs> We're going to have to go to Frankie's board. you got to go to Chance's yeah, board. Yeah, we, 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 we got go to chance. Chance's board. Chance's is all riding on you, kid. Don't let us down, kid. <laughs> no pressure. <laughs> I think Colton Manning may have, uh, may have stepped on the court down there. We'll blame it on Colton. Well, this time in the action is brought to you by the Popper Bluff R1 School District. Also being brought to you by Taco John's at Scott Law Group, LLC, Briggs & Stratton, Larry Hillis Dodge, Eye Care Specialist, Christian Automotive and & Tire, and being brought to you by Patriot Auto Glass and Popper Bluff Regional Medical Center. Man, how convenient would that have been last night 
overtime. <laughs> Final 10 seconds, yeah. and that scoreboard, scoreboard will go, go out. Get out the chalkboard. We'll oh, just go my school. goodness. Somebody get a stopwatch. 2-12, or make that 2-12 to go. Mules nearly had it turned over. Good job there by Darius Graham. Oh, oh that could have been a backward sure violation. Mules may have got away with one there. Darius Graham. Oh, good move inside the paint. Couldn't finish, though. Preston Moore, what a save that was by Moore. And now we're going to get a whistle and a foul, and we're going to shoot some free throws. Let's talk about that behind-the-back pass <laughs> yeah. by Preston Moore. Yeah, Are you kidding out, me? Fall out of bounds. He saves the ball behind the back. Nice pass. Good work. Man, that was good work by Preston Moore. Now, Faith, you got to like that play by Preston Moore down low and not giving up. Third foul on Taylor Kelly. A little bit of one of those dirty kind of moves. Yeah, that's something Brendan would do. Did they get the foul wrong? No. Oh, the clock is still going. That's what the problem is. I don't need to pay so much attention to you that. Got, you got to stop the clock, Chance. <laughs> We're going to blame that on Chance. Coach Adams says, I think it was five, five minutes and 45 seconds to go in the third, not 124. <laughs> well, we get all these little kinks worked out in the 230 game, so that way. Later, it'll be smooth as silk, or not working at all. Or not working at all. They're going to add on 150 now. That's what I had. I had 150. I think the scores table maybe thought that uh, maybe we had a 30-point lead already. Is Colton's running that, Colton Manning? Or? Yep, yeah. Colton Manning. Well. Boy, Gavin Rivers, what a game he has had. 18 points. He makes one there and makes another one. Boy, he yeah, has really come along. on strong. Having a good season. On the free throw line. Getting better every game. 54 41. The Mules extending their lead. And a whistle and a foul coming up. I believe that might be on Moore. Is it going to be on him? Yes, it is. It'll be his second personal. And that is 16 fouls now. Well, uh, kind of a choppy game, frankly. A lot of free throws, a lot of rather. fouls. So both teams are in the bonus. First one is up and good by Jordan Allen. He's got 13 points. Mules trying to win their first game here in this tournament. It has been a fun tournament thus far, no doubt. Good move, good mm. rebound by Jared Mackey, and yep. he'll draw the foul. We saw that the other night, that the first night against Douglas. Where they were shooting free throws, got two off. <laughs> that six-point series down there, and we and we saw that again right yes, there. Yes, we uh, did. Uh, we got to get the rebounds on a missed free throw. So Mackey free throw is no good. We're going to see Jack Scott back in the ball game for Preston Moore. So far this afternoon, Hillcrest just three out of eleven when it comes to the free throw line. Mules fourteen out of eighteen at seventy-eight percent. Another miss, another rebound by Gavin Rivers. 78%. That gets my seal of approval. Oh, my Look goodness. Darius Graham, he's got six points here in the ball game. By the way, the Mules have out-rebounded 28-18 to 18 right now. And the Mules only have three offensive rebounds. Oh, how do you defend that one? A long three-point basket. That had that had some spin on that oh, ball. Oh, yeah, perfect. Oh, he didn't walk. He looked like he walked. Mackey has a 13 but points I don't think now. He I was just going to go over the turnovers here. So far, Hillcrest 11. Mules have just nine early on. Well, maybe he did walk. I'm sorry. <laughs> I was watching the oh, delayed watching the replay footage. There. Yeah. there you go. <laughs> maybe he did. <laughs> Marlon going to come in for David Durbin. Here we go. Mules on a fast break. Darian Graham. You be, or Darius Man, Graham. Man, those guys get up. That number one for Hillcrest. Man, his arm was yeah, way Jared up Jared Mackey. He was on oh, his way. 58-46 now. He's going to fix the scoreboard with his, <laughs> with his hand. <laughs> wow. You know, the. Uh, by the way, the uh, scores table has it wrong. It's 58 to 45, not 46. The scores table has 46. They gave Mackey a free throw when he missed it, so I'm sure they'll address that. Somebody will figure that out. I wonder how that works. Somebody down there will notice that. Sometimes it seems like it could be off and nobody would catch it. Other than you. I'm going to have Chance have it. I'm, I'm going to leave it at 46 right now because the score clock here says it, but it should be 45. I'll let them address it first. The right score is 58-45, right. but we'll leave it where it is yep. because the scores table is the ones that have it. 
That's all that matters. And they'll sort it out. Yeah, they'll sort it out. Gavin Rivers now going to draw the foul. That point may come into play if it gets real close. It's going to be a foul on Jared Mackey, the, his second personal foul. We'll have to write a friendly note and <laughs> have him pass it down there. Tell Colton <laughs> Manning, why are you giving extra points for? Wow. Gavin Rivers, another free throw. 20 points, 22 yesterday, 20 today. Yeah, he's coming along. He's been he's been good for years. He has. He Sometimes he has another gear. Those good players have another gear, and it's nice to see him getting that other gear. Man, Gavin Rivers right now, eight out of eight on the free throw line, and not to jinx him by any means. 60 to 46, it says on the scoreboard. Oh, my goodness. Allen again at 16 stroke, points. Lord. Lord, Terry. And we're going to get a whistle and a foul coming up on Rivers. And that'll be an offensive foul. And that'll be number two on him, a turnover on Bluff. Team foul number nine for the Mules. We still have one more quarter left. Rebound, or I should say Allen's shot is no good. Rebounded by the Mules. Here comes Isaiah Neville. Jack Scott with the rebound. Gavin Rivers is going to be blocked by Mackey. Boy, this kid is so good. He can get a lot of height, a lot oh. of ups. Oh, yeah, definitely. I like to see Gavin, you know, he gets kind of in his own sometimes. And when he does, he can really score some points quickly. Isaiah Neville on the inbound. Oh, what a move. And this <laughs> one falls. Good job on the inbound by David Durbin. Put some spin on the ball. Yes, he did. 62 to 49. We have played three here in this one. We'll be back. You're watching and listening to live coverage of the Popper Bluff Showdown on the Southeast Sign and Graphics Mules Radio Network. you love also means taking good care of yourself at Poplar Bluff Regional Medical Center our health care providers take all right the time so we are back in the fourth quarter and now and we're waiting enough. for the uh, score stable to change it John they're saying one minute to go in the third 62 to 49 what those guys are up to down there they might be talking about it here they may need to go over to the hospitality room and get a little bite to eat or something to kind of <laughs> set things out now they're going to get this now the official they're talking about the uh, possession arrow. I'm going to be honest with you. There's a lot of problems. Possession arrow actually does favor Hillcrest. Well, they could work on the it time. It should be on Hillcrest, but they're oh, going to give go. it to Bluff, so we'll take it. But nevertheless, here we go. So now Bluff, or I should say Hillcrest, will have the possession arrow. And we get a whistle and a foul coming up on Campbell. Third personal foul. A lot of fouls. A lot of fouls. A lot of fouls indeed. We're going to drag this day on long. We'll have some long games, maybe get some overtime games later. Hey, don't, 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 don't do that. <laughs> going to hit my button. Wait a minute. What's that noise? Is Haywood here already? Oh, that's Hillcrist. I do like the, I like I the, do. the spirit, of these, and Blyville especially, and, and, and Haywood, man. That's, that's going to be, it's going to be great. Second free throw. Look at that. Perfect so far tonight or this afternoon. Yeah, no complaints with that. No complaints. He's not going to run laps today. Nope, no laundry for Jack tonight. So Campbell now going to bring it down the court. And we're going to get a whistle and a foul. I believe that one's going to be on Durbin, or Durden rather. Both teams already with 10 personal fouls. So 10 fouls apiece now. 7.44 left, double bonus, wow. It's going to be the fourth on Durden. First one is up, and it is no good. We're going to see 
Gavin Rivers back in the ball game and for Durden or Durbin. Durden rather. Just say D. Just say D, absolutely. <laughs> That'll narrow it down. <laughs> Torrance Williams back in the ball game as well. Second one is on the way. It's up and it is no good. Good job by Darius Graham on the rebound. Now the Mules. Gavin Rivers and company trying to play keep away right now for Popper Bluff. Graham, he gets a wide open space, goes up and scores. Good move. He's got he's got 10 now in the ball game. It is 64 or 66 rather to 49. Three point basket is no good by Campbell. Rebounded there by Rivers and company. Uh -oh. He's going to have it taken away. Allen goes oh. up and he'll score. He's got 18 here in the ball game. 66-51 now the score. Darius Graham, high arcing shot. It's no good. Rebound is going to go out of bounds. The last touch by the Mules. A little and bit frazzled right now. A little bit. We're going to see Taylor Kelly now come in the ball game. Let's see who he's going to replace there. He'll come in for Dyson. 648, 342 on the clock here this afternoon. Lots of basketball remaining. Still plenty of time to get out here to the showdown. Campbell misses his shot. Good pick up there by Jordan Allen. Allen, good dish to Mackey. Mackey goes in and scores. <laughs> Got to watch that on slow motion to see what he did. That was a quick, quick little dish. We're going to get a 30-second timeout. This one is going to be called by the Hillcrest Warrior, or the Vikings, rather. It's a good timeout for us, it Frankie. Is. We needed that. Coach kind of reined him in a little bit. Tell him just slow it down just a little bit. Play our game. Each team with three timeouts remaining here in the ball game. Sixty-six, fifty-three, six twenty-eight to play here in the fourth quarter. Make sure and share this video feed for us coming up later tonight. Going to give away a gift card at courtesy of Academy Sports and Outdoors. Good for one hundred dollars. I could do some damage on that gift card. <laughs> Isaiah Neville, he gets some space, and my goodness, what a shot that was! Give that boy two more points. He's got ten as well. 68-52 oh. now. What a steal. That was quite a what shot. What a block, I should say. Marlon Hitman <laughs> Roberson it turns that into two points yeah. the other way. Sometimes the ball bounces your way. 70-53 now. It's going to be Torrance Williams, his fourth. Each team with 10 fouls already here in the half. Sometimes torn. he's just so big, you know, he is. and quick that he just, he, they call a foul on him. It probably is a foul, but he's just so big. First free throw is yeah. up by Mackey, and it's good. We're going to see Heron back in the ball game now. He'll replace Campbell on the other end. Jack Scott comes in. David Durbin in the ball game as well. 70-54 now. Also, Torrance Williams will take a seat. That's a good stretch of basketball there the last few minutes. It is. Second one on the way by Mackey. It is up and it is good. It is now 70 to 55. Darius Graham to Hickman Roberson. Coming up on the 545 mark now. Isaiah Neville double team trapped in the corner. Good, oh. good shovel pass there to Hickman Roberson. A little globetrotter business. Ugh. Almost worked. It did. And then uh, Gavin Rivers nearly had the offensive board, but it did go out of bounds. He did step on the baseline. 534 and counting to go here in the first quarter, or the fourth quarter, rather. Whoa. <laughs> Whoa. Say, wait, wait, wait. Mackey's shot is no good. Game. Isaiah Neville with the rebound. Graham again high, high off the backboard. He's he got just, 12. Man, he goes up, and then he goes on up, and he just flying through the air. It's kind of a Batman or spy. What is it, Superman? I don't know. I don't know. Three-point basket on the other end by Mackey is no good. There he goes. So right now, Graham again out in transition. Does it again. 14 points. 
Seemed like he's got 20. He should have 20, yeah, it seems style like. Style points. On the other end, Jordan Allen is not going to get the shot to fall. Ball batted around, taken by Allen. And yeah. now Allen winds up with it somehow. Oh. And this time, he'll get the foul. He's got 20 here on the afternoon at 74-57. The Mules have outscored Hillcrest 12-9 in this quarter. Like a pinball deal down there. Gavin Rivers picks up his third. We're going to see a Darius Graham, a Gavin Rivers come out. Jack Scott on. Mules have six players, I'm counting. Now Jack will take a seat. Mules just want to run more players out there. I know what they're doing. I see their game. I see their scheme. <laughs> yes. Free throw is no good. Brendan Durden with the rebound. Going to be tripped up. We're going to get a jump ball, and it's going to go to Hillcrest. So a turnover on the Mules now with 4.37 left. Coming up next, Germantown takes on Little Rock. That'll be a good game. Wasn't there a song about Little Rock back in the day? <laughs> well, there's little been, a, there's been a few you. of those Little Rock songs. Nice place, Little Rock. Oh, Durden's going to be called for the foul, and that's going to be his fifth. Ran a half marathon in Little Rock one time. They have their claim to fame as the biggest medal. They have a really big medal for that. Coach Durden says, are you sure that's a foul? And he said he got him on the forearm. Yeah. He'll foul out with eight points, two rebounds. Some nights you just get a couple of chintzy fouls, you know, it happens. But that's something to learn from. My cameraman may go down before this night's over. <laughs> He's over there. He's over there. <laughs> Taking a nap. <laughs> Second free throw is up. It is good as well. He's got three of them. Dyson on the free throw line at 74-59. He's got four points in the ball game. Third one is no good. Gavin Rivers on the rebound. Rivers now in the ball game. 21 points, 12 rebounds. A double double for him. Not bad. Not bad at all. 419 to play here in the ballgame. Mules lead at 74-59. It's been a real pleasure having you on, John, this week here on the showdown. A lot of games you did with me on Wednesday and some yesterday as Torrance Williams misses that shot. Somehow able to get the rebound. Nice. And he goes back up and scored. He's got 10. Yeah, it's been fun, Frankie. I've had a good time. Bits of good games. It makes it easier when there's games are good. Jordan Allen, long three-point basket, 76-62. No one likes a quitter, but John's leaving us here after this game. No offense. I've had it with you, Frank. You Marlon can't take it Hitman anymore. Roberson reverse <laughs> layup is good at 78-62 now. He's got eight points. Now we're trading buckets back to back here as oh, yeah, Heron chances getting a workout over there in that scoreboard. 78-64 yeah. now. I don't mind trading buckets when you're up 14. As long as we can get them. Oh my goodness, what a shot by by Hickman Roberson and he's got 10. Mules have several right now in double figures. Isaiah Neville, Darius Graham, offensive yeah, foul. There Durbin. you go, David. <laughs> Give that man an Academy Award. He sold that one. He did sell it. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. Must be from his speech and, speech and drama class. He learned how to do that. Uh, no, I mean, we got 80 points and three minutes to go. That's a good offensive output. I was going to say for the Mules right now, Isaiah Neville 10 points, Darius Graham 14, Gavin Rivers 21, and then Marlon Hitman Roberson's got 10. Four of our players. Ron Withrow likes what he sees right now. He says, good job, Mules, and good job, Chance, on that scoreboard. And Always. I don't want to belabor a point, but we made our free throws tonight. That makes it a lot. This game would be a lot different. It would be shot very different percentage. if we didn't. 246 now and counting. Good move inside. David Durbin goes in for the rebound. Durbin, he has been huge assist wise and rebound wise. We get a whistle here and a timeout called. It's a good timeout. Find the Mules a full timeout. We'll step away with them. A 30 second break for us. You're watching live coverage of the Popper Bluff Showdown live on the Southeast Signing Graphics Mules Radio Network. 
Caring for those you love also means taking good care of yourself. At Poplar Bluff Regional Medical Center, our health care providers take the time to identify your health risks and help you prioritize good health. Regular checkups and age-appropriate screenings are important to be healthy now and stay well in the future. With same or next-day appointments and online scheduling, we make it easy to make an appointment right now. You can even see us from the comfort of your own home via telehealth. Put your health first today by making an appointment by visiting pbrmc.com and searching online scheduling. We are back here with 2.35 to go. Man, the Hillcrest fans that are here, they are fired up too. You can hear them live on that crowd mic. That's what it's going to sound like later tonight when oh, Flyville's here. Oh, it's going to be real loud. Turn that crowd mic down just a notch. Going to get a whistle and a foul coming up. This one is going to be on Taylor Kelly, his fourth. Torrance Williams now. He's got ten points in the ball game. Mules have five players in double figures. Now look, at he's lined up a good, what are you, a foot and a half, two I'd feet? I'd say a foot and a half. Missing the free throws, two-shot foul. Good job there by Maggie. And we're going to see back in the ball game now, Dyson coming in for Kelly. All right, so we got we to figure this out. This has been bugging me. I need to know. Let's take a poll. Who's got the better hair, Torrance or Brendan Durden? What do you think? Oh, I have my opinion. You got? What's your opinion? Well, I don't want to skew the polls. I'm going to go with Torrance. At first, I did not. I'll say I didn't like it. The first time I saw him this year, I thought, man, I feel like he could jump higher and run faster without all that hair. But as the time has gone on, I think it's pretty cool, man. It's a uh, kind of a signature. You see that guy, you recognize him. Now, Brendan's his is, is more, a little more nuanced, a little more styled, more a little styled, more nuanced. Yeah. Um, it's pretty good, and, and I, I give him a tie. I'm gonna give him a tie. I don't know. I, I I've got. Um, <laughs> yeah. I, I wonder what Faith <laughs> says. Faith, chime in on Facebook. Who's got the better hair? Do you think your son's got the better hair, or do you think Torrance does? I like them both. I think Torrance should get one of those hats, those slash from Guns and Roses hats, and he'd be great for Halloween. Would he not? He would. <laughs> First free throw like was slash. no good. Second one coming up here. It is up, and it's also no good. And Gavin Rivers, he has been a rebounding machine in this ballgame. 2.14 to play. We're going to walk the length of the floor. Going to be on Jared Mackey, his fourth. But I'm old, Frankie, so I, I, uh, I appreciate Jackson Moore's cut. I think that's old school buzz. And that's an old of flat top yeah, deal. yeah, exactly. You know. And yeah. it, it changes his look. I'll see that kid. I don't recognize him. I'm like, who is this? I'm like, oh, that's Jackson Moore. Because he, he used, used to, to have, have that hair. hair. Yeah. Oh, he had that hair. They all have. Just he had the old flaunting mullet. it on people. <laughs> 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 These kids flaunting their hair everywhere. Gavin Rivers hair missing bullies. the first free throw. He'll get one more. Second one is up, and he makes that one. 82-64 now the score. 214 and counting. It's been good work tonight by the Mules. They it has been. A couple of tough games to come back and Good move to Campbell perform. inside. Campbell, his shot is up and good. What a shot by Campbell. That Whoops. develops because of Jordan Allen. Another steal. Oh, wow, wow. man, he's got Gotta 26 to, points. The focus a little bit here. You, I told you why he's in my all-tournament team. That's yeah. a good reason why. Oh, he's smooth. You know, like the good ones like that make it look effortless. Going to get a timeout called here by the Mules. Or make that by Hillcrest, rather. They've got two timeouts left. It'll be a full timeout. So coming up next, it is the fifth place game. It'll feature Germantown, Coach Spears and company, taking on... The Little Rock Christian, Coach Pennington's team. There they are. They're warmed up, and they're getting ready to go also. That game was supposed to begin at 4 p.m., and you know what? Newsflash, we're already running behind. you got to like that. <laughs> I got, I've got a 7.30 curfew to be home. They need to. It's always behind. They should just add 15, 20 minutes between games. Absolutely. <laughs> Durbin now. To Darius Graham near the baseline at 137 to count. Torrance Williams now near the elbow. Good pass inside. They're Mules playing keep away right now from Hillcrest. 
It is 82-69, the score. Coming up in just a moment, we'll get you back to live programming on the radio side. We'll stay here on the video side. Torrance Williams. Good job there by, jo by Jordan Allen. He tried to go for the steal. 109. Run that clock. Mules now double teamed outside to Durbin. Durbin wants that three pointer. He was going to take it. Decided against it. Now the Mules are going to lose it. Marlon Hitman Roberson. As Jordan Allen misses that shot, Torrance Williams on the rebound. And now we get a whistle here and a foul. As Isaiah Neville comes back in the ball game. Boy, Jordan Allen, he has spent his fourth personal foul. And that's How many points does he have tonight? 26. 26, not a bad night. He entered the ball game with the second leading score in this tournament. He had 48, add 26 more onto it. Let's see. 48. Right now he is the leader in the tournament. 26. However, Muldrew plays later on this evening. 74. Is that right? 74? <laughs> I didn't even write anything down. Didn't get my phone out. So he's still going to be the second leading scorer. Yeah, you are right. That's math, Frank. That is math. By the way, Torrance makes the first free throw, 83-69. Nice, three feet behind. Maybe he needs to move back further. Maybe. He Maybe makes the second one. He's got something figured out there. Coming up, we'll get you back to live programming on the radio side. You'll rejoin at Sean Hannity. No good by Mackey. Torrance Williams, ball batted around. Jordan Allen, three-pointer is no good. Rebounded by Mackey. And the shot is no good. Still rebounded out there by Jordan Allen. Boy, this team has no quit in them, do they no, not? They're going to play it. And this one goes out of bounds. Going to be a foul, I believe, on Kelly. Well, it looks like, I don't want to jinx it, Frankie, but I think we're going to hoist the seventh place trophy. That's the important place. Everybody knows seventh place seventh is the place. important place. I like it. Lee Wallace says, way to go, Poplar Bluff. You know, last year we played the championship game at this time. This year, we're going to get a trophy anyway. Seventh place, baby. It, it, I help. Yeah, that's right. It's, uh, it's good to see the Mules come off a couple of hard games that they easily, not easily, nothing's easy, but that they could have won. They were in both of those games, the last two. And to come in here and get a nice win, score a lot of points, and everybody play well, that's something they can build on going forward as we get into the heart of the season here coming up because it's going to take everything we've got to win some games this year. Good move inside as Jordan Allen, another big assist, four seconds now. And they're going to foul with one second left. That's just so you'll be here a little bit later tonight, Frankie. 85-71 to score. Mules are going to walk the length of the floor. Darius Graham. Jordan Allen just fouls out. What a game he has had. 26 big points for Jordan Allen. He's also got five assists, five rebounds. Darius Graham, free throw off the mark and no good. He's got 14 points. Coming up, we'll get you back to live programming. It is up and it is good. 86 to 71. And the Mules are the winner of seventh place. They get a win here this afternoon. Good effort by the Mules tonight. Came out strong, played well, got better as the day went on. And they can build on that. Definitely build on that. Look forward to the rest of the season for sure. I guess next games are Joplin, right? Yeah, next games are going to be in Joplin for Poplar Bluff. So we're going to go ahead and say so long as the Mules pick up the seventh place victory. We'll keep it here on live video for you. That way you can see their trophy. And of course, we'll be back here in just a moment with the seventh or make that fifth place game. John, thank you again yes, for sir. all you've done, my friend. Safe travels on New Year's, and we'll look forward to seeing you coming up in Joplin next Thursday. Yes, sir, Frankie. It's always a pleasure. Appreciate Absolutely. you guys. John Scott joining us live, our school board president. All right, we're going to step away. We'll be back. You've been listening to Mules Basketball on the Southeast Sign and Graphics Mules Radio Network.
All right, we're going to stay right here for just a moment here. And coming up next, we will have for you our fifth place game. It is coming up, and that will be between Germantown. They were, they're going to have a good matchup coming up against Little Rock, and we'll bring that game to you live as it begins here in just a few moments. You're watching live coverage of the Popper Bluff Showdown presented by First Midwest Bank, also by Popper Bluff R1 Schools and today's talk, KWOC. We're back in just a few moments.
All right, so here we are, three minutes to go before our next ball game. And it is the fifth place matchup on the line between the Warriors out of Little Rock. And the Red Devils out of Germantown. So glad you were tuning in. I'm Frankie Castillo alongside Tim Hicks. He is with us as well on the camera. Chance is on the scoreboard. Tim and I had to sneak down real quick and get us something to eat real fast. Because we know going forward between now and the end of the night, our opportunities to do that are very limited. So here we go. Let's talk about Germantown. Germantown so far here in this tournament. Got a win over, lost to Springdale on the first night, beat Hillcrest last night, and now they're gonna match up with Little Rock. Little Rock lost their first game against Haywood, beat Poplar Bluff, and now they are here in the fifth place game here this afternoon. So we'll see exactly what takes place here. We had Coach Spears on last night during the semifinal between Blyville and Springdale. Man, he did a phenomenal job. Absolute phenomenal job. Class act all the way. So now we'll see what these two coaches, Coach Pennington, for the Little Rock Warriors, Little Rock Christian Warriors, and the Germantown Red Devils. We'll see what Coach Spears and Coach Pennington have in store for each here this afternoon. I know Kenneth Pennington tuning in on YouTube for this fifth place game. Later on tonight, we're going to give away a gift card at courtesy of Academy Sports and Outdoors. That's coming up later on this afternoon. We're going to go down courtside here momentarily with Mr. Kenny Hosler. The Red Devils are coming in at 10 and 4 on the season. Here are the starters for the Red Devils. To Corey Dixon. Number two, Caleb Jeffries. At number three, Hugh McFarland. Number five, Anthony Medlock. And number 23, Cameron Temple. Kenneth Pennington says, let's go Warriors. We're gonna see the starting lineups here for Coach Pennington. I don't expect much in the way of changes by either, either team on at their starting five to begin this ball game at the very minimum. So J.J. Andrews, number two, Jamel Wesley, number three, Landrin Blocker, number five, T.J. Watson, and the big fella, the shooter, Ben Fox, wearing number 13. So here we go. Those are the five, Dixon, Jeffries, McFarland, Medlock, Temple, for the Red Devils. 
On the other side for the Warriors, Andrews, Wesley, Blocker, Watson, and Fox. Germantown wearing their black jerseys with the red trim, red numbering. Little Rock, home whites, blue trim, blue numbering. It'll be Temple. It is Watson in the middle. Or make that it is Andrews, rather, in the middle. And we are underway here live in Popper Bluff. It is the fifth place game. So now Medlock. Long, long pass in the corner to Jeffries. Now back to Dixon. McFarland, he'll go baseline, dumps it off out to Dixon for three. It is short. Good job by Medlock, and he's able to clean it up. What a good shot by Medlock, and he is on my all tournament team. Medlock, he has had quite the shooting performance here in this tournament. Medlock, as of right now, he is third in scoring, entering today with 45 points. He's got 47 now for the tournament. Two nothing now in favor of the Red Devils. Good move inside by J.J. Andrews. And he'll go back up and score. We are tied at two apiece. Medlock, three point basket, no good. Rebounded by J.J. Andrews. Down the court now. Wesley kicks it outside to Watson for three. Off the mark and no good. Good rebound by Temple. Dixon to Jeffries, and it's no good. Boy, some fast action here early on. What a move by J.J. Andrews, set up by Blocker. And now it is a 4-2 game by Little Rock. Fifth place up for grabs. A pretty good crowd here so far for this fifth place game. Later on tonight, Springdale. They're going to be in action against Douglas. Three-point basket is no good by Temple. It's going to go out of bounds and last touched by Germantown. And it's going to stay or go to Little Rock. So next up, third place game on the line. But right now we are talking about fifth place. Blocker. Guarded by Temple. Tried to go baseline that time. Unable to do so. They'll back it outside. Ben Fox got to watch him. Wesley for three. It's off the mark and no good. Good rebound by Medlock. Medlock, he's going to go coast to coast. You can count that one in the foul. He's got four points. We are tied again at four. Foul going to be called on Blocker, his first. And that is team foul number one. So looking at Blocker, or make that looking at Medlock, rather, on the free throw percentages, Medlock is also in the top 10. He did miss that one. Fox on the other side, shot no good. Andrews with a long rebound. Now Watson back out toward Ben Fox. Blocker got to watch out for him. He is lethal from the outside, missing that opportunity. Rebounded by Temple. Medlock gets it to McFarland. Long pass across there to Jeffries. Jeffries back to McFarland. Boy, hats off to Little Rock here. Closing down those lanes inside the paint. That's big right there. What a move inside at Temple. That was a nice dish. It's six to four. So now, land blocker now inside the paint. Could not get the shot to go. It last touched, it looks like, on Andrews as Landron could not get that shot to go down. 439 and counting here in the first quarter of play. Several of you watching on YouTube here right now. We appreciate that. This one's going to be last touched, it looks like, by Germantown, by Jeffries. No, I'm sorry, it's going to be last touched by Little Rock. And now we're going to see, speaking of Little Rock, Corliss Williamson Jr. going to come in the ball game. He'll replace T.J. Watson. 4.40 to go here in the first.
Running floater is no good by Caleb Jeffries. Rebounded here by Little Rock and taken away. Good job by Dixon. Medlock all the way down and his shot is no good. Going to be rebounded by Jamel Wesley. So Tim wants to know the next video game or the next video that we're going to have streaming for Popper Bluff. It'll be next Thursday. Three-point basket is good by Jamel Wesley. Seven to six. That was a good shot by Wesley. Next Thursday, when the Mules travel to Joplin, Missouri, Tim and I are going to be going over to Joplin for that tournament. We'll have all three games live right here on Facebook and on YouTube. McFarland, a big three-pointer, 9-7 to seven now the score. J.J. Andrews. He'll take a long three, good. Andrews a big shot. Good assist by Williamson Jr. on that one, 10 to nine. So next Thursday when Bluff travels to Joplin for a tournament, it is the Kaminsky Classic. We'll be over there for that entire weekend. The shot is no good, rebounded by Andrews. Wesley, good dish inside to Corliss Jr. Or make that Williamson Jr. rather. And now it's 12 to nine. 12-9 is your score. Thank you so much, Jamil. Appreciate that pronunciation. 240 left here in the first quarter. And we'll see. It looks like Trey Howard coming in now for Landrin Blocker on the other end. For Germantown, Joshua Davis coming in the ball game. And we'll see who he'll replace. Believe it's going to be Temple. So Temple will hustle off the floor. 2.51 to play. Here in the first quarter, 2.37 rather, to go here in the first quarter. Pull up jumper there by by Wesley, free throw line, it's no good. Here comes Medlock. Medlock a pull up jumper, it's short. Good rebound at that time by Ben Fox. Coming up next, following this game, it'll be the third place game between Springdale and Douglas. Springdale, Arkansas and Memphis Douglas goes up next. Boy, Andrews misses the shot, ball batted around. It'll go out of bounds. It's going to go right back to Little Rock. We get a timeout here by Little Rock. It is a 30-second timeout. We'll step away with them. It's a full timeout, rather. You're watching live coverage of the 35th annual Popper Bluff Showdown presented by Popper Bluff R1 Schools of First Midwest Bank and today's talk, KWOC. So we're coming back following the timeout here. Under two minutes. Yes, the game yesterday between Springdale and Blyville tore the house down. It was a very good ball game. Went into overtime. Blyville down by 13 points at one point. They were able to come back and pull out the win. They'll play Haywood in the championship game. Should be a good game coming up. Blocker misses the shot. As he is back in, and or Wesley rather misses the shot. And what, oh, what a block by Wesley. My goodness, what a block that was.
So now on the other end, 12 to nine is your score. Blocker back in the ball game. Also TJ Watson, Corliss Williamson Jr. with the touch. TJ Watson kicks it over outside. Trey Howard still in there as well. La pass going to be a turnover there. Medlock able to come up with it. Coming up on the one minute mark here in the first quarter. And we're going to get a whistle here. Timeout called by Germantown. We'll see if it's a full or a 30. Going to be a 30 second timeout by Germantown with one minute to play here in the first quarter of play. So leading scores entering today's ball game were Cortland Muldrew out of Springdale, 79 points so far in the tournament. Jordan Allen out of Hillcrest, he had 48 entering today. He's got 26 to add on to that from the first game today. And Anthony Medlock coming in at 45. Medlock has four points right now in this game. So now we are back to live action now. Ja'Cory Dixon still in the ball game. Hugh McFarland, also Anthony Medlock, Caleb Jeffries. And we're going to get a whistle here and a foul coming up. This one's going to go against Little Rock. It's going to be on Williamson Jr. It'll be his first personal foul, team foul number two. Ben Fox is also back in the game for Little Rock. So Germantown, good pressure here. 2-3 zone right now by Little Rock. Ja'Cory Dixon tries to backdoor pass that one's going to be taken away by Andrews. Turnover there by Germantown. A lone look pass to T.J. Watson drains a three-point basket. That was a good look by Watson. 15-9 is the score right now. Alicia Wilson says, let's go G-Town. Talking about Germantown there. Blocker on the shot is going to be no good. As time expires in quarter number one, we have played one in this fifth place game. It is Little Rock 15, Germantown 9. You're watching live coverage of the 35th annual Popper Bluff Showdown presented by Popper Bluff R1 Schools and First Midwest Bank. All right, so we are back. Lee Wallace, the Mules are going to play Carl Junction at 6 p.m. on Thursday night. And we'll have that game live for you right here on Facebook and on YouTube. All right, as we reset, possession arrow is going to favor Little Rock. It'll be at Corliss and Williamson Jr., J.J. Andrews, Landron Blocker, T.J. Watson, Ben Fox on the floor. For Germantown, Joshua Davis, Caleb Jeffries, Hugh McFarlane, Anthony Medlock, and A.J. Thomas all on the floor right now. Jamil Wesley on the bench right now. And we get a travel call. This one going to go against J.J. Andrews. Now Wesley back in the ball game. He'll replace J.J. Andrews, who will get, I'll make that Cordes and Williamson Jr. will get a break. 7.30 to go in the first half. 15-9. to Blyville is on the way now. Thank you so much, Brian. Thanks for the update. 
It's going to be a good championship game between them and Haywood. Offensive foul is going to be called by Ja'Cory Dixon. It is his first personal. So a turnover there by Germantown. 7.07 to play, long pass across the court there. Blocker goes inside, a blocking foul. They're going to wave the shot off. It'll be a foul on Joshua Davis. Each team with two fouls here in the first half. Brian, are you telling me that the team is on their way here, or are you talking about the fans? Three-point basket by Wesley is no good. And it's going to be last touch by, it looks like, Little Rock. I haven't seen Blyville yet, so maybe he's talking about the team. Could be. Could be their fans, too. I was told they're going to pack the house. That's what I was told yesterday. We'll see. It was crazy in here last night. We got out of here about 10, what was it, 11-15 last night, something like that. It was a very late night. Way past my bedtime. Oh, Brian says the city is on the way. Well, for those, Brian, that can't make it from the city, make sure and tell them that we'll have the game live on Facebook and on YouTube. Dixon underneath. Boy, good defense here by Little Rock. They have really turned the pressure on. 15 to nine. Medlock gets it to Joshua Davis. Good move inside. Medlock couldn't finish. Rebounded by Blocker. Blocker now gets a little bit of space. He goes up, no good on the shot. He will draw the contact. Mr. Fowler says, big chicken saws. Blyville fans already tuning in. A foul going to be called on Medlock. It's his first. Blocker going to the free throw line for Little Rock. Blocker so far looking at him, a 6'5 junior. Multiple D1 offers like Mizzou, TCU, Texas A&M, Old Miss, and many others. The way he has played at this tournament, it's easy to see why. Blocker, second free throw coming up. Knocks that one down at 16 to nine. So Ben Fox will take a seat. John Fowler, thank you, sir. Trey Howard is his brother. Thank you so much for tuning in. Three-point basket there by A.J. Thomas, 16 to 12. He says, go Warriors. Pretty good ball game here early on. The Warriors have a four-point lead. Three-point basket by T.J. Watson is no good. Quickly on the rebound is Medlock now. Joshua Davis is going to get fouled. It's going to be on T.J. Watson, his first team found number three. We are in the second quarter, 16 to 12. Medlock on the inbound. He misses the shot there. Ball's going to be batted around. What a hustle by Little Rock. What a hustle by Germantown. It's going to be last touch by, by Blocker. And now we're going to see coming in for Germantown, D.J. Allen. He'll come in for the Red Devils. There's six guys on the court right now. And they're going to say Davis will come out. 4.53 to go here in the first half. Boy, that was good action all the way around by both teams. You talk about fifth place. Neither one wants a two, loss, two losses in this tournament. Oh, good, good steal by Williamson Jr. Dixon turns it over. We get a whistle here and a foul. Marie Moore Parks says Chickasaw Nation, standing room only, they say. Oh, boy. 
So Dixon picks up his second personal foul. And we're going to see for the Red Devils, we'll see Caleb Jeffries coming back in. Ja'Cory Dixon will come out. T.J. Watson also checks out. And Ben Fox is back in. I'll tell you what, Marie, it should be a lot of fun tonight. Blyville. Three-point basket by Fox is no good. Good rebound that time by Medlock. Good pass inside as McFarland going to get fouled in the process. Marie, tell all your fan base down there who can't make the trip, I know it's going to be standing room only. Make sure and tell them they can watch it live here on Facebook and on YouTube. Foul going to be called on Jamil Wesley. It'll be his first team foul number four. Free throw is up, and it is good by Hugh McFarland. Four points in this ballgame. 16 to 13. It's only a one possession game now. At one point it was 16 to 9. Second one is no good by McFarland. Tracked down by Williamson Jr. So clock continues to start. Williamson Jr. on the three ball. No good. Good rebound by DJ Allen. He went high for that rebound. Medlock. Gets it around the corner now. Jeffries back to Medlock, top of the key. Medlock in the top three scoring in this tournament. He's got four so far in the first half. Coming up on 342 now. Good move, tries to get it inside. Going to be a turnover though as Fox able to take it away. McFarland try to get it to Medlock. Good defense by Little Rock, especially Ben Fox on that last play. We get a whistle and a foul coming up. Be a foul coming up on Germantown on Caleb Jeffries, his first team foul number five. On the inbound, Wesley over to Williamson Jr. Now down low to J.J. Andrews. He's got seven here in the ball game. Blocker, long two-pointer, no good. Rebounded by Medlock. So now Medlock, no look pass over to Thomas. Boy, Germantown moving the ball very efficiently. Shot is no good by Jeffries, but a good rebound by DJ Allen. Medlock goes up, it's no good. And he tries to save his own missed shot, unable to do so. Wesley pull up jumper is no good. Ball is batted around, DJ Allen comes away with the rebound. Oh, what a move by McFarland. He goes coast to coast, and he's got six points. A one-point game, 16 to 15, with 2.39 to go here in the first half. Trey Howard going to come in the ball game now. He'll replace Jamil Wesley on the other end. Ja'Cory Dixon, he'll replace Medlock right now with four points. 2.39 and counting to go before halftime. It is Little Rock basketball. Little Rock. Make sure and share this feed for us on Facebook. Tonight during that championship game, we'll be giving away a gift card a courtesy of Academy Sports and Outdoors of up to $100. We'll tell you how to win. All you got to do in the meantime, a travel going to be called on J.J. Andrews. In the meantime, just share this video feed. Also subscribe to our YouTube and you'll be eligible to win a 30-second timeout called by Little Rock. They're going to have three timeouts remaining here in the ball game. So let's recap. In the first game, Poplar Bluff gets a win over Hillcrest. Mules get one win. Also in this ball game at 16-15 Little Rock, they at one point led by a score of 16-9. It has been a 6-0 run by the Red Devils ever since. Later on tonight, third place action. You've got Douglas out of Memphis, Tennessee taking on Springdale, the Bulldogs from Arkansas. And then a championship game. That's going to feature Haywood, the Tomcats, taking on Blyville Chickasaws. We have been told all day long 
that this place is going to be thunderous tonight. If it's anything like it was last night when Blyville took on Springdale, we're in for quite the battle. It was thunderous in here last night, and they are promising the same thing tonight. Well over a 1,000 folks watching us last night on YouTube and Facebook combined at one point. Over a 1,000 watching us on YouTube alone. We'll see if we have that kind of, that kind of viewership here tonight. We get a turnover by Howard. One can only hope. So McFarland, 17 to 16 now to score. Shakori Dixon, McFarland top of the key. He is posted up by Williamson Jr. So Jeff Jeffries now back outside. Ja'Cory Dixon takes a long jumper, no good. Rebounded by Williamson Jr. It's going to go out of bounds. A last touch by Germantown. And it will stay with Little Rock. Coming up on the one-minute mark now in the first half. It is a 17-16 lead. An 8-0 run right now by Germantown to lead by one. It'll be a foul on Allen. DJ Allen, his first team foul number six. Medlock back in the ball game. He'll replace A.J. Thomas. One minute exactly. Next foul will put Little Rock on the free throw line. They just get it in to Ben Fox. Just get it in before the five-second call. Ben Fox for three. It is up. It's off the front end. No good. Rebounded by Medlock. He had to go high for that one. Medlock works it over. Three-point basket is no good by Ja'Cory Dixon. Rebounded by Ben Fox. Blocker. What a move. Couldn't get the finish. Rebounded by Dixon. Blocker one point in this first half. Pretty good ball game here. Very low scoring by both. Little Rock, five turnovers. Germantown, five turnovers also in the ball game. Jeffries outside at 12 seconds. They may play for one shot. So now McFarland, he's a good athlete. There's a backdoor pass to Medlock. Medlock shot is up and no good. Rebounded by J.J. Andrews, and that is the way this first half will come to an end. It is a 17-16 ball game right now. Really good first half. Very limited turnovers. Each team with five turnovers so far. We're going to go to halftime. Coming up, we'll be back with second half action. You're watching exclusive coverage of the 35th annual Popper Bluff Showdown. It is presented by First Midwest Bank. Also presented by the R1 School District and today's talk, KWOC.
All right. So here we go as we get ready for the second half. Haywood is already in attendance, or at least the coach is anyway. Got a chance to talk to Coach Chapman a little bit ago. And Haywood, they're gearing up for a battle tonight when they take on Blyville in the championship game. Want to give a big shout out to Miss Diana and Lonnie Taylor in the hospitality room. They've got a laptop set up back there watching it right now as well. Big thank you to those guys for all they have done during this entire tournament. Not only making sure that we're fed, but also feeding the coaches, their families, everything they do. They have been a part of this now pretty much since day one, 35 years. Couldn't do it without them. All right, so in the first half, Germantown shooting only 29%. They are just two of nine from behind the arc and one of three on the free throw line. Hugh McFarland leads the way with six points, four by Anthony Medlock. Looking at Little Rock, they are led by J.J. Andrews. He's got seven, three each by Jamil, Jamil Wesley. Also by T.J. Watson. Two points by Corliss Williamson, Jr. And a free throw by Landron Blocker. The Warriors shooting 26%. Three of 13 from behind the arc and just one of two on the free throw line. Germantown outscoring Little Rock 8-1 to one in that second quarter. So far in the ball game, we have had six different lead changes. Largest lead has been by the Warriors when it was 16-9. It was a seven-point lead at one point. So now we're about ready to get underway for the second half. And Ja'Cory Dixon is going to be out there. Same starting five as we began the ball game. They switched sides on us, and now that means Germantown going from right to left on your TV screen. Same starting five for both teams to begin this game, or begin the second half, rather. Temple shot is no good. Rebounded by Blocker. Oh, good job by Medlock. Medlock taking it away, and he hands off to McFarland, and McFarland with an easy bucket in transition. Now the lead gets extended once again. 19 to 16, biggest lead by Germantown, three right now. So here we go now, three-point basket by J.J. Andrews is no good. Off to the races now is Jeffries. We get a block and a foul coming up. Going to be on T.J. Watson. It'll be his first, or make that his second personal team foul number one. Free throw was up, and it is good by Jeffries. He's got his first bucket, or first points, rather, in the ball game. At 20 to 16, the score. Second one is up, and it's also good. So 21 to 16 now, the score. Oh, good job there by Dixon. Nearly had a steal. There is a steal by Jeffries now. Out in front, there it is. Two more points for Ja'Cory Dixon. We get a whistle here and a stoppage of play. Two 
23-16. Scoreboard here says 22, but they didn't give the free throw a moment ago. We're going to keep it at there. Now they fixed it. I thought that was correct. 23-16 is the score. They should never doubt us. That's twice today that's happened. We've been right. They've been wrong. 23-16, a seven-point swing now for Germantown. They have, they're on a 6-0 run to begin the second half. Good move inside by J.J. Andrews. It is 23-18 the score now. That's a good shot by J.J. Andrews. Big crowd watching us now on YouTube. We appreciate you so much. Springdale and Douglas is coming up next. Good job on the steal there by J.J. Andrews. Third place game is up next. Right now we're watching a good one here as Wesley is able to go up and score it. We get a timeout, Little Rock. It is a 30-second timeout. Coming up following all the games here tonight, they'll be announcing the all-tournament team. We'll see who is able to make the all-tournament team later on tonight. I did already turn my bracket or my selections in. Let's see, for this game, these players, at least the folks that I selected, I've got Anthony Medlock on mine. And I've got Landron Blocker on mine as well. But that being said, J.J. Andrews, he is impressing me here tonight, this afternoon. Nine points, 5.08 to go here in the third. 23-20 now. It is back to a three-point lead. Randy Morris says, let's go Warriors, watching us on YouTube. Down in Little Rock. Good move by Temple. Temple is able to go up and score that one. 25-20. That was a good move. For the rest of this tournament, we don't have a dog in the fight up here. All we care about is seeing good competition the rest of the way. Good move by Corliss Williamson, Jr. He's got another bucket. He's got four in the ball game. Four points in the ball game now. He come in for T.J. Watson on that last timeout. So now Dixon works it out to McFarland. McFarland, he's all by himself right now in the open wing. They miss him. So Williamson Jr. comes up with the steal. Pull up jumper by Wesley is no good. It looked good on the way down. They are out and running in Medlock with a big couple of points there. 27-22 the score. Boy, Medlock come alive on that one. He's got eight points. Already four in this half. There's a big three. I told you, Ben Fox. You let him open on the outside. He is lethal. 27-25 now the score. Jeffries on the other end, no good. And a rebound by Ben Fox. So Jeffries could not connect. And we're going to get T.J. Watson back in the ball game. So coming out now is J.J. Andrews for T.J. Watson. 3-24. And counting, 27-25. Jamil Wesley going to walk it up the floor. Corliss Williamson, Jr. Also Landron Blocker in. Ben Fox. Twenty-seven, twenty-five. the score. 2-55. Joshua Davis is going to check in on the next whistle, which we just got one. That'll be a foul on Hugh McFarland, his first personal. 
We're going to see Joshua Davis coming in now for Temple. So Temple will take a seat. Also, A.J. Thomas is also in the ball game for Caleb Jeffries. He checked in a moment ago. T.J. Watson trying to get some space underneath. Williamson Jr. now. He'll take the three shot. This one off the mark, it's no good. A good rebound that time by A.J. Thomas. Here's a three ball on the other end by Joshua Davis is good. Medlock set that up real nice. What an assist. 2.10 to go. Oh, high impact move and they're gonna say offensive foul on a blocker on that one. That'll be his second personal. J.J. Andrews gonna come in for blocker. 2.09 to go here in the third. Also coming in for Germantown is Chance Terry. He'll check in for McFarland. 30 to 25 the score. Five point lead right now for the Red Devils. We'll see the Red Devils again coming up next game with Douglas. Good move inside by Dixon. Dixon able to come back with it after a near steal by Little Rock. Medlock for three on the outside, it's no good. It's gonna go out of bounds, the last touched by Medlock. And it will go to Little Rock. Our broadcast here this afternoon, this evening, is all being brought to you by our good friends at the Popper Bluff R1 School District and the title sponsor of the showdown at First Midwest Bank. A big shout out to First Midwest Bank for all they've done getting these teams here, making sure they are fed and housed and everything in between. It's going to be on Anthony Medlock. It'll be his third. Team found number three now. So now Medlock will take a seat. McFarland back in the ball game. Medlock, six points, seven rebounds here in the ball game thus far. Wesley kicks it inside. Good job by J.J. Andrews down low. He's got 11, 30, 27 to score. Oh, my son's about to wear down on the scoreboard. I might be taking it over the last two games. He's had a great run this week. I had to wake him up super early this morning. Well, not super early. I think it was 645, 650. We were here very late last night. Three-point basket by Dixon is no good. Good rebound by Terry. He come flying in for the offensive rebound. And we get an offensive foul on Terry. That'll be his first team foul number four. And we're going to see Blocker back in the ball game. He'll come in for T.J. Watson. Also back in the ball game on the other side, D.J. Allen. He'll come in for Chance Terry. Little Rock shooting 35%. 11 of 31, eight turnovers. Germantown shooting 12 of 32. 38%. They've also got eight turnovers also. Three-point ball game, a one-possession game as we wind down the third quarter. My wife, Pam, was going to be here tonight. She wanted to watch that Blyville game. There's a steal on the other end, and there it is. A.J. Thomas puts up two points. Five-point game. And we have ended the third quarter. It is a five-point ball game by Germantown. 32-27 the score. You're watching live coverage of the 35th annual Popper Bluff Showdown presented by the R1 School District, First Midwest Bank, and today's talk, KWOC. We are back in about 30 seconds.
So Alicia Wilson says Medlock for sure, absolutely. So my wife was going to come by for the Blyville game. Unfortunately, under the weather tonight, I told her to stay home. So did my son. He, he's giving me a dirty look. He says it's his idea. We both wanted her to get plenty of rest. We told her to stay home and not worry about a thing. So Joshua Davis is going to come out. Hugh McFarland, she'll be watching it at home live on the TV screen for sure. I'm so we are back here to live action. Eight minutes on the clock. Little Rock, they will inbound the ball. Down by five points. Here we go. On the floor for the Warriors, it is Williamson Jr., Andrews, a blocker, Watson, and Fox. On the other end, as we see a steal right there by McFarland, he goes up and scores. Good steal by McFarland. And they've extended their lead to seven. Another turnover there. Thomas, back-to-back -back turnovers by Blocker. Oh, Blocker comes right back with a big block. Good block. And just like that, oh, Blocker had a great shot opportunity. Could not get it to fall. 34-27 to score. Seven thirteen to go. Biggest lead of the night. Three-point basket in the wing. It is good by Joshua Davis. It is now a ten-point game. All of a sudden, Germantown, man, they have woke up. It is now a ten-point ball game. Fox can't connect. It is picked up by Davis, 37-27, Germantown. Another three ball, this one is no good. Offensive rebound by the Red Devils. And a rebound by McFarlane as both players go to the court. We're gonna get a foul, I believe, on J.J. Andrews. It is gonna be on J.J., his first team foul number three. And we're going to see Medlock back in the ball game. Medlock, six points, seven boards, and two assists. He'll come in for A.J. Thomas. Thomas draining a three-point basket a moment ago. So now McFarland up by ten points now. This Germantown team, man, they came to play here in the second half. They outscored at 15-11 to 11 there in the third on a 5-0 run here to begin this quarter. 37-27 uh, now. Germantown slowing it up just a little bit. Coach Spears does a great job with this, this team out of Germantown. We had him on last night during the Blyville game. So insightful is Coach Spears. Loves to come here in this tournament. I did ask him live on the air if he was going to be coming back next year. He had... Very short answer on that, but made it very clear. He's sure hoping so. He wants to come back. He said he loves this tournament. Chance says he wants to come back too. I'm seeing some Blyville fans walking in at the gym right about now. Nope, that is the Blyville players. So the Blyville team, Brian, if you're watching us right now, they have made their way into... Popper Bluff Senior High School. Foul going to be on Trey Howard. The Blyville team has arrived. I know that Haywood, they are arriving as well. It's going to be a fun few hours coming up. Springdale is up next. They will take on Douglas. Should be a good game as well. Medlock cannot find the shot there. On the other end, reverse layup by T.J. Watson. He'll draw the contact. He'll shoot some free throws coming up. It'll be a foul on McFarland. It is his second. Each team with five fouls here in the second half. Watson, three points in the ball game to this point. His first trip at the free throw line is no good. 
So far for the tournament, he is just two out of six. There is Medlock. Here's Rashard Marshall down there, Tim. He is a big 6'9 fella. He's hard to miss. You gotta wonder, I know Coach Pierce will tell me that his team is ready, but you gotta wonder, we get a timeout called this one by Germantown, a 30 second timeout. They've got three left. You gotta wonder how much gas is in the tank after back-to-back -back games, Blyville, not much of a test in the first round. They were pushed to the limit last night against Springdale. Down by 13 points, had to come back and force an overtime. I talked to their head coach following their win last night, and he told me they'll be ready. I have no doubt they're going to be ready. No doubt in my mind they're going to be ready. In that kind of game, I know that you can talk about who's maybe favored to win that game, but all I want out of it is a good basketball game. And if that game goes down to the last possession like it did last night, how awesome would that be? It makes tournaments like this well worth it when the last couple of ball games come down to the final possession. Last night, we had that. It's a 10-point game right now. Dixon... In the middle there, gets it outside to McFarland. Boy, good job by Germantown. Coach Spears has this team ready to play. Good move inside by McFarland. Shot is no good on the first opportunity. Can't get the second one to fall either. DJ Allen missing both opportunities there. It's going to go out of bounds on him. And we're going to see back in for Trey Howard is going to be Ben Fox. 4.50 now in the ball game remaining, a 10-point game. Little Rock Christian, they've led by as many as seven. And they're down by 10 right now. Ben Fox for the three ball, going to be off the mark. Good rebound there. Oh, what a great rebound by Josh Davis. Fighting through traffic for the loose ball rebound. It is a 26 to 19 advantage right now in the rebounding category by Germantown. One offensive rebound by Little Rock in this ball game. Long two pointer is no good by McFarland, and a foul going to be on the rebound attempt. One offensive rebound by Little Rock. Six right now by Germantown. And that'll be a foul on Little Rock. Landron Blocker, three points in the ball game, or make that one point by Blocker so far. Medlock on the inbound, it's no good. He has struggled tonight also. J.J. Andrews on the rebound. Oh, what a good shot on the other end by Ben Fox. And that gives, that cuts it down just a little bit. Camille Vaughn is tuning in. She is watching us from the Bloomfield Christmas Tournament. 37 to 30, glad to have you alongside Miss Camille. I would assume that Coach Vaughn is over there tonight in Bloomfield. I would assume that. Probably, if I know him like I think I do, probably going to be refereeing the championship game between Donovan and Dexter, I would assume. He is one heck of an official. 3.37 to go here in the ball game. A foul on DJ Allen, number two on him. Both teams are in the bonus now. Coming up tonight during that championship game, we're giving away a gift card from Academy Sports and Outdoors for 100 smackaroos. Trey Howard going to come in now for Ben Fox. J.J. Andrews missing the first free throw. All the free throws right now, critical. One out of two. 37-31 the score. It's a six-point deficit right now for Little Rock. 
with 325 to go if there's a team playing that can come back Little Rock is one of those teams that's how good they are we're going to get a whistle and a foul coming up on Little Rock I believe it's going to be on Watson it is and that's team foul number seven and that's his third we'll go to the free throw line we'll shoot a one and one coming up and Ben Fox is coming back in for Trey Howard McFarland is going to go to the free throw line. He is one of two on the afternoon. Misses that one, gets his own missed shot. That is big. It goes right back up and scores it. He'll get two points anyway. Fox's three-point shot is no good. Allen on the rebound. 39-31. McFarland so athletic, so quick. Misses that opportunity there, rebounded by Blocker. We're under three minutes to play here in the ball game. DJ Allen picks up his third personal, and we're going to see Jamil Wesley coming in for Williamson Jr. On the other end, Caleb Jeffries back in the ball game, and he's going to come in. It looks like for DJ Allen. Free throws coming up by Blocker. He is 5 out of 13 in the tournament, 1 for 2 so far tonight. Gets real quiet here in the gym. First one is up, knocks it down. 39-32 the score. Blocker, two points here in the ball game. 39-32 to now. Make it 39-33. You can hear the defensive chance here by Little Rock. They're getting into it now. Down by two possessions. 245. They've got the three ballers out there to cut it to one. Blocker, JJ Andrews, Ben Fox, Jamil Wesley all can shoot the three ball. They have been such a joy to watch. Both teams have been a joy this week. Look at the hustle on the court now. Still, Watson with a steal. Wesley goes up. Count it and the foul. Impressive by Little Rock. I told you, this team does not know the word quit. And that develops because of the hustle by Watson. Wesley with the points a foul on McFarland to make this a one possession game misses on that one Wesley misses Medlock on the rebound and we're going to get a whistle timeout called it'll be on Germantown it is a full timeout we're going to go with them you're watching live coverage of the 35th annual Popper Bluff Showdown presented by First Midwest Bank and the Popper Bluff R1 School District All right, we are back here live and 39 to 35 to score. Pretty good ball game here for this fifth place game. So now 39 to 35 to score. Dixon. The complexion of the game has changed. It was a 10-point lead, now down to four. Boy, what a good defensive battle right now. Medlock, that's the players show up at the right times. A big shot by Medlock. On the other end, Wesley drains a two-point jumper inside the paint. He's got, got nine. Still a four-point game. This one may come down to the wire. Oh, 
Oh, good move. Offensive foul is going to be called with 131 to go here in the ball game. And they're going to call that one on Ja'Cory Dixon, and that is his fourth. Boy, a good ball game here. It's shaped out to be, after all, 10-point game earlier on by Germantown. It is a 41-37 ball game. Coach Bennington, he has done a phenomenal job at getting his team from 10 points behind, coaching this team. 41-37. Ben Fox, or make that Watson rather, T.J. Watson. Ben Fox along the far side. We're going to get a whistle, and it's going to be a going to be three-second violation coming up on the Warriors. There looks like Wesley gets called for that per, that turnover. That'll be their 12th. Germantown's got 10. Coming up after this game, we'll try to get the winning coach to come up here and do a little interview with us. We're going to get a whistle and a foul coming up on T.J. Watson, his fourth. Still going to be a one-on-one -on -one coming up now. Ja'Cory Dixon is going to go to the free throw line. He's got two points. He has not been there today so far. Five out of nine for the tournament. First one is up on the one and one, nothing but net that time. Extending their lead to five points. Still a lot of time in eternity. 42 to 37 now. Springdale, Douglas, they will take the floor next. Second one is no good. Rebounded by Andrews. They don't need a three in this position. They just need a good shot. A three would help, but they don't have to have it right now. Wesley to Andrews. And you know what? I just said you don't need it. But if you get the opportunity, take it. And that's what Andrews did. That's a big bucket there. Big time, big time by J.J. Andrews. A full timeout by Little Rock. And they're going to have one left. Want to thank again our good friends in the hospitality room, Miss Diana and Lonnie Taylor doing a phenomenal job at taking care of everybody this week, including my personal kid, making sure that he's got all the cookies he can handle, although he's wore plum down now. He may not make it, Tim, for the next two games. I may have to relieve him of his duties. Coming up next, Springdale, Douglas. Also coming up tonight, championship game, Blyville taking on Haywood. I've seen some Haywood fans here. I see the Blyville team. They're already here as well. I've been told that the, not literally, but the city of Blyville is coming in for this game. And I'm assuming we're going to get a big crowd by Haywood too. Haywood's about Brownsville, Tennessee, about two and a half hours away. Blyville is about 90 minutes or so. So here we go following the timeout. We've got a foul off the bat by Trey Howard. So Howard is going to be called for the foul before the inbound. And that'll be his second. Fowler says, we're already here. I've seen some Blyville people already starting to arrive. This place is going to get packed. I got a feeling pretty quick. Free throw, first one is on the money by Dixon. So Howard is going to check out. Ben Fox is back in. Dixon has four points in the ball game. Still a one possession game. Now it's a two possession game. 46 seconds. Oh, now we're getting the Haywood fans already logged in. I tell you, it's going to be a great ball game. I can't wait, Murph, Murray, Murphy. I want to say your first name, but I don't want to get it wrong. Good move by Wesley. It is back to a two-point game, 26 seconds. Are we poised for an overtime game here, Tim? Are we poised for that on this fifth place game? We're going to get a foul by Jay, or I should say J.J. Andrews. 
It's a two free throw opportunity coming up. It'll be for Dixon. He's just made a couple a moment ago so far tonight. He is three out of four, eight of 13 on the free throw line. Shante Campbell says Haywood is on the way. Oh, this gym is going to be exciting. Free throw is up and good. We're going to get a substitution now coming in. Thomas is in the ball game now. Jeffries will take a seat. Second one is up, and it is good as well. We're going to get some of those. We're, we're, we're going to try our best, Miss Campbell. I've already talked to the coach and what I, I believe one of the cheering coaches. My goal at some point, probably during the next game, I'm going to get at least one, if not multiple, of your Haywood cheerleaders live on the program with us. They do a phenomenal job. And I tell you what, the cheerleaders by Haywood, in my mind, they have been one of the best parts of this tournament this entire year. The way they come out, they stomp their feet, get the crowd into it. It is a sight to see. So hats off to your cheerleading team, Miss Campbell. They have done a great job this week. They deserve some love too. 11 seconds left, 46-42, the Red Devils up by four. Timeout called, the final one by Little Rock. It was a full timeout, by the way. Oh, no problem, Miss Campbell. Thank you all. Your fans have been so great this week. Make sure you tell the ones that can't make it they want to tune in tonight around 7 o'clock for that last ball game. It's going to be fun. So here we go, final 11 seconds, four-point ball game now. Final seconds, Blocker gets it to J.J. Andrews for three money. He done it again. It, and now we're going to get an official's timeout. Delay of game, it looks like, is going to be. They're going to put more time on the clock. Clock is stopped. No timeouts by Little Rock. We're going to put at least two seconds on the clock, it looks like. Going to go back to five. It's at 3.2, 5.8. That's a lot of time. That is a lot of time. Plenty of time for a quick steal or a foul. And now Howard is going to come back in for Ben Fox. This one is going to come down to the wire. This is what we, we work hard for all week. Games like this. Miss Campbell says Haywood is ready. You know what? I believe her, Tim. I believe they're ready. I believe Blyville is ready. Fowler says, let's go Warriors. Stay solid. 5.8 on the clock. We're going to inbound McFarland. And we get a whistle here and a foul before the, before the, before the ball is even inbounded. So Medlock is going to go to the free throw line. We'll get you his numbers. Clock didn't even have to move an inch. It's going to be a foul on Jamil Wesley. So now Medlock going to the free throw line. First one is up, knocks it down. He is 11 out of 13 in this tournament. He'll get one more. It's a two-point game. Plenty of time. Plenty of time on the clock. And he misses that one. We get a jump ball. It's going to stay with Germantown. That is big. Big rebound by Germantown. And they're going to get it on the possession arrow. Still five seconds are left. It is still a two-point game. A lot can happen in five seconds. And we've got a foul, I believe, on T.J. Watson. He has just fouled out. That's his fifth personal foul. 
make sure and share this video feed for us on social media. We're going to give away a gift card coming up during that championship game from Academy Sports and Outdoors. So Watson has just fouled out. And now they're going to put back in, it looks like, Cordis Williamson Jr. who will check in for TJ. So now on the line is A.J. Thomas for two free throws. He has not been there all tournament. First one is up and good. That's big. If he makes this one, it's pretty much ball game. 48-45 the score. Forty-eight, forty-five. he misses it. So now a Andrews, oh, he had the ball for a minute. It's going to be taken away by McFarland. And that's how the game will come to an end. Germantown survives. Germantown survives. And they will take fifth place in this tournament. Wow, congratulations to Germantown. Stay with us. We'll try to get Coach Spears in just a moment live on the 35th annual Popper Bluff Showdown. All right, we'll get Coach Spears coming up. He is walking up as we speak. Coach Spears, he's a pro at this. We had him on last night. Big win tonight, 48-45. We'll, we'll let Coach Spears get mic'd up here. All right, Coach. First off, congratulations. Hard-fought game. You guys got down early, never gave up. Walk us through the second half. You guys able to make a big run, go up by 10 points, and get a win. Well, we knew it was going to be a hard-fought night. Um, the game, we both stand at the same hotel. Um, it was just a, a battle of attrition, you know. We both had to get, leave the hotel early, so it was just a willpower. We knew that if we could withstand, we know we're physical, so if we could withstand that physicality, we could come in in that second half. We just, and I, I saw the game changing, but I saw us making a couple mental mistakes. We should have had a better game plan, not a plan, but we should have played better down the stretch, but that's what this tournament's for. We can learn. Hopefully we can take that back to our district play, but I'm happy for the win. I'm happy for the Constellation Championship. Like I said, we leave here with a smile on my face. <laughs> I'll tell you what, the guy that impressed me down the stretch, Ja'Cory Dixon making those big free throws. You said it last night best, that ball games, free throws can win them or they can lose them for you. Today, he showed up in a big way. Yep. Down the stretch, I think he made a couple of turnovers early trying to force it, but I told him, the point guard, you have to take over on the floor in the fourth quarter, especially at the end of the game. He did that, he made a couple of good defensive plays, a couple of rebounds, and he knocked down some big free throws. And like I said, that took us home to the win. You guys, 10 out of 16 on the free throw line overall, 37% shooting wise. Was you happy with that number overall, coach? Well, it got to win, but we got to improve on that. You know, obviously we'll take the win any way we can get it, but we got to improve on that. We shouldn't be, we should shoot more from the line, better than that. But I think just the wear and tear of this tournament, that's what's so good about it. You got to have willpower. You got to be able to go deep in your bench, and guys got to be able to play because you're playing every day. And it's not like just you're playing anybody. You're playing tough competition. 
you know. And so, but we want to shoot better than that. But I was happy that he knocked them down at the end. Got to tell you, man, your team, so respectful group of guys. Love having them up here. I hope they've enjoyed this as much as I've enjoyed seeing them play. I think they did. They enjoyed it. They're walking around the school. They like the atmosphere. Like I said, they came to me and they were saying, the lady at the hotel asked us about this, so I told them. I don't know if they thought I was just making stuff up, but like I said, I enjoy coming here. This is the fourth time. I'm leaving out with a winning record yes. again. I think that's the third time I did it, so I feel good. <laughs> so what is the plan for you guys the rest of this night? You guys hitting the road tonight? Oh, yeah, we'll hit the road. We're trying to get back because we got to go right back, and Monday we got to play again. So we'll try to get back. We'll probably hang around for a second, see what Douglas does. Another team from Memphis, great coach, great Great group, of, great group of kids. We'll watch them for a second, and then we'll probably jump on the road, grab us something to eat, and then just say salute to the Poplar Bluff. We had a great time, great Did tournament. Did you have trouble sleeping last night after that incredible game in the final nightcap? I did. I, you know what? It wasn't sleep. I wanted so bad to call a meeting last night. As a matter of fact, I did. I got to the hotel. I said, let's come into the weight room, and let me just discuss some of the things I thought that helped the game last night for Blyvin and hurt the, for Springdale. And so we talked about that and tried to make sure we didn't make those same mistakes. Like tonight, we went up three, and I said, guys, I saw this last night, so let's not foul a three-point shooter. So just learning from what we saw and what I saw. Want to give me a prediction about that last game tonight? Haywood, Blyville, who do you think, Coach? Ooh. I was wrong last night, but I got to be right tonight. I'm going with I'm, I'm going with Bly, but the big fella, I think the big fella's, he's going to be hungry tonight. He was hungry last night. He is hungry tonight. The big fella, I'm going with I'm close, going with Bly. Close score? Oh, yeah. I think it'll be a five-point game. It's championship, like I said, last night. And then now you got to hope that Blyville would, had to expend so much energy last night. You just wonder how much energy they got left in the tank. So I'm still going with Blyville. One more time, Coach, for your fans watching, looking at that camera, tell them how much you love them, Coach. Hey, we love the Germantown fans. We love Blyville. I mean, not Blyville. We love Poplar Bluff. We love being at this tournament. Great facilities. Hopefully we'll be back again. But we enjoyed ourselves. And hopefully we, the guys can learn and we can move on from this and have a great year. Coach, my pleasure as always. No Safe doubt. travels back to Memphis. No Doubt. You bet you. Coach Spears joining us live. Germantown gets the win, 48-45. We're coming right back. You're watching live the 35th annual Popper Bluff Showdown presented by the R1 School District, First Midwest Bank, and today's talk, KWOC.
All right, we are getting ready now for the third place game. Congratulations to the consolation champions. They are the Germantown Red Devils, Coach Spears and company. He is such an awesome guy. So glad that I was able to get him up here multiple times. We are about ready. I see the Douglas fans are now tuning in on social media. Love it. So glad they are with us here tonight as well for this third place game. Springdale, Douglas, this one's going to be good as well. Everybody gearing up for that final game. Thank you so much, Miss Rochelle. Appreciate you. You know, what's funny is Tim and I were just sitting here talking about this. I don't know how we're still doing it right now. I'll tell you how we're doing it. It's all adrenaline right now for sure. But after, after this game and next game, Tim and I would have done, this will be our 40th basketball game this month alone. And I'm talking play-by-play -play of 40 straight basketball games. Incredible. It's been a great time. And we're going to have a great couple of ball games coming up. By the way, we're going to give away this awesome gift card courtesy of Academy Sports and Outdoors. That's coming up tonight, too. All you've got to do to be a part and to win is just share this video feed on Facebook, subscribe to our YouTube channel, and you're going to be involved. You'll be involved to win. That's all that it takes here tonight. Coming up on the two minute mark here, two and a half minutes exactly. Two minutes, and we will have for you the next ball game between Douglas and Springdale. I think my son's going to be taking a nap for about a, about a week after we're done. He has been working so hard this week. He is, right, right now, he is running. He is running to the trash can, maybe going to use the restroom. He is. He's on a mission. He said, you're not touching that scoreboard. Ms. Rochelle, it is YouTube.com backslash River Radio PB. YouTube.com backslash River Radio PB. That is our YouTube channel. You can go watch this game live on YouTube. Pull it up on the big screen. That's what my wife is doing right now at home. She was going to be here tonight for the Blyville game. She doesn't feel good. I said stay home. Don't worry about it. She's a big basketball fan. You got it, Miss Rochelle. Thank you. Joshua Edmondson, thank you, sir. We're about to gear up. Going to be a great time. All right, the Tomcat cheerleaders are here. Thank you, Miss Christina. If, you can, if you're still watching us and can hear me, I'm hoping that we're going to be able to interview some of the cheerleaders coming up at halftime. That's my plan. I would love to have at least one cheerleader, if not more, because they have been a big part of this tournament. They have been, they have stole the show in many, many ways. All right, Lysandra, she is with us. Glad she is with us right now. We're going to go down courtside in just a moment. Don't worry, Chance. I didn't touch your scoreboard, I promise you. What a trooper that guy is. I almost, I almost dare say, Tim, he's working harder than you and I put together. He's making sure. Making sure that we're in line and everybody else is ready to go. All right. Good officiating crew for this next two ball games. It is the third place contest coming up between Springdale and Douglas. Coach Jeremy Price for Springdale. Coach Gregory Williams of Douglas. Springdale. Their head coach is Jeremy Price, eighth season as the head coach, a record of 11-3. His overall coaching record, 101-85. to 85. 
Oscar Seeley is the assistant coach. And of course, let's meet the starters here tonight for the Springdale Bulldogs, Zion Sanders. Also, Cortland Muldrew, got to watch him. Boy, he is lethal coming into the game. He is the leading scorer in this tournament. Carson Tangness, number 30, Isaiah Seeley, and the big fella, number 35, Tevin Tate. On the other end, Douglas is being coached by Gregory Williams in his seventh season. His assistants are Lewis Mobley, Daryl Shack, and Darian Gray. Let's meet our starters here tonight. Demario Johnson will be introduced first, followed by Taquez Butler. Also, Tyler Johnson, he is the big man. He won the slam dunk contest, by the way. Marjavis Chandler and Joshua Thompson. Those are the five that will be on the floor for the Douglas Red Devils. They are going to be the home team. The Red Devils are the home team wearing the white jerseys, maroon trim, and the maroon numbers on the other side, Springdale. They're the away team. They're wearing their maroon jerseys with the white trim and the white numbering. Yes, Marie, he is definitely a beast for sure. You know, it's great. The next two ball games, we've got no dog in this fight. All we want to see is a great ball game. That's all we care about. That is all we want to see. I think, Tim, I've got maybe, just maybe, I've got enough voice for two more games. After that, I'm done for the rest of the year. I've got one day off, and we're back at it next week in Joplin. That's okay, though. It has been a fun, fun month of December. 38 ball games down. Two more to go. If the voice cracks a little bit, now you know why. It'll be Johnson. It'll be Tate. Whistle sounds. We are underway. It'll be controlled by Springdale. They are going left to right on your TV screen. All right. Sean Johnson says, get it, Douglas. I appreciate you guys. I'm grateful to the 901 as well. You guys have been amazing all week long. There's a, quit. There's a good job there on the steal by Butler. Butler now following the turnover. Three-point basket is off the mark by Chandler. It's no good. Good rebound by Tangness, and here comes Seeley now. Boy, this will be a fast-paced game all the way around. Good job by Tevin there. Makes his way inside the paint, and he gets the first bucket of the ball game. I'll remind Chance to do that, Miss Johnson. I promise you. Seven minutes to go here in the first quarter. Two nothing in favor of the Springdale Bulldogs. Tyler Johnson gives it to Butler. Goes inside. What a scoop and score there by Butler, or make that by Chandler rather. Johnson on the assist. Boy, that was good. Three-point basket. Boy, what a good shot there by Muldrew. I told you, this guy, he is going to be, he is on my all-tournament team. I've got him on it. Another guy there, Tyler Johnson as well. Johnson misses that shot. Tate on the rebound, 5-2 to two now. Third place game. So Muldrew. Seeley fouled out in last night's game against Blyville. Muldrew, three-point shot is short this time. Rebounded by Thompson. Thompson goes all the way in, and a whistle, and a foul going to be called on Tangness. Oh, Blyville's cheerleaders, they're in the house now. Haywood's the cheerleaders are in the house. I'm telling you, Tim, can't wait. The Smiths are checking in from the 901. Go, Douglas. Thank you so much, Lissandra. Appreciate you so much for tuning in. 
First free throw was up and no good by Thompson. Five to two the score. Third place game is up for grabs. Second one is up and good. Five to three now the score. 542 to play in quarter number one. Cam Franklin is back tonight. Glad to have you back, Miss Franklin. She says, let's go, Douglas. Man, these fans out of Douglas, they have been with us all week long, Tim. Springdale, the same scenario. This tournament is all about good basketball. Good basketball communities. Good job by Muldrew there. It's knocked out of bounds on Douglas. And it will stay with the Bulldogs. Bulldogs are coming in the ball game 11 and 3 on the season. Douglas 9 and 7. Good job by Tate and a foul going to be called on Tyler Johnson. That'll be his first. Ante is in the comment she says, "Let's go Devils." We're going to turn up the comments now these next two games. And by the way, for those of you watching us on social media, all you got to do is share the post for me on social media. Somebody is going to win $100 coming up tonight. We're going to do that during the next ball game. It's 6 to 3, make it 7 3 at Tevin Tate. Boy, the plan is to get him going in this game. The plan is to get him going. He's got four already. Big crowd right now on, on YouTube. Glad to have you alongside. What a shot! by Dequez Butler. It is now seven to six. Man, oh man, that was a good shot. Tyler Johnson, big assist there. Makes it a one point game. Muldrew, his shot is short. Rebounded by Johnson. And here come the Red Devils. And we're gonna get a whistle here. It's gonna be out of bounds on Johnson, a turnover which it could have been an offensive foul, so I think he's thankful that that was called a turnover on the out-of-bounds line versus the offensive foul. Could have gone either way there. Seven to six now as Seeley steps inside. Oh, he's gonna be bailed out with a foul. Coach Williams is not happy there on the sideline. Thought that was gonna be a jump ball. Did not get the call that he wanted. So Thompson does get called for the foul. And that is number two for the team, his first. 421 to play. Here in the third place ball game, a silly for three, money. He has been dynamite all tournament long. So now Butler from the free throw line, good shooter, nice. He is a smart shooter. He's got five of the team six. Or, or five of the team's eight, rather. Ten to eight. Oh, you're right. I, I said Butler. It was Josh. My bad. And we're going to get a whistle here. He stepped out of bounds. Muldrew did. It'll be a turnover. And it's now ten to eight. Once again, see several fans walking in from Blyville now. I've seen quite a few from Haywood. Good move inside. Good block by Sealy. So Sealy with a nice block, knocked it away from Butler. Haley Smith says that she is here. Let's go, Douglas. A lot of Red Devil fans here tonight on face on social media right now with us. Shot is up and no good. By Johnson, rebounded by Sealy. Tangness was open for the shot. It's no good. Good rebound by Johnson. Boy, a really good first quarter. What a move inside by Butler. And we've got a tie ball game. 10 to 10, the score as Butler's got seven points of the team's 10. 3.01 to go here in the first quarter. And the ball's going to go out of bounds. The officials get together. I believe Sealy may have touched it last. He did. It'll be a turnover on Springdale. 
So Seeley touched it last. 10-10 to score. Got Joseph Hardeman right here behind us on the catwalk. He was a phenomenal player for Popper Bluff a couple of years ago. His brother Dominique coaches for Popper Bluff now. 246. Shot going to be blocked by Seeley. And now here comes Muldrew and the Bulldogs. 10 10 tie. Good move inside to Tate. Count it and the basket. Good move by Carson Tangness. And that'll be a foul on Demario Johnson, his first, team's third. So Tevin Tate now, he's got six points of the team's 12, has a chance for an and one. Can't get the shot to fall, Thompson now with it. Joshua Thompson. Thompson going to get called for the foul. Or make that Johnson, rather. Nope. Thompson will shoot the free throw, rather. Foul going to be on Sanders. Had a small issue here. I thought I did here in the, in the uh, hang on one second. Bear with me here. Free throw is up, and it is good by Thompson. Thompson. Three-point play now, 13 to 12 to score. For some reason on my computer screen, the monitor went dark. That's why I kind of froze for a minute, but we're good. It came back. I'm not sure what that was about. Now we're going to get a foul here on, it's going to be, it looks like, on Tyler Johnson. It's going to be his second personal team foul, number four. 13 to 12 is your score. Both teams with all five of their timeouts. Muldrew now, four points. And we're going to see Jarman Brittman coming in now for the big man, Tyler Johnson. Next up, it is the 14 to 13, the score now, as Springdale has regained the lead. We've got a fix there, Sean. Appreciate you letting us know about that. 14, 13, the score. Last touch by Springdale. So now Butler gonna inbound to DeMario Johnson in the backcourt. 14 to 13 is the score. Red Devils down by one. Really good first quarter so far. Three point basket is off the mark by Chandler. And we get a rebounding foul. And I believe it's gonna go on Brittman. It's gonna be on Brittman, his first. So Brittman is gonna be called for his first personal team foul number five. No, thank you. I appreciate you letting us know. A lot of moving parts going on. Three-point basket by Muldrew. It is off the mark. No good. Here comes Chandler. Chandler from the free throw line. And he'll back it out to near midcourt. 58 seconds. They work it around the timeline. Johnson, 49 seconds. Here comes Thompson now. Thompson's shot is no good. Good rebound by Tevin Tate. Muldrew, pull up jumper is up and good. He's got seven. Sixteen to thirteen. Now the score. 16 to 13. 
There's a steal. We'll fix the scoreboard here in just a moment. When there's a pause in the action, we'll get it fixed. It's going to go out of bounds. 16 to 13 is the score. So the Bulldogs, they've got a lead, a three-point lead with only 12 seconds left. So now Seeley along the outside, or make that Gazaway rather. Now Tate goes inside, Tate goes up, count it, and the foul. Six, 18 to 13 now the score. 18 to 13. Tate with a good move inside, he's got six. And it's going to be a foul on Johnson, his second, by the way. Tate, free throw is up. It's good. 19 to 13 is the score. And at the end of one, Tate with nine points leads the way. We'll be back. You're watching live coverage of the 35th annual Popper Bluff Showdown. It is presented by the Popper Bluff R1 School District, First Midwest Bank, and today's talk, KWOC. All right, 19 to 13, the score. Second quarter coming up. Chance got confused on. He's only 12 years old, folks. He got confused on the scoreboard here. They don't have the team names. They've got the team mascots. I told him, I said, you're just fine, brother. Don't worry about it. We got to fix real quick. He's doing a phenomenal job this week in this tournament. Love having him alongside. So Douglas now, they'll get the ball. Possession now will favor Springdale. We are underway here in quarter number two. Six point lead right now by the Bulldogs of Springdale. Boy, Springdale, they have really come alive here in the last few minutes. Three point basket, there's a big shot by Demario Johnson. The Red Devils have cut into the lead. 13 or 19 to 16 now. That was a good move. That was a really good move there by Douglas. Nearly had a steal there. Gazaway and company, they will have a steal. Good steal there by Britman. So now they're trying to cut back into the lead. Britman goes up and it's no good. Rebound by Tangness. Boy, what a back and forth game. Steven Totson, he is in the ball game as well. Isaiah Seeley, three point ball is no good. Rebounded by Butler. Here comes Thompson, he's gonna go baseline and a blocking foul coming up, I believe, on Tevin Tate, number one on him. He is doing a great job. Thank you, Michelle, I'll let him know. Doing a great job over there. Eating too many cookies though, I'll tell you that. Thank you, Kenneth. Mr. Pennington. Little Rock played a great game here today. Tell your son how much I appreciate him coming over here from Little Rock. They were phenomenal to watch here this week. So Tate on the foul a moment ago. What a move inside by Joshua Thompson. 19 to 18, a one point game. This one I got a feeling is going to do, it's going to get good, real good, real quick. Blyville's in the house, folks. It's going to be a good night tonight. Seely goes down low, misses the shot, rebounded by Thompson. 
6.22 to play here in the first half. 19 to 18 now the score. Big crowd on YouTube and Facebook starting to get going right now. Springdale leads by one. The Bulldogs wearing their away jerseys, maroon jerseys, white trim. Good job there by Butler. Went for a steal. They're going to get it. They went for the steal, and they got it. So Muldrew is back in. He'll check in for Totson. Butler's shot is no good. It's rebounded. Here comes Seeley and company, 19 to 18. It's six minutes to go. What a move by Seeley. Five points, 21 to 18. Boy, these two teams are very physical. Nobody wants to go home with a two-loss record in this tournament. They do not want to do that. Going to give away some gift card money coming up next game. To do that, subscribe to our YouTube. Share the video feed on Facebook. We'll pick a winner at some point next game. I can't tell you when because who knows what drama is going to unfold in the next game. Other than high intensity, we're going to get a timeout called this one by Douglas. It is a 30-second timeout. We'll step away. We're coming right back. You're watching live coverage of the 35th annual Popper Bluff Showdown presented by the Popper Bluff R1 School District, First Midwest Bank, and today's talk, KWOC. So here we go, 21-18 the score following the timeout. Three-point game again. Got to bring out the old detox drink, Tim. Got to get those green juices going. Between that, ginger, kale, and lemon, that's what's kept us going or kept me going all week long. A turnover there. Turnover by Chandler. Good defense by Springdale to force the jump ball. Four fifty-seven to play here in the first half. Tate, he gets a little bit of space. What a move by Tate. 11 points. He has come to play tonight in this game. 23 to 18 the score. Three point basket is no good by Butler. Rebounded by the Bulldogs, Sealy now, pull up jumper is money. Saw that one on the release, Small Drew on the assist. 26 to 18 the score. So here we go now as they work it around. Johnson, Demario Johnson, good bounce pass inside. There's a good move by Britman. 26-20, Douglas is not going to go away easily. They're going to make the Bulldogs earn it tonight. There's a nice steal by Butler. Tate on the turnover, and he'll go in for the finish. He's got nine, 26-22. What would I tell you? I think it's going to be a close game all the way around. At least I hope it is anyway. I know that the Bulldog fans don't want me to hear don't want me to say that, but I'm just saying I want to see a good, hard, clean ball game. I mean, we're already here, right? We might as well see a good game. Sealy picked up by Thompson. Goes inside. How do you stop him? He's got 10 points. Six-point game again, 28-22. 3-23 now here in the first half. Douglas, four timeouts. Springdale, all five. Good move to Britman inside. Triple teamed, a foul possibly on Tate. I think it is on Tate. 
It's going to be on Tate, his second personal. And we're going to see Britman going to the free throw line for the tournament. He is three out of seven. Three out of seven on the tournament. Here is the free throw coming up, 28-22, knocks down the first one. Douglas is three out of four on the free throw line at Springdale, five out of six. Douglas, only two turnovers in the first half. Springdale's got seven. Terrence West will come in for Tevin Tate. Second free throw coming up by Britman. He's got three points. Better make that four. Oh, I thought it was going to go in. I jinxed him. I jinxed him on that one. Tangness on the rebound. Oh, don't hate me, Douglas fans. My bad. I jinxed him on that one. Tangness. Muldrew. 2.52 to go here in the first half. Two forty-one and counting. Seely, no look jumper there. Fadeaway jumper, I should say, no good. Thompson had it for a moment. There's a steal, turnover, and it leads to a bucket by Seely. Going to be a timeout here by Douglas. Oh, I'm sorry, it's going to be a Springdale timeout. 30-second timeout. So each team with four timeouts remaining. Coming up following the first half, we're going to walk down and we're going to get ourselves, I think we are anyway, we're going to interview a cheerleader from Haywood. They have been phenomenal all week. We want to keep that going. Talk to them a little bit about what they're going to be doing coming up to get this crowd into the game. If you think it was loud last night, I can't imagine what it's going to be like in about 45 minutes from right now. 30-23, 2.24 to go here in the first half. Springdale leads it by seven. Tamaya says, lock it in, Douglas. Glad to have her alongside here tonight for this third place game. Poplar Bluff, they take seventh. Germantown, they take the consolation championship. Who's going to get third place right now? The Bulldogs, they've got a seven-point game. So Gazaway checks out, by the way. Sanders is back in. Shot is up and no good. Ball batted around, and it's going to be taken by Seeley. He's got 12 points in the ball game, by the way. Seeley is a player. Good job going inside to West, and we get a whistle and a foul coming up. So a foul called with 1.51 to go. It'll be a foul on Johnson, and that's number three on him. That's big. That is big. First free throw is up and no good. Second one is up. Couldn't get that one to go down either. Rebounded by Johnson. 30-23 the score. So Britman now goes up and nobody blocks that, but he misses the shot. Muldrew, good pass to Tangness. We get a whistle and a foul. His first bucket, 32-23 now. And that's going to be a foul. So Tangness will be credited for the for the points. 32 to 23 the score. You know, it was an inadvertent whistle. They were trying to substitute in instead of calling a foul. 
Now we're going to get a whistle. Now the officials get together. They'll talk it over to kind of see what direction they're going to go with the call. Going to go in favor of Douglas. 32-23 now the score. One minute to go here before halftime. Holly checks in, by the way. Good move. Shot is no good. Britman, though, is able to follow it up. And now it's 32-25. It's a seven-point game. Big audience showing up on YouTube again tonight. Man, last night was absolutely crazy. Seeley, he's got 14. It's back to a nine-point game. Twenty-seven seconds and counting. Boy, Britman goes in the lane. No good on the shot. Thompson, he gets the offensive rebound. He'll shoot it and score. Still a seven-point game. What a first half. The Bulldogs have opened up a small lead. Coming up at halftime, we'll have on some of the Haywood cheerleaders. Paul Drew. Before the buzzer, it is a 37 or 36 27 score. We're going to come right back. We're going to have a very short halftime. I see the cheerleaders making their way up. We'll get them on next. You're watching live coverage. Don't go anywhere. We'll be back in just a moment live on the 35th annual Popper Bluff Showdown. All right, so we are back here live at the half, and I've got Lakaya here beside me. She is with Haywood, and first off, I've got to tell you, all week long, we have been talking about the Haywood cheerleaders, and I think, honestly, one of the best parts of this tournament is you guys. Yes, sir. You guys are loud. Tell me about the – how do you guys get fired up before every single ball game? Uh, before every game – we get in a huddle and we do our signature cheer. It gets us pumped up and, you know, it boosts us. It does boost you guys yes, for sure. And I can almost imagine that back home at a home game, the crowd gets into it as well. Very intense. It's very intense. It's wonderful. It's a great experience and it's very fun. Okay, so tell me about you. Are you a senior? Or what, yes, what's your sir. Grade? I am okay. a senior. So you've been cheerleading, I'm assuming, your entire senior yes, career, sir. right? All right. So tell me how – I mean, you guys have so many – that are cheering right now. You guys have them all the way down into middle school, right? No, sir. Or we junior just high. Have, uh, we just have 9th through 12th. 9th through 12th. Yes, and, of sir. course, you know, you guys have a big cheering squad. So, last night, walk us through last night's ball game. How amazing was last night's game? Uh, last night's ball game, it started off kind of slow, it you did. know. It did. So, we had to pump our boys up. But towards the end, it got very intense. We love very intense game. We love how our boys hustled and pushed through to finish it out. And it was just great. We love games like that. I love great competition. I look over. I see the Blyville cheerleaders. They made the trip. So, what I want to know, what we want to know are you guys going to bring it tonight we in have, this last game? We have no choice but to bring it. We're the best in the West, as they say. The best in the West. Yes, I sir. love it. So what we're going to do is at some point tonight, before you guys take the floor, before the boys take the floor, we're going to have Tim zoom that camera down. You guys have a lot of fans watching right now, Miss yes, uh, Shantae Campbell watching right now. Hey. I want you guys to wave at the camera yes, because sir. we want this place to just erupt later on tonight. Yes, sir. So what's it like cheering back home at a home game? What's it like? Walk us through it. It's very energetic. At home, you have a lot of fans, and at home, it's like, 
they know what we do. So it's like every time we do something, we got our crowd involved. It's very fun. It's homemade. Let's talk about your feet. You got to be <laughs> sore, right? Because you guys Definitely. have done so much stomping this week. Yes, sir. Our feet. Uh, they be in pain. Our ankles, our knees. We have half of the team got ankle braces on. Okay, okay. Yes, sir. So who came up with the foot stomps? Where did that come from? Um, it started a long time long ago. Time before ago. Okay. I was in, we just kept it going. It's a very, it's very fun, unique. So what I want you to do? What will you guys do between now and the end of the game to get ready? Now. We would just pep talk each other, you know, right, sit around. Right. Then we're going to stretch, talk to each other about how we have to have the energy to pump the boys up to win the game. It's the championship, so we're bringing the energy. we got to hype our boys up, and that's what we're going to so do. Let me ask you, does the boys feel like they can beat Blyville tonight? Do they feel that? They should. They should. They're I best love of the it. best. Best I of the best. I love it. Best in the West. Yes. So do me a favor. If you don't mind, look in that camera for the folks watching back home. What do you want them to know about this team? I want them to know that we're the best in the West, and we're going to take it home today. All right. Thank you so much yes, for coming sir, on. Welcome. Go get them and fire the crowd up coming up in about 30 or so minutes. Yes, sir. Thank you. You betcha. Joining us live here, the Haywood cheerleaders love having them on. They have done a phenomenal job. And I'm telling you, these cheerleaders, I believe, have been one of the bright points in this week. I'm going to be interviewing head coach Chapman right now. We'll get him on and get a quick interview from Haywood because this guy, he's got a big game coming up here in just a few minutes as he'll go toe-to-toe -to -toe with the Chickasaws out of Blyville. And, Coach, I can feel the energy that this game coming up tonight, it means an awful lot back home. It does, it does. It's preparing us for the down the road. Um, last year we lost to Crockett County in the semifinals of the region. And they're a good team. Yeah, and this is motivation towards that. You know, when I... Got, I got you guys in here on Wednesday for the banquet, talking to the team. They felt like they are one of the best teams in this tournament. Mm -hmm. Walk us through last night, off to a slow start against Douglas, but, man, they poured it on second half. Blyville last night going into overtime. I'm sure you love that as a coach. Yeah. Talk about how important the first few minutes are for your team and how crucial it will, it'll be to get going early. Uh, coming out of the first half, we got to make shots. Last night we missed a lot of easy shots around the basket. Turned the ball over early, but uh, tonight we got to take care of the ball. So what do you expect to happen from your bigs here tonight against a good team at a Blyville? More importantly, how do you stop Keyshawn Washington? How do you stop Rochelle Marshall? Keep a body on them at all times. Like, we have to keep a body and box them out. That's about it. You know, we saw last night a couple of players get cramped up mm -hmm. late in the on ball game teams. on both <laughs> ends. And I'm sure that uh, you guys talked about that. You guys want to get out in rhythm early, maybe start to a fast start? Yes. Uh, we got a lot of rest once we got back to the hotel last night. Put a lot of fluids in. Got up early this morning, came to shoot around, looked pretty good shooting the ball, so maybe they're a carryover. So let me ask you this. In your mind, Coach Chapman, what is the keys, what are your keys to winning tonight and taking home a tournament championship? Getting defensive stops. If we can stop them and get out in transition, get easy buckets, we have a chance. Last question. Before the cheerleaders line up and you guys come out, what's going to be your final message to your team tonight? Leave it on the floor. Leave it on, Leave the, floor. on the floor. Coach Chapman, class act all the way, sir. Thank you so yes, much. Sir, I appreciate you. you real quick. Your fans watching at home, give them that last message. Uh, we got a little song back at home. They didn't let the wood in the door. So, look, we here. <laughs> That's what I'm talking about, Coach Chapman. Go get him, sir. Yes, sir. Coach Chapman joining us live. Class act all the way from Haywood. Best of luck coming up to those guys in the championship game. We're going to step away a quick timeout. We're coming right back. You're watching live coverage of the 35th annual Popper Bluff Showdown. We are back here for just a moment. I've got Courtney right here beside me, and I gotta, I gotta say, I gotta send a text message real quick to my buddy John Scott because he had to leave early. I gotta get this out. Tell me about where this came from, Miss Courtney, right here. Oh, hang on one second. Put that mic. There you go. That is from the world famous Dixie Pig in Blyville, Arkansas. 
the world famous Dixie Pig in Blyville, Arkansas. And you said if we made it to the finals, we were going to get a nice jar of this barbecue sauce. This is amazing. Talk about Blyville for just a moment. Last night's incredible comeback win. Yes. The boys believed, and I, I've been saying this all day long. For me personally, I call for Popper Bluff. I've got no dog in the fight. Right. To watch that team last night against Springdale, that was a real treat. It really was, and it was a little nerve-wracking, I'm not going to lie. Um, our free throw situation hurt us a little bit last night, but also know that those guys have more fight in them and uh, a lot of tenacity, so they were able to pull it out. Keyshawn Washington, yes. he is an, at five foot seven. I mean, he plays like he's six five, six six. Yes, he is. He is a leader on the court. He is fun to watch. Um, he will drive in there. He makes beautiful spin moves to the middle. I mean, it's really he's he's a lot of fun to watch. What about Rashard Marshall? My Rashard, good, yeah. what a beast! <laughs> big shot. He's a beast, and he's big, but he's also athletic. Yes, he is. So it's I mean, he can get in there and move around, and he is six. 6'9", but he doesn't play like he's 6'9". No, he, he plays doesn't. like, you know, you've got Keyshawn that plays like he's 6'7", but then you've got Rashad that plays, you know, like a like a much smaller, more agile player, but he's just a beast that can go in there and move I as well. I know we're about ready to get to yeah. the second half of this third place right. game. Is the game going to remain close? Do you think Blyville can open up a good lead over Haywood coming up tonight? I hope so. It's always, you know, it's always makes you feel a little bit better when you can do that. Um, I think we got to watch our foul situation and watch our free throws and then we'll be we'll be in good shape. Settle the score right here and right now. Who's got the best barbecue? Is it Blyville? Is it Hay Brownsville, Tennessee? I think Blyville, we do, not only Dixie Pick, we've got a lot of pretty incredible barbecue establishments in Blyville and Mississippi County in general. So I would I would definitely put us up against just about anybody. I've never been to the Dixie Pick. I've heard so many great yes. stories. I am coming very, very soon. Yes. Courtney, thank you so much You're for welcome. stopping by. Thank you. You betcha. The Blyville Chickasaws, they will take the floor coming up following this game. We are having a blast. I'm not even going to share this with John. He just, he's done screwed up by leaving. He left me here with this barbecue sauce all to myself. And Tim, don't you dare tell him. Don't you dare tell him. Oh, my goodness. Thank you so much to Miss Courtney. We're going to get back to live action. This is why Tim and I do these tournaments. We make friends all over the place. Miss Rochelle says, hey, Wood. And I'm telling you, Miss Rochelle, We've got no dog in the fight here. We just want to see a good ball game. I want. I hope that Haywood and I hope that Blyville, honestly, when they come out tonight, I want them to tear the house down. That's what we want. If it goes a double overtime, too bad. We'll be here to catch all the action. No doubt about it. Jeff's. Oh, Jeff is tuning in tonight. We are doing great. Uh-oh, John Scott just sent me a message. He just saw the video. Oh, boy. Too bad, John. This is, this is my barbecue sauce. You snooze and you lose, my friend. Basket is no good by Tyler Johnson. We are back to live action now. Good rebound at that time by Cortland Muldrew. Great halftime show, by the way, as well. Haywood cheerleaders. They were amazing. Also, Courtney from Blyville, Arkansas tonight. Oh, the big man, Tevin Tate. Shot is up and no good, but a nice offensive rebound by Muldrew. Muldrew, a big rebound. We're going to get a whistle here and a foul coming up. So Carson Tangness. Foul going to be called on Chandler. It'll be his first. So Seeley is back in the ball game, starting five for both teams to begin the second half. What a move by Seeley. He goes up. He's got 16 points. 38-27. So now Joshua Thompson trying to get open. And Britman is also in the ball game. Johnson lays it up. It's no good. Britman again. Big offensive rebound for Britman. And he's going to get fouled as well. He's going to go to the free throw line to shoot some free throws coming up. Free throw coming up by Britman. It is up and it is good.
Second one is up, and it is no good by Britman. Muldrew on the rebound at 38-28 the score. So now on the other end, Muldrew, his shot is no good. Good rebound by Thompson. And we're going to get a whistle here and a turnover. It's going to go out of bounds. Big audience right now on YouTube. We're having a great time at 38-28 the score. No good by Tate, rebounded here. Thompson and company coming back. Good move by Johnson, gets it to a Britman. No foul is called, and now we get a whistle and a foul coming up. I don't think my co-partner, John Scott, is real happy about the fact that he left me high and dry. He is missing out. I'm gonna, I'm gonna get me some good barbecue real soon, Tim. You and I are gonna go to Blyville. Third foul by Tevin at Tate. So Tate's going to come out of the ball game for the time being. Gazaway checks in. So now Johnson gets the inbound. Johnson, his shot is a little bit short. Muldrew comes away with the rebound. Gazaway, three point basket off the rim, no good. Got his own missed shot, but it's going to be taken away by Johnson. Johnson, oh, what a spin move. Shot is not going to fall. Another offensive board. Britman could not get the shot to fall either. Boy, Thompson, those guys are banging around. You got to tip your cap here to Douglas. They are not going away. They are not giving up. Clara, you send your grandson up. Roman, right? You send him up to talk to me. I would love to have him come up here. They are here from Fisk, Missouri watching this tonight. You send him on up. Foul, by the way. Free throw is no good. Rebounded by Muldrew. 38-29 the score. Thirty-eight twenty-nine. That last foul, by the way, was called on Sanders. We get a timeout here. Three to one in favor of the Red Devils on the foul situation. It was a timeout called by the Bulldogs. That they've got three left. Yes, you do that. Love to have him up here. This is about the kids here tonight. We're about great basketball and kids. That's what it's about. So here we go on the inbound. Muldrew is going to inbound it here. Tell you what, Tim, starting to get kind of full in here. It's going to be a great night coming up. 5.27 to go here in the third quarter. 38-29. Near the near midcourt there. Good job by Muldrew to redirect traffic. Muldrew guarded by Thompson. There's a good pass to Gazaway. Gazaway now trying to find Tangness. He does. Three-point ball off the mark. It's no good. Muldrew, what an offensive rebounding machine he is. Nearly a turnover there. Good job by Gazaway. Gazaway gets it to Muldrew. Muldrew, he gets double teamed and still able to draw the contact. No, they're going to say he stepped out of bounds. Turnover on Muldrew. Didn't see that one. 448. 
38-29 to score. Thompson, three ball, no good. Seely somehow comes away with the rebound as he goes to the floor. He's able to maintain his possession. Seely, his shot is no good. Rebounded by Butler. Here comes Butler. Drops it off to Britman. Good job by Chandler. He is double teamed in the corner by Muldrew. We get a timeout called by Douglas. It is a full timeout, so we'll step away with them. We're back in 30 seconds. You're watching live coverage of the 35th annual Popper Bluff Showdown. It is presented by the Popper Bluff R1 School District and First Midwest Bank. All right, so we are back here, and I've got Roman here beside me, 10 years old, and he is into uh, video photography sort of things, and right yeah. now you're down there doing some uh, video work, trying to zoom in on these awesome plays in this third place game. Yeah. What got you into this kind of work, my friend? Um, so, usually, um, I'm like into stop motion. Uh-huh. I'm into stop motion. I would take single pictures and then I would roll it through and then it would kind of make like a video. So that's how I got the inspiration. That is awesome. So what do you think about this game so far here in this third place contest? Um, so far, they're playing good. Seedley with a missed three point opportunity there. Johnson on the rebound. You gonna stick around for the championship game between yeah. Blyville coming up and Haywood? That was going to be, I think that's going to be a really good ball game. You think so? Yeah. Was I you here so. last night for the two semifinal games? Uh, no, I wasn't. No. It was highly intenseful, for sure. It was very intense. Mm -hmm. You'll have a lot of film, I'm sure, coming up in, these, in this last game if you want to stick around for some good footage. Yeah, I will stick around. All right, Roman. I'm so glad you were able to come over and talk to me a little bit. Ten years old, it looks like from what I can understand, you've got some really good footage so far. And there will be a lot more where that came from here tonight, I'm sure. I'm also into architecture. Really? Nice. Yes. What got you into that at 10 years old? Um, it was like kind of the stop motion, too. I mean, I built the World Trade Center out of Legos. Oh, wow. The seven, uh, like, ancient wonders of the world. Nice. Like, I built lots of stuff. Well, Roman, it was very nice to meet you, my friend. I'll let you get back down courtside okay. to kind of get some video work and keep it up the good work, my friend. Okay. All well, right, my friend. Roman, nice yeah, absolutely. Roman joining us live all the way from Fisk, 10 years old. That's what this tournament's all about. Three minutes to go here in the third quarter of play. Gazaway with a big three. That is monumental. 41 29 to score. And an offensive foul is going to go the other way. Tainness steps in and takes the charge. Butler on the offensive foul. Two forty-eight to go here in the third quarter. 41-29. Two of 40. Oh, he stepped out. He stepped across, and it's going to be a turnover on Tangness. Two of 48. Remember, coming up in the next game, we're going to give away a gift card from Academy Sports and Outdoors. Worth $100. All you've got to do is share the video feed on Facebook. Follow us on YouTube. And we're going to pick a winner at some point during the next game. Not sure when. 
I've got a feeling as we see Thompson bury his way in. It's a 10 point game again, 41 31. I've got a feeling that next game, oh, Muldrew. Yeah, how, how do you defend that? 44 31 now. My goodness, what a shot. Muldrew, oh, he's, he is warmed up now. He is warmed up on the one-handed jam. 46-31, Springdale. 46-31, Douglas. So 46-31, the score. The Red Devils are down by 15. Carson Tangness is going to pick up his second personal foul. So now Thompson will go to the free throw line. First one is up and good, 46-32 now. And we're going to see Demario Johnson back in for Chandler. Forty-six, thirty-two. the second one is up, and it is good. He's got 13 points. It is a 13-point game. Forty-six, thirty-three. the score. So now Muldrew... Muldrew now is going to play keep away for just a moment. Good move inside to Sealy. They're going to wave it off. It was a foul on the floor. 46-33 going to be a foul, I believe, on Butler. It's going to be his second team foul number three. Or team foul number four, rather. Betty Campbell says, waiting on the Tomcats. Brittman going to check out. Terrence Holly is in. Muldrew. I would say he is a shoe-in. Him and Seeley both are shoe-ins coming up for the all-tournament team. Just like that right there, Seeley, he's got 18 points. Good job by Carson Tangness. 48 to 33. Turnaround jumper is no good. Gazaway with a rebound. We are under a minute left here in the third quarter of play. We still got one more exciting game to go. Going to try to get on the Blyville head coach at some point. What a move by Sealy. He's got 20 points, 50 to 33. Another 20 point game for Sealy. You're so much welcome, Miss Wright. My pleasure. Glad to meet him. Holly shot. Going to be rejected. Good job by Tainness to get up. 13 seconds. It is a 17-point lead all of a sudden. Muldrew, he just plows in, and they're going to be a blocking foul. This kid has no limits. Muldrew is so talented. That'll be a foul on Thompson. Tiffany Estes waiting on the Tomcats and the cheerleaders. I had the cheerleaders on, Miss Tiffany, one of them earlier. I think her name was Micaiah, right? She did a great job on the air. First free throw was up by Muldrew. He knocks it down. He's got 15 points. 51 to 33 now the score. Second one is up, and it's good. Boy, he is such a good, good player. They are 7 of 10 on the free throw line today. Three-point basket is going to be short. At the end of three quarters, it is a 52-33 ball game. We're coming right back. Don't go anywhere. You're watching live coverage of the 35th annual Popper Bluff Showdown.
All right, so we are back here live as we get ready for the fourth and final quarter. All right, one more game to go. I'm Frankie Castillo alongside Tim Hicks. Where's my son at? Get over here. This guy you see right here. Get over here, son. We'll, we'll, there we go. This guy right here, he's the reason behind the scoreboard. And I'm bringing out the big drink now. Going to get this green drink. You don't like it, do you? No, he doesn't like it at all. Getting ready for the last game of this tournament. For Tim and myself, it is game number 40 that we would have done this month alone. Tiffany says, shout out to her daughter, Anaya, cheering her heart out. Yes, ma'am. Going to get a whistle here and number 11 there. Holly picks up the foul. Team foul number five or make that number six. Seven forty-three now. Got Coach Brian Bess here from Three Rivers. He is in the front row of this next game. Miss Bailey says she's ready for Blyville basketball. Yes, ma'am, we're ready too. It's going to be a great night coming up between Blyville and Haywood. I can't wait for it. It's going to be on Terrence Holly, his second personal foul. I know I've said this all tournament long, but I really appreciate my son. He has really helped me out this week. I was going to do it by myself, and he said, no way, Dad. I've got your back. Muldrew, 17 points. Having him up here doing the scoreboard, I can focus on the play-by-play. -play. Tim's doing a phenomenal job on the camera, like he always does. And now we're going to see Douglas. It's a shame that one of these teams have got to lose 54-33. Tyler Johnson, man, he's been a thrill to watch this week as well. Shot is no good. Thompson, he has given it everything he's got here tonight and all tournament long. On the inbound, Cortland Muldrew. Oh, it's going to be taken away. What a rejection there. Good steal by Chandler. And Chandler with two points, 54-35 now. On the other end, we're going to get a whistle here and a foul. Tevin Tate, man, is he barrels his way in there. He always draws a double team. And a foul going to be called on Josh Thompson. Going to be his third. Wow, Charlie Donerson, Donerson rather. He says Coach Brian Best threw some alley-oops when they were teammates back in college. That's awesome. He is sitting right here to my left on the front row. Tate makes one out of two. 55-35, 20-point lead now. 20-point game. Tyler Johnson. Good job by Muldrew in there to take it away. So Muldrew is double team. He draws a double team. Also in there for Springdale, Reese, Reese Starks, number 15, getting some playing time here this afternoon, or this evening, rather. We got here in the afternoon hours. We've not been outside since, what, noon today? 12 o'clock or so. That's when we started getting everything set up and ready to go. It's going to be a big crowd tonight for this championship game. We're going to have a big crowd on social media. We're going to have them on Facebook and YouTube also. Last night at one point, we had over 1,000 watchers on YouTube. I've got a feeling tonight it's going to pick up again. Shot is no good by Gazaway. Rebounded by Tyler Johnson. Good move by Joshua Thompson. 
Tyler Johnson and him, they've been phenomenal. 55-37. The Chickasaws are going to be locked in. Miss Bailey says the Chickasaws are ready. Terrell Handy says they're going to be locked in. I'll tell you what, Mr. Handy. Last night, Micaiah, what a night he had. I think last night he was a big reason why they were able to come back and win. His defense was so huge last night. It impressed me up here. It really did. That kid is a working fool. I mean, he is hard-nosed as they get on the defensive end. He is something real special. 5.51, 55.37 to score. Springdale with two timeouts left. Douglas, they've got three. The Chickasaws area code, 8-7-0. Yes, Roman Edwards, I loved having him on here. It was awesome. Thank you, Miss Wright. So coming up next game, we're going to give away a gift card from Academy Sports and Outdoors. All you got to do, share the video for us. And what we're going to do is we will give away the gift card next game at some point. I've got an idea how we're going to do it. I've got an idea. All right, so here we go. Tangness going to inbound the ball. And there's a quick steal by, jo or by Butler, rather. Foul going to be called on Isaiah Seeley, it looks like. So Seeley is going to be called for the personal foul. So two free throws coming up here by Butler. He's got nine points, make it 10, 55, 38 to score. 55 at 38. Second one, no good at Tevin Tate with the rebound. Atlanta Perkins says, let's go Tomcats. Good move by Isaiah Seeley. He'll draw the contact too. He'll shoot a free throw coming up. Foul going to be called. On Tyler Johnson, his third personal. That's team foul number nine. Nine team fouls. First one is up, or the only one up. He misses that one. 22 points on the ball game. Good rebound by Thompson. Over 300 now on YouTube. Shot is no good by Thompson. Tang this on the rebound. And we're going to get a whistle here and a foul. I believe it's going to be on Johnson, Demario Johnson it is. And that is his fourth. That's his fourth personal foul. Double bonus now the rest of the way. Greg Williams is tuning in all the way from Dallas, Texas. He says, go Blyville. That was the weather down in Dallas, Texas. First free throw is up. It's good. By Tang is 58 to 38. Fifty-eight thirty-eight now misses the second one. Good rebound by Tyler Johnson. 20-point game. 58-38. Johnson inside the paint. No good. Good rebound. Tried to rebound that shot was Demario Johnson. 58-38 to score. Oh, Tangness goes down, and a travel going to be called on him. So now Douglas going to roll the basketball to near midcourt, or close to midcourt anyway. Darren Andrews says, let's go Chickasaws. Good move. Kicks it outside. Three-point basket is money. That is by Marjavius Chandler. 58-41 now. 17-point game. 
Here comes, oh, what a move by Tyler Johnson on the steal. And just like that, it is a 58-43 ball game now. There is no quit in Douglas. They do not know the word quit. Oh, Sealy, that was a good move by Muldrew. Sealy with 24. That was a good alley-oop there, led by Muldrew on the assist. Three-point basket is up. It's no good. Another rebound by Sealy. Boy, Sealy has had a phenomenal game. When Muldrew, he's got 18. He's no slouch. But when he's not dominating 40 points, Sealy is right there to back him up. Thompson with a good rebound. Tate could not get the shot to fall. Pull-up jumper by Johnson. It's good. 15-point game again. Three and a half minutes. Absolutely miss Nicole. I love watching Douglas. Great athletes all the way around. These kids work hard. Muldrew gets an open lane. 62-45 now. Wow, Bobby Chalk is tuning in all the way from Los Angeles, California. He is saying, go Chicks. He is watching his nephew, Rashad Marshall. Boy, he'll be a sight to see coming up in the next game, six foot nine. Every game I've seen him play in so far this season, he's just been so hard to defend. They put multiple bodies on him, and most of the time it's still not able to really shut him down, Bobby. He is a, he is a hoss, no doubt. Going to Ole Miss next year. Three-point basket is no good by Sanders. Here comes Douglas now. Good move. Reverse layup is no good by Butler. And Tangness now with the rebound. Coming up on 220 left here in the ballgame. 62-45. Prince Numi says, let's go Chicks. Brandon Wembley, same. Going to try to go back and forth. Offensive foul on Tangness. That's his third. And Gazaway is going to come in for Zion Sanders. We'll try to go back and forth here tonight on the Facebook and the YouTube. Three-point basket is partially blocked by Tangness. And here we go now with Muldrew. 62 to 45. Under a minute, or I'm sorry, under two minutes rather. Coming up next, championship action, Blyville. We're not going to take much of a post game. We're going to go right into the pregame because I promised all the Haywood fans that when the cheerleaders come out and do their deal, we're going to go right to them on court. I will keep my promise. Muldrew called for the foul. One thing about Muldrew, this kid don't foul very much. In three games, I, he did foul out last night. But other than that, he doesn't foul very much. Good shot by Gazaway. Gazaway, second one is up, and it is good as well. 64 to 45 now. Hakeem Senkel, let's go Blyville. Bring home the championship to Arkansas. Good shot by Tyler Johnson. 64 to 47, long two-pointer. Coming up on a minute now. As Muldrew has no quit in him. Lots of Blyville fans starting to log on. The Haywood fans, they'll get with it. They'll be tuning in in full force. It's a good crowd here on championship night. First one is up and good. By Muldrew. He's got 21 now. Seeley has 24. Muldrew has 22. 66-47 the score. 
Got Raymond Webb over here in attendance. He always loves good basketball. Three-point basket for Johnson is no good. Good rebound by Douglas. Shot is no good, and it looks like here comes Seeley. He'll go coast to coast. He's only a sophomore, 26 on the night. 41 seconds. Three-point basket is no good by Demario Johnson Muldrew now. And this might be enough to run the clock out. We got a timeout call here by Springdale. We're going to get a substitution. Zamarian Manuel going to come in. Also, Terrence West, Stephen Totson. So we're going to see most of the starters now coming out with the final 29 seconds. Fowler, yes, sir. John Fowler tuning in, keeping us up to date. Miss Rochelle says she is ready for the Haywood squad. We're about ready to go down courtside. We're going to award at third place. We'll do fourth place first and then third place. And then we're going to go courtside as Blyville and Haywood will take the court. Congratulations to the Bulldogs out of Springdale. They take third place in this year's showdown. Hats off to Douglas as well. They played a phenomenal ball game. They played well. It was fun watching Douglas, and thank you to all the fans that tuned in to watch your Red Devils play. Springdale is going to take third place. So now we're going to go down courtside. We'll let Tim zoom in and down courtside here in just a moment for the trophy presentation with the director of the tournament and the athletic director, Kent Keith, for Popper Bluff Mules High School. Going to make the presentation for third place to the tournament, third place, Springdale Bulldogs. I've got a feeling coming up when this is all said and done tonight, Springdale are going to have two players on the all-tournament team. They will have, I'm sure, Cortland Mor Mor Muldrew, there we go, and Isaiah, Isaiah Seeley, both will be on that for sure. So, 15 minutes now on the clock. As we see, congratulations once again to Springdale on the third place champions. And now we're getting ready for the championship night. Now the championship game. Haywood is already standing up. Good crowd. Here we go, folks. It's going to get crazy coming up in just a few minutes. We're going to stay with them. We're not going to go to break this time around. Normally, we go to a 15-minute break. I can hear them already winding up. I can already hear them already fired up right now in the tunnel. We can't see them yet, but we, see, we can hear them. We can hear them. I'm not sure, Tim, if you can get that camera on them just yet. They're getting close. We're going to keep it here. We're not going to go anywhere. I've got a real treat now, Tim. While we're waiting for Haywood, we'll get the camera. We'll get that camera turned on, Mr. Raymond Webb. Have a seat there, Ray. I tell you what, Raymond, we've got ourselves a good ball game coming up here tonight. You've always loved good basketball. You come all the way out to watch Blyville and Haywood. Give me your thoughts here tonight. Well, it's going to be a barn burner. Uh, Blyville, of course, was in a th the best game I've seen in years last night. And then um, 
Uh, Haywood brings a lot of energy, so it's going to be it's going to be a, it's going to be a good one. Tim will let you get Blyville on camera right there. That is the Blyville. That is the Blyville cheerleaders right now. This place is going to erupt here tonight, Raymond. I tell you what, Walmart, by the way, a proud supporter of this showdown. You guys do so much for the community in Popper Bluff. Can you believe you look at the crowd size? Our home team played at 2:30, but we've got a good crowd here tonight for championship night. Yeah, it just shows that it's a great tournament up to uh, from top to bottom. I've had people in the community talking about it, how good the tournament is, and it, it's a great thing. You can see Blyville. Now we're going to go down. I tell you what, everybody's talking about the Haywood yes. cheerleaders. I got a chance to interview one of them earlier, and they're going to pump up this Haywood crowd tonight. It's going to get loud in less than 15 minutes. Oh, yes, it's going to be great. My daughter, is a, she, she's in gymnastics, and she was glued to those young ladies the last two nights. So she's kind of upset with us because we're sitting far from them tonight. But Listen to we this. We can hear them. Boy, it's just been pumped up now, this, this squad from Haywood. So let me ask you, as you've got basketball running all in your blood and your genes, you watched last night, Blyville overtime. They got to be tired, right? Uh, I, I would, you would think, but you never know. They're young. You, uh, you just hope that, that they don't have a letdown from last night. You know, that was such an emotional game. My heart was beating through my chest, and I wasn't even playing. So it should be a great one. You look at Haywood, they got off to a slower start, but able to come back and win their ball game against Douglas. What does Haywood have to do tonight to stay with Blindville all four quarters? They, they got to keep pressure and they got to keep the big guy off the glass. Turnovers are going to be a big thing. Yep. These two teams are going to play fast. They got to get Chapman off to a good start. Foul trouble. How critical is it going to be for Haywood to not get in foul trouble early? Oh, by the way, neither team scored a single point when it come to the bench last night. Oh, wow. That's going to be uh, tremendous. I think uh, last night Springdale's, uh, what happened to them, three of their best players fouled out. That's so right. It, so, it, it I mean, it's, instrumental. I mean, it's going to be one of those deals. And then the last question I've got for you, when it comes to the crowd, we know it's going to be big. Which crowd do you think tonight is going to give their team a, a fighting chance? I think it's going to uh, – Blyville has a bigger crowd, but Haywood, those young ladies from Haywood gets everybody going. It's going to be a playoff atmosphere already right now it's going to be great as a basketball guy yourself you care to give any predictions tonight who's going to win this game my 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 head tells me Blyville. my heart saying uh haywood's going to give it all they got it's going to be either a way close one. do you think it's going to get to a point where either team runs away from it tonight if it is it would be Blyville. i would think i just think them and you know i just think they're talent wise is up there and it, if anybody could it, it'd be them That's so just I'm, my I'm assuming you're like I am we're just here for good basketball no dog in the fight no dog yeah. no dog we're just here to see a good fight thank you so much for coming up my friend and I tell you what I'm looking forward to this beginning in about 12 minutes yep thanks for having me you Frank. got it man Raven Webb joining us live here always love having him on does such a great job with the community it is Haywood it is Blyville we are 12 minutes away from the tip off don't go anywhere you're watching live coverage of the 35th annual Popper Bluff Showdown. It is presented by the R1 School District, also First Midwest Bank, and today's talk, KWOC.
All right, we've got about 10 minutes here to go before we tip off. And, oh, man, Miss Johnson says, you wait on them Blyville cheerleaders. I'm looking forward to it. I am looking forward to some great action coming up tonight. It's going to be a blast. I cannot wait for this game to get started in about 10 or so minutes. We're going to have a great time. It's going to be going to be classic. Blyville. Hard fought game last night. Hard fought game. We'll turn that camera back around. If you don't mind, Timmy boy. I got to interview the real MVP. Not you, Tim. Sorry. It's not me. I'm not the MVP either. This guy here He's been with me all week long. He did the tournament last week with me. We did a 26 game tournament last week. He was with me for 12 of those games. He's been here every night of the showdown. You've had a lot of fun, haven't you? Yeah. <laughs> so you're watching this game, a big crowd tonight. Hopefully. You know, it's, it's a big crowd. <laughs> it's gonna be energized. Are you ready for it? Yeah. It's going to be fast pace. Are you ready for that scoreboard? I guess. Can't mess it up. I know. All these fans watching us right now on Facebook and YouTube, they're going to cancel you <laughs> if you mess up. They're going to boycott chance. I'm going to get all kinds of sayings that says boycott chance. We don't want that, right? No. Listen, I know mama's watching right now back at home. She don't feel good. I know she's watching. Tell mom you love her. Get to feel better. Love you. Get to feel better, right? Yeah. Let her know. Get to feel better. She wanted to be here tonight. She wanted to watch Blyville and watch Haywood, and she just wasn't up to it. I know she's watching at home. I'm proud of you, son. You're doing a great job. Keep it up. Yeah, this better be a good game. It's going to be a good game. Who's going to win? You know what? Don't tell me. Don't, don't, don't even say it because I don't want to know. I want to be surprised I, in 32 minutes. I want. All right. You go the, You go take care of yourself. Be back in eight minutes for I'm a gonna good I'm going to go game. get a cookie. All right. Go get a cookie. Say hello to Miss Diana and Lonnie Taylor for me down there in the hospitality room. All going to be a great game. That kid is such a great kid. Yes, thank you so much, Coaches Pierce's son, five-year-old son. Cooper is watching all the way from home, and he wants a shout-out. Well, you got one, my friend. Cooper, your dad's a great coach, by the way. I've had him on a couple of times. He is top-notch all the way in my book, just like Coach Chapman is. Top-notch all the way. How do you win the gift card? We're not going to give it away right now, are we? Oh, okay. What we're going to do is you've got to share the video feed. Share this video feed on Facebook. Subscribe on YouTube. And what we're going to do is coming up tonight, some point during the game, I don't know when, we're going to give it away $100 courtesy of Academy Sports and Outdoors. That's what we're going to do. I haven't decided how we're going to do it yet. I've got an idea. I do have an idea, but somebody tonight is going to take, or I'm going to give them a gift card for $100. If you live in Blyville, you live in Brownsville, it doesn't matter. We'll send it to you. That's my promise to you. I'll reach out to you following the game, and we'll get everything you need. We'll get, every, we'll get all the details to send it to you. Boy, guess who's sticking around for this game? I've got Matt Wilkerson from MoDOT here. He's not going anywhere. He is sticking around for this ball game. Everybody, a who's who affair is here tonight. We've got six minutes to go. Get over here, Matt. You got to put a headset on for a minute. Get over here. Get over here. Put this headset on for a second, my friend. All right, you drop off your pretzel there. By the way, where's my pretzel? I'm just saying. No, 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 no. I don't want a pretzel. I'm kidding around. Absolutely, Miss Pierce. I'm, I'm sorry that Cooper can't be here. Love to meet him in person. I'd put him on the air with me, too. Matter of fact, he would do some killer commentary tonight if he was here. That's a promise. I had somebody come up here earlier, and uh, her name was Courtney, and gave me some amazing barbecue sauce from uh, Blyville. I can't wait to visit Blyville and go to that restaurant Matt, you're a who's who around here. MoDOT worker, 
area engineer, you're sticking around for this championship game. Yes, I am. Yeah. What do you think about this championship game? I think it ought to be a really good one, really tough matchup. Now, did you stick around last night for the uh, games last night for the semifinals? I did not stick around. I watched it on YouTube, and I was thinking if you said one more word about uh, an overtime, I was going to put my work boots on I'm telling on you. my recliner because that's the only way I was going to get up in the morning. I'm telling you what, man, it was such an amazing night. I mean, last night's atmosphere with Blyville and Springdale was off the charts tonight with Haywood, and you've got Blyville, both of these teams. They deserve to be here, I believe, and I'm hoping it's going to come down to the wire. I'm not going to say OT. I'm just going to say hey, it's going to be a fun 32 minutes. I'm fine with OT tonight. I don't have to go to work in the morning. Is it raining outside right now, though? That's the question. I really don't know. Okay, I've been, you've been, I've been here, here all since, day. Uh, you know, the first game. So. By the way, real quick, on a side note, Popper Bluff, back-to-back -back state champions in cheerleading. Your daughter does that. Yes. And I'll tell you what, they did a great halftime show today. They should be proud of themselves. I think they should. I agree. And uh, hopefully they'll come uh, do, do well on nationals coming and up next month. coming up in January, that's right? correct. All right, so I've asked a few people. I, we've got a bunch of people watching right now on YouTube and Facebook. Oh, boy. You care to jump in the pool's nest here and give me a prediction tonight? Prediction Whoa. on what? On this game. Who's going to win it? I'm going to say Blyville's going to win it. Blyville's yep. going to be a close game. I think it will be a close game. I, I, I think it will be just uh, single digits. Just so you know, because you said that, Everybody back in Blyville loves you. Not so much in Brownsville, <laughs> yeah. baby. I'm yeah, just saying. exactly. Well, Matt, thank you so much for coming up, my friend. Go enjoy your family. Happy New Year to you. And let's get ready for a good ball game. You too. Thanks, Frankie. You betcha. Matt Wilkerson here with Mo Dye joining us. Everybody coming out tonight for this championship game. It doesn't matter where you're watching from. We're going to have some great times coming up. All right, the last time out of the pregame coming up. Look at that crowd over there in Blyville section, Tim. We'll get them on camera. They are fired up. They are moving right now. Oh, my goodness. Chance comes back with pizza, cookies, and soda. This kid is going to be off the charts all night long. All right, final timeout. We're going to come back in about two minutes. You're watching live coverage of the 35th annual Popper Bluff Showdown presented by Popper Bluff R1 at First Midwest Bank and today's talk, KWOC. All right, so here we go, under um, under two minutes now until we get started. Before we get started, man, I just want to say to all the Blyville fans, all of the Haywood fans, thank you so much for allowing us to come into your homes all week long and every team that has been here this week. It has been an absolute joy to come in here and call these games. 11 games down this week, one more to go. 39 in total this month. It's been a marathon. And I've loved every single one of them. All right, social media, YouTube, Facebook, here we go. I've asked several people this question. Now I pose it to you. Let's get social media fired up. Quite simply, Who's winning tonight's game? Is it Blyville? Is it Haywood? Who you got tonight? Let's speak up and let's hear you loud and proud. Whether you're with Haywood, whether you're with Blyville, let's get rocking tonight. It is a championship basketball. I'm Frankie Castile, Tim Hicks on the camera. My boy Chance on the scoreboard. Well, he was. He is somewhere. I'm not sure where he went. I might be taking that back over because he might be in the stands. Nope, there he is. He's coming back. 
here we go. It is Friday night, December 30th. Oh, the comments are coming in. And remember, we're going to give away a gift card coming up tonight also from Academy Sports and Outdoors. And I just found out, I just realized how we're going to give it away. We're going to have the National Anthem. We're going to come right back for the official starting lineups here tonight live in Poplar Bluff. Anthem. It's time now. We are rocking. I've got just enough voice left for one more ball game, Tim. What do you say? Let's have a great ball game right here. Let's go down courtside. Kenny Hosler. He has got the starting lineups here tonight for the Blyville Chickasaws. They are the away team tonight. They are wearing their maroon jerseys, white trim, white numbering. Haywood. They are the home team. White jerseys, purple numbers. The Tomcats of Haywood. I'm not going to say a word. We're going to go down courtside. Here are the starting lineups for the Blyville Chickasaws. He just said they are 15 and 0 this season. Haywood is 14 and 2. Oh, this is great, Tim. This is what we waited for all week long. If you don't like high school basketball, if this doesn't give you goosebumps, I don't know what will. This is amazing stuff right here tonight in Poplar Bluff. Here are the starting lineups. Keyshawn Washington. Highland Chapman, we're going to go back and forth. I love it. <laughs> Jeremiah Wells for Blyville. <laughs> Jamari Person, number two for Haywood. Number 11, Shamar Marshall for Blyville. For Haywood, Jakari Komich. TJ Jackson for Blyville. And J.B. Snipe of Haywood. And then that roar was the big fella, Rashard Marshall, number 25. For Haywood, here he is, number three, Janarius Snipe. Here we go. 500 on Facebook, well over that mark. About 100 on Facebook. Here's how we're giving away the gift card, Tim. Here's what I want. When we get tonight all together on Facebook, once we get 200 shares, Tim, 200, we're going to give away a gift card tonight from Academy Sports and Outdoors. That's how we're going to do it. 
We want to give away a gift card. Let's reach as many people as we can. Let me know when the video is shared. We will check it all night long. Once we get to 200, we will give away the gift card from Academy Sports and Outdoors. All right, Chickasaw Nation. All right, Tomcat Nation. Here we go. We are underway. It'll be controlled by Blyville. They are going left to right. Keyshawn Washington is going to have it taken away by Janarius Snipe. And now the Tomcats going right to left. Three-point basket by Chapman is no good. It is rebounded on the other end by T.J. Jackson. No score. We settle in now. Shamar Marshall. Boy, what a great night tonight. It's going to be loud all night long. Richard Marshall can't hang on to it. Good job there by J.B. Snipe. Rashad Marshall. Oh, what a move. What a move as Janarius Snipe will get the first bucket of this championship night. Sandra Boyd says, let's go Haywood. Boy, listen to the crowd. Listen to the crowd. There's a jumper by T.J. Jackson. We are tied at two. Pull-up jumper by Chapman. Yes, sir. Four to two. Remember last night, Blyville down by 13 at one point. Come back to win in overtime. Four to two is the score. Haywood out to a two-point lead. And I will check the shares tonight during this game, by the way, on the gift card. There's the quick steal by Person. A turnover by Blyville. Three-point basket by Chapman. Oh, it's good. Oh, Chapman is feeling it. Seven to two now to score. Seven to two, Tomcats. So now Jackson. Keyshawn Washington, such a such a good player. First foul of the ball game on Haywood. It's going to be a foul, I believe, on Chapman. It'll be on Chapman, his first. They'll get two here. First one is up and good by Washington. This young man. He is such a great player. Chris Wheat says, go Blyville, all the way from Poplar Bluff. All right, Don, I see you shared. Second one, no good. Rebounded by Person. Here we go. J.B. Snipe out to Person now. Boy, he is such a good player. Signed to play at Colorado State in football. Wide open lane, and it rolls all the way around the rim. J.B. Snipe out to a 9-3 lead. Jackson looks around, top of the key. Out to Marshall. Marshall to the big man. We get a whistle and a foul. That is Marshall all the way around. Such a big player, big athlete. The stars are coming out tonight. First free throw coming up by Marshall, you betcha. Nine to four, the score. That last foul, by the way, on Janarius Snipe. Malachi says, go Blyville all the way from South Africa. Wow. Wow. Robin says, show them what that title 4A school can do. Or that little 4A school can do. My bad, I read that wrong. Good offensive rebound by Janarius Snipe. And we get a whistle here and a foul. Going to go against Haywood. So Haywood is going to pick up the first or a second foul on Janarius Snipe. And that's big. So Snipe will come out. Haywood now. So 
Laurie and Hayes gonna have a turnover there as Hayes checks in for the first time in this tournament. Chapman pull up jumper is no good. And Rashard Marshall with a rebound. Gonna be fast all night long. No good by Jeremiah Wells. Ball is on the floor. Somehow Chapman comes away with it. Chapman. Four nineteen to play. Here in the first quarter, nine to five. Outside now to Comage. I will agree with that. There's not a shot that Chapman doesn't like. You're right. Going to get a whistle and a foul, I believe, on Hayes. It'll be number one on him, but team foul number four. Right at the four-minute mark. Four-minute mark here. Four minute mark here to go in the first quarter. They called that last foul on, oh, they called it on Chapman. I was convinced that was gonna be on Hayes. That's a big foul as Chapman now has two fouls. And Chapman's gotta come out. I did not see that when I thought that was gonna be on Hayes. So LeKendrick Phillips is now in the ball game. Keyshawn Washington. He's got two points in the ball game, nine to six, nine to seven. Nine seven is the score. JB Snipe, boy, two of their stars are on the on the bench right now. Janaria Snipe, Tylen Chapman, each with two fouls. That is big. JB Snipe. Inside the paint, the shot is no good. Good rebound that time by Wells. Now Blyville going right inside to the big man, Marshall, and Marshall no good. LeKendrick on the rebound, three ball is no good by Comage. Offensive board by J.B. Snipe. Count it in one. 11 to seven now the score. That'll be a foul on Jeremiah Wells. It's first, team's first. Three seventeen to go in the first. Up and good. 12-7 now the score. Five-point game. Five-point game here in the first. Marshall again. No count, no foul called. So Marshall turns it over. Oh my goodness. Snipe did not get the shot to go down. He thought it was goaltending. It is loud here tonight. We get a whistle and a foul coming up, a blocking foul. Man, the comments are coming in so fast right now. It is impossible to keep up. Can't do it. I'll read them as I can get to them. Foul gonna be called on Samarian Hayes is his first. And we get a foul on the inbound, and that's going to be on Hayes. That is number two on him. So Hayes with a foul. Caden Pirtle, number 15, is going to check in. So Pirtle will check in now. Keyshawn Washington misses the first opportunity, and he goes in for another. It is T.J. Jackson who winds up and tips that bad boy in. Move inside, a turnover on Comage. So a turnover on Comage. 
It is 12 to 9 is the score. Two fifteen to go here in the first quarter. Or first, yeah, first quarter and a turnover. That was going to go against Shamar Marshall. It is deafening in here. And now we get a whistle and a foul. This one's going to be on Blyville. Man, the Blyville, the Blyville cheerleading squad or their fans, they are absolutely as we get a foul, that one's going to be on Jeremiah Wells, and that's number two on him. Wells will come out. Handy is in. 12 to 9 is the score. Pirtle, who checked in a moment ago, he is a six foot senior. Pirtle is going to be taken away. Handy goes up and scores. That is by T.J. Jackson. It is a one-point game. Oh, my goodness. T.J. Jackson again. Bang! Tearing the roof off the place. Blyville's going nuts here tonight. We get a whistle here, and it's going to go out of bounds. They're going to talk it over. It's going to take all three officials. Oh, baby. Big point in this game already. Big point. It's going to stay with Haywood. Haywood. So bottom line is half the crowd loves it. The other half can't stand it. They say Blyville's going crazy right now with this game. Oh, what a fan base they've got. So loyal to their fans. Person goes up, and a foul going to be called. And I believe it's on the big man, Marshall. I believe it's on Marshall. So Marshall picks up the foul. You would think this atmosphere tonight is for a state championship. It is deafening in here. It is amazing. Well over 700 on YouTube right now. Well over 100 on Facebook. It is deafening. Second one is no good. We are tied at 13. 13 apiece, and we've got a whistle and a foul coming up as Marshall, he is always double teamed down low. He always takes a beating inside, always takes the beating. And a foul going to be on Caden Pirtle. It is a one and one coming up now. We're going to see Marshall maybe take a seat right now. Fourteen to thirteen now. And the free throw is up and good. It is a two point game. And now we're going to see Kyrie Carter. He is going to come in for Marshall. Carter. He is a 6'2 junior for Blyville. John Fowler says, we don't mind getting physical. What a move by Person. He's got three points in the ball game. 15 all right now. Fifteen all here in the first quarter. T.J. Jackson going to have it taken away by Person. And we're going to get a whistle and a foul coming up. It's going to be on Washington and Marshall. Rashad Marshall is going to come right back in the ball game. Can't keep him out very long. 
Dallas Robinson is a support for Blyville, absolutely. Foul going to be on Washington, his first. Comich makes the first one. We're going to see Marshall come back in. Tony Short says, turning it up for the boys in South Mississippi County. We are 17 to 15 now, a two-point game by Haywood. Miss Ann, the Mules played at 2.30 today. Mules won. Three-point basket is no good by Marshall. It is rebounded by Tom, by the Haywood Tomcats. Here comes Person now. There's a, two, a, a big two-point jumper there, no good. It's gonna go out of bounds. Last touch by Haywood. 17 to 15 to score. This game is exciting. We're only in the first quarter. Good, good lob pass to Marshall. You betcha, what a move by Marshall. He's got six. We are tied at the end of one. 17 all the score. We've got three quarters left. The way both teams are playing, I have no idea who's gonna win, who's got momentum right now. You're watching us on social media. Let's get loud. Who's got momentum going into the second quarter? Coming right back. You're watching live coverage of the 35th annual Popper Bluff Showdown presented by First Midwest Bank. Today's talk, KWOZ, and the Popper Bluff R1 School District. So we are back here in the second quarter. And Haywood, it'll be Haywood basketball. J.B. Snipe back in the ball game. Also, Caden Pirtle is in the ball game. Jamari Person. We are underway in the second quarter right now. It is 17 all. Comage is back out there. Oh, what a block by Marshall. What a block. And we get a whistle and a travel on Phillips. Oh, baby. Marshall, we have seen this time and time again all week long. This guy, he is a sight to see. Lob pass inside to Marshall. Count it and the bucket. So Marshall again with two more points. It is 19 to 17 now. Free throw is up and it's good by Marshall. 20 to 17 the score. So now Blyville, once again, J.B. Snipe for three. It's off the mark. It's no good. Rebounded by Keyshawn Washington. This guy, he is phenomenal. So quick. Twenty-two to seventeen. All of a sudden, five-point game. Oh, there's a big shot by Haywood. A three ball by J.B. Snipe. Just when you think Blyville might start to maybe increase the lead a little bit, they come right back on you. Richard Marshall, T.J. Jackson now to Shamar, and we get a tie travel. 
And now we're going to see for Haywood, we've got Tylen Chapman, Denarius Snipe, all back in the game. Six thirty-six to go here in the first half. Three-point basket by Purston is no good. Rebounded by the big fella. Oh, what a move there. Good steal. Turnover. And here comes Chapman with two fouls. Outside to Comich for three. It's no good. Rashard Marshall with a big rebound. And now for this team out of Blyville, slowing it down. And once again, Marshall, how do you stop it? It is another two-point basket for him. He's got 11 already in the first half. 24 to 20 to score. Comage. Now Haywood in the flow of the game, going to slow it down a little bit. Comage over the big guy, over Marshall. He's got four points. 24-22 now. Three-point basket is off the mark. It's no good by Marshall. Rebounded by Janarius Knight. So now Janarius Knight. Three points here in the, I make that two points rather in the ball game. What a move to Person. He's got five. Guess what, folks? We are tied again. Derek Jacobs says Rashad can score 40 tonight. I think you're right. Goes inside and he gets fouled. He'll get two shots coming up. What a game so far in the first. And we're only in the first half. Going to be a foul on the Tomcats. Twenty-six. It's Twenty-five to twenty-four. Now it's twenty-six. We're giving him two points for the shots. It's twenty-six to twenty-four. They'll, the, the fans here are saying the score. They'll figure it out. It's a 26-24 game as Snipe is called for the foul. Tylen Chapman, his shot is up and no good. Rebounded by Keyshawn Washington. Oh, my goodness, what a move. What a move as Keyshawn Washington extends the lead to 8, 28-24 Blyville. What a move. That was amazing right there. 425 to go. Chapman outside to JB Snipe. Wide open money. He's got 11. Boy, what a game. What a game. Andy now. Very good defensively. TJ Jackson. Coming up midway through this second quarter. Washington going to knock it away by Comage and J.B. Snipe, or make that Janarius Snipe, rather. Both of these teams are fun to watch. Both are just electric here tonight. Handy gets the inbound. Now Shamar Marshall. They're going to lob it up again. There it is, the big fella. He's got 15. That is their playbook here tonight. 15. We're not even to halftime yet. I got a feeling Marshall. He's going to have a big game. Tylen Chapman, his shot is no good. Marshall on the rebound. Boy, this game tonight, it is something to see. 30-27. 3-13 to go. What a move. No, no good on Marshall's shot. Here comes Person. Person, count it, and the basket. 30-29 to score. 
going to be on, I believe, Makai Handy will be called for the foul. He is 30 to 29, the score. 306, Person, seven points, can tie the game again. Misses that shot, Marshall on the rebound. Marshall already has 15 points and five rebounds, and we're only in the first half. They lob it up again to Marshall. Now Jackson, offensive foul, yes it is. Lowered the shoulder there a little bit. And now we're gonna see coming in for Blyville, Travis Anderson. So TJ Jackson comes out. What a game here tonight. What a game here in the first half. 30 to 29. So far here tonight, Tomcat shooting 48%, 11 for 23. Seven turnovers. Blyville, they are 10 of 18 at 56%. Nine turnovers so far in the ball game. Jamari Person. Gets it inside to Janarius Snipe. Oh my goodness, count it and a foul. Wow. Snipe. And that's a second foul on Marshall. Three or two, 38 left. The Tomcats have retaken the lead. Marshall will check out for the time being. They missed the free throw. They miss another free throw. Haywood is four out of seven right now on the free throw line. TJ Jackson back in, by the way. Can you hear this at home? This is thunderous here tonight. Good move inside. Shot is no good by Marshall. Good offensive rebound. What a move. Oh, it's going to be missed by Anderson. We get a whistle and a foul. It'll go against Haywood. Two free throws coming up for Travis Anderson. Foul going to be called on J.B. Snipe, his second. First one by Anderson is up and good at 31-30. Second one is up and good. Blyville has Reed taking the lead. This will be fun to break down at halftime. Final two minutes so important right now for both teams. Snipe inside the paint and it's no good. He misses that shot. TJ Jackson. Shamar Marshall now. Oh, Washington. What a lane. Counted and a foul. 34 31. That'll be a foul on J.B. Snipe, and that is number three on him. And now Phillips is back in. Washington, three of four tonight so far. Makes it four-point game again. One at 38. Blyville trying to get some momentum and a run going before halftime. Janarius Snipe. Oh, what a move. Goes up top. Not, can't finish that time. Rebounded by Jackson. Here comes Anderson. Anderson out to Keyshawn Washington. Oh, we're going to get a foul. I believe it's going to be on LeKendrick Phillips. It is. And that is number one. Two shot foul coming up for Washington.
All right, Keyshawn Washington now. He is four out of five tonight. Listen to the Haywood section. He misses that one. Still a four-point lead. It is... It's up and it is good. Thirty-six, thirty-one. Chapman going to have it stripped away, but they're able to get it right back. Final minute going up. Oh, what a shot by Janarius Snipe. Count it and one. Comage on the assist. Can make this a two-point game again. Once again, I want to go on the record. I don't care who wins. I want to see a great ball game, and we're seeing that tonight in Poplar Bluff. Snipe, he's got six, misses that free throw. That's been the one area right now that's really haunted Haywood is the missed free throws. So far in the ball game, they're four of eight. They're down by three. So now Washington, nearly a turnover there. Anderson, good move inside. Anderson shoots and scores. A nice bunny there. Inside the paint, 38-33, a five-point game. Final 30 seconds. Chapman, they're not going to hold the ball. Three-point ball. Off the mark, it's no good. It's going to be Comage. Had a great look at the basket, just could not get it to fall. It will remain with Haywood with about 23 seconds left. Now, Janer or make that Phillips out to Chapman for three, buddy. Oh, what a shot by Chapman. Two, a point game again. Keyshawn Washington. Oh, what a shot. He's got 11. We are going to halftime. What a first half. Oh, my goodness, what a first half. Forty thirty-six is the score on this one. Tim and I are going to take a little break. We have to. We're going to come back. We'll break it all down. Don't go anywhere. You're watching live coverage exclusively of the 35th annual Popper Bluff Showdown presented by the Popper Bluff R1 School District, First Midwest Bank, and today's talk, KWOC. We got to go back on. Blyville now taking Tim down to half court there. Oh, they were trying to get the hate. Oh, they were trying the Blyville. Here we go. They were trying to get the Blyville folks were trying to get Haywood cheerleaders out there for a little dance off. I thought it was going to happen. I thought it was going to happen. Oh, what a first half. What a first half that we have seen by both teams. We're going to go over all the stats here in detail. Got to catch the old breath here. 
40-36 is the score right now. The Blyville section, they were they're erupting. Haywood, they've erupted tonight. And I'm not so sure that we're not going to get a dance-off here at some point in halftime, Tim. I'm not sure. Trying to wait and see what happens here. Watching our, our tournament director, Kent Keith, he's down there talking to him. They may get a section to come out here and perform. I don't know. I'm waiting to see here at halftime. What a game. What a game. That Darian Combs right here beside me. We've had five lead changes so far. The biggest lead was when Haywood led by six. Early in the ball game, it was nine to three. Bench points right now, Blyville. Blyville's got four bench points. Haywood's got none. Points off of turnovers, both with seven. So I, I, I'm assuming that the Blyville I'm not sure, and if I'm wrong, correct me on Facebook or YouTube and let me know. I'm not sure if it is the dance team or the cheerleaders. I'm not sure which one, but they're getting together, and they might be doing something coming up before the halftime is over. I have no idea. Here in the first half, Richard Marshall, 15 points in the ball game so far. Seven rebounds. Eleven by Keyshawn Washington. Ten by TJ Jackson. And then four by Travis Anderson. And that's it so far. On the other end, for Haywood, eleven right now by JB Snipe. You've got eight by Tylen Chapman. Seven by Jamari Person. Six by Janaris Gener Snipe. And then four points by Jakari Comage. That's where we are right now. Haywood and Blyville tied up at 17 points apiece in that first quarter. And then second quarter, it was Blyville 23, Haywood 19. And that's where we sit right now at the half. I tell you what, what a great performance by both teams here tonight. That's what we wanted was a great competitive game. We are getting that right here tonight. We have gotten that so far in the first half with Blyville leading by two right now. They lead. Cheer and dance. Thank you, Miss Johnson. I, pre I wasn't sure. Nobody told me. And I was already on the air when they got here, so thank you for letting me know. Boy, how cool. We saw the Haywood cheerleaders. They performed earlier. I got a feeling that this cheer and dance squad of Blyville, they're going to be getting the crowd going in the second half. All right, we've got ourselves a great ball game coming up or coming back at you. We're going to take about a two-minute timeout and come right back. Second half is on the way next. You're watching live coverage of the 35th annual Popper Bluff Showdown Championship Game, Haywood and Blyville. We're back in just a moment live. Presented by First Midwest Bank and Popper Bluff R1 Schools.
All right, so we are back. We're going to get back to live action here in just a moment. We're going to give away this Academy gift card coming up. So I said 200 shares, so let's be realistic. Let's get to, let's get to 120. I'm okay with that number. Right now we're sitting at what, 90, 90. Let's get to 125. What do you say? 125, we'll give it away. That's a reasonable request, I would think, Tim. I think. Thirty-nine and a half games down. One more half to go. One more half to go. We've got a minute left. It'll be Blyville basketball when we begin. Comments have been roaring in. All ball game long. So yes, there is the cheer and dance team. If they have decided they're gonna come out and they're going to do some stuff too. We'll get them on camera. We'll get them as well. We wanna be fair to everybody here tonight. But I'm still not convinced that at this point in the game, I have no idea who is gonna win this game. So let's get with it. Social media, YouTube, let's get loud again. Oh, what's it going to take? What team is going to pull out the victory tonight? What team is it going to be? Is it going to be Blyville? They've got a four-point lead. Is it going to be Haywood? Are they going to come back? Let's find out right now. What do you say? We are underway in the second half. Blyville, their cheer and dance. They are now going to match toe-to-toe -to -toe with Haywood on the other side. You better believe things just picked up a notch here. Good move by Shamar Marshall. His shot is no good. Rebounded by Tylan Chapman. Good job there by, by Haywood. So now Tomcats. Tylan Chapman, pull up jumper is no good. Rebounded that time by TJ Jackson. So Rashad Marshall, he is back in there as well. Oh, what a move, what a, what a pass to Marshall. And he's got 17 points in this ball game and now a 42-36 ball game. It is the biggest lead of the night right now by Blyville. It is the biggest lead right now. Forty-two to thirty-six. Comidge. He drives inside, cuts it back down to four. So now Keyshawn Washington gives it to the big man out front. Nearly a turnover there. Good job by Comich. Comich has had a really good ball game so far tonight. All five starters on the floor for both teams. How do you defend it? Richard Marshall again. He's got 19, 44, 38. Man, what a player. What an athlete. A 4A school in Arkansas. J.B. Snipe, his shot is no good. Cleared out by the big man, by Rashad Marshall. Oh, another lob pass again, and this one goes right back in. 21, 21 for the big man. It is now an eight point ball game, Haywood. So far, Haywood has been outscored six to two here in the quarter. Blyville leads by eight. 
Comidge gets a lane, goes up, it's no good. It is rebounded by Marshall. Marshall's gonna have a double-double. There is Shamar Marshall, and now it's a 10-point game. It is a 10-point game, each team with five timeouts, and we're gonna take one now. The Tomcats, they will use their first timeout of the ball game. It's gonna be a full timeout. We will step away as well. No, we'll stay here. We'll get uh, we'll get the Blyville dance and cheer. Haywood, they're gonna start their cheer as well. Deafening here tonight, no doubt. You better believe that both won this championship tonight. All right, so there you go, following the timeout. Forty-eight to thirty-eight, the score. Man, everybody commenting here tonight. I love this. This is amazing atmosphere. Jamari Person now. As Comage fade away in the corner is no good. Rebounded by the Chickasaws. Keyshawn Washington. Boy, good job. Good hands by Jeremiah Wells. Bobbled it for a moment. Got it right back. Good move by Jeremiah Wells, no good. Rebounded by Comage. Here comes Haywood, JB Snipe for three. It's gonna be short. Rebounded by Blyville. Key, oh, it's no good by Shamar Marshall. JB Snipe gonna have it ripped away by Keyshawn Washington. Oh, Washington, he misses that one, but TJ Jackson is going to clean it up, and he's got a dozen. 50 to 38 now. It is a 10 to 2 run to begin the quarter. Boy, one thing about where we are now as Tyler Chapman ends the run, I was just going to say they don't want to get out. Haywood, Andrew, is located in Brownsville, Tennessee. Two hours and 21 minutes from right here in Poplar Bluff. Andrew Jefferson tuning in tonight. Now Rashad Marshall out to Keyshawn Washington. The floater is no good. Good job there by Janarius Snipe. Still a 10 point ball game again, 50 to 40. Chapman taking over. Oh, what a block. What a block by Rashad Marshall. Shamar Marshall. 52 to 40. He is having a performance of a lifetime right now. Marshall again a rebound. Marshall already in the ball game. He is two rebounds away from a double-double. Counted and a foul. 23 big points. Blyville, a foul going to be called on a person, his first. It is a 14 point lead. Make it 15 points. Good shot by Haywood there to end a small drought, 55 to 42. Janarius Snipe over the big fella. He's got eight points. And now Marshall, he's gonna go all the way in, 26. 26 points 
when you're six foot nine and that athletic. We get a whistle and a foul on Keyshawn Washington. It'll be his second foul, first of the half. One fifty-two to play here in the third quarter. What a move by Snipe. What a move, and he's got two more. 57-44, Blyville about this time last night, down by 13. They forced overtime. Can Haywood come back? Can Haywood make a run? Rashard Marshall, he's asking for the lob pass. This time, Person takes it away. Marshall is eating tonight. 26 points. 112. Good move by J.B. Snipe. It's 11 again. It's 11. Fifty-seven to forty-six. Marshall wants the ball. Oh, he led a little too far that time. A turnover as Marshall could not hang on to it. So Marshall gonna take a quick breather. Anderson back in the ball game. And this is the time right now for Haywood. If they're gonna make a run right now, might be the time. Denarius Snipe misses the first one, gets his rebound, and now it's a nine-point game again. Haywood storming back. 57-48. It was a four-point game going into halftime. 20 seconds. Oh, what a steal. What a steal by Person. He misses. Follow-up by Tylen Chapman, he gets fouled. So Chapman is gonna have a chance, and here comes Marshall back in the ball game. Can't afford to get much rest. Shante Campbell says, don't count out the Tomcats. No way, not by a long shot. That'll be Jeremiah Wells, third foul. Chapman, 10 points, makes the first one. Marshall back in the ball game. Tylen Chapman in the ball game. He is one of one on the free throw line. It is a eight point game. Blyville has outscored him 17 to 13. Misses the second one. Rebound by TJ Jackson. Here we go. Big possession right now, ending the third quarter. Can Haywood hang on? Nearly a turnover, Washington so fast with the ball, so fast, pull up jumper, bang! Oh, what a shot, oh, what a shot by Marshall or by Washington. Wow, what a shot. That was absolutely in impressive. He lost the handle, maintained his dribble, and buried a long two-pointer. Wow, what a shot. I need to go to break, but we're going to keep it right here. We can't afford to go to a break. We've got Haywood right now entertaining us. Blyville's about to entertain us. Blyville outscored Haywood by six in that quarter, 19 to 13. And now Haywood, they are down by 10 points. They know what awaits them. They know. I've got a feeling, I got a feeling that we haven't seen the best basketball yet by both teams. I think it's coming right now. Both teams, they want this desperately. Last night, Blyville had to go to overtime. 
It'll be Haywood basketball. Ten point game. What a move by Snyder. Oh, goaltending. It's going to be goaltending on Marshall. Give the two points to Janarius Snipe. And that makes it eight points again. This guy's an athlete. My goodness, he's a great athlete. So Washington, oh, gets a wide open lane. What a move, what a move. 15 on the ball game. I tell you what, Tim, this Blyville fan section here tonight, they are ready to erupt. Chapman is going to quiet them down a little bit with a two-pointer. He's got 13 points here tonight. We still have the all-tournament team to announce tonight as well. I bet you a couple of these guys on each team makes it. Going to go out of bounds. Last touch by Haywood. If I'm a if I'm a betting man, I would say Rashad Marshall, hands down, on the all-tournament team. Keyshawn Washington. I know Janarius Snipes will be there. Tylen Chapman, I would say absolutely as well. Maybe J.B. Snipe. These guys are so fun to watch. So much great competition we're watching right now. Marshall again, 28 points. 28. Janaria Snipe with 14. Make it 16. Goes over the top of Rashawn Marshall, 63-55. Thank you so much, Miss Pierce. I appreciate that. Thank you for the kind compliments. It's you fans. It's you fans from Brownsville, Tennessee. From Blyville, Arkansas. There's a big steal. Oh, right back. Right back to Shamar Marshall. Oh, my goodness. What another good steal. And now Tylen Chapman outside. J.B. Snipe for three money. Oh, what a shot. Tylen Chapman knew exactly where he was. Haywood fans are on their feet now. It is a five-point game. We're in the fourth quarter. Keyshawn Washington. This is one of the best basketball atmospheres I've been a part of. I've done this for 14 years. This is incredible. Three-point ball by Wells. No good. Rebounded by Janarius Snipe. Tylen Chapman outside. Janarius Snipe. Oh, he wanted that three-pointer. He backed away from it. Wide open is Person, blocking foul. Oh, he's mad at himself for not finishing it, but he gets two free throws coming up. It'll be a foul on Keyshawn Washington. Man, the voice is about to go. It's about to go, but this game is well worth it. What a hell of a game tonight we're watching here, folks. First one is up. It's good by Person. Timeout called by Blyville. I believe it's a full timeout. Full timeout it is. We'll step away for 30 seconds. You're watching live coverage of the 35th annual Popper Bluff Showdown presented by the Popper Bluff R1 School District, First Midwest Bank, and today's talk, KWOC.
and Gava. I'm going to pick a winner coming up in just a moment on our Academy Sports and Outdoors gift card. What a great game. Five, or four point ball game right now. Jamari Person, eight points to make this a one possession game again. No good. Good job by Shamar Marshall. Here we go. We've got ourselves a ball game again, Tim. Tell you what, oh, what a good lob pass again. Shamar, I make that to Rashad Marshall. Tell you what, watching the comments come in on social media right now on Facebook and on YouTube. YouTube is blowing it up right now on the chat. Facebook getting kind of quiet out there. Don't know, Haywood fans. I don't know, Blyville fans. Where are you at right now? That's a big foul, by the way, on J.B. Snipe is number four. Marshall, 29 big points in the ball game already. Like Kendrick Phillips, no shot clock in Mizzou, at, in Missouri high school sports, by the way. Derek, none. Tylen Chapman, he answers right back with a big bucket. 65-61. All right, I'm glad to see the fans are still here. Well over 160 right now on Facebook. Where are we at on YouTube right now? 919 on YouTube, it's incredible. Marshall with a big bucket. 32 points, an absolute stud, no doubt. No matter who wins this game, Tylen Chapman, Shot is no good. Be rebounded by the Blyville Chickasaws. Here we go. Still a lot of game left to go. Lots of game left. Ed Norton tuning in here tonight. What a move by TJ Jackson. It is an eight point game again. 3.27 to go. Boy, right here is a time that Haywood needs a big bucket. They need a big shot. 32 points by Rashad Marshall. That's a great battle right now with Janaria Snipe. Goes up, no good. Good defense that time by Marshall. This time, Marshall wins the battle. He wins the battle right now. Get a whistle and a foul coming up. The next time out, we will have ourselves a winner. We'll so a foul going to be on Comage. And now Keyshawn Washington, 15 points. It's up, it's good. It is a nine point game and now they're gonna have to go right back to J.B. Snipe. Phillips will take a seat. You're right, Ed. Marshall showing why he's going to Ole Miss. Here tonight, 70-61. Second one is up and good. 10 point game again. Oh man, that free throw a few moments ago by Haywood could have made it a one possession game. Chapman, still a lot of time left. Chapman. What a response by the timeout. We get an official's timeout here. I'm not sure something is on the court. Looks like some water or something on the court. So an official's timeout. Seventy-one to sixty-one to score. Something with the scoreboard. I'm not sure what it is. T 
2.35 to go in the ball game. It's going to get loud here these last two minutes. If Haywood gets on the big shot here, Tylen Chapman does just that. Eight-point game again. Oh, my goodness. Marshall again. Oh, it's going to be fouled by Janarius Snipe. So Snipe on his third personal foul. Foul shots coming up by Marshall. Man, he is an absolute beast. Chapman, Tylen Chapman. Yes, he is a six-foot senior. Marshall makes them both. It is back to a 10-point game. Marshall trying to bring his team back down by 10. They've got a lot of work to do. Chapman misses that shot. Marshall on the rebound. Coming up after this game, no matter who wins, we will have live post-game analysis with the coach and maybe a player or two. Who knows? 137 now. Three-point ball by Wells. No good. It's going to go out of bounds. Last touched by Blyville. Coach Pierce did not like the shot taken by, by Wells. He points to his forehead and says, use your head. An extra possession right now. And we get a whistle, timeout called. It'll be a 30-second timeout. All right, the Academy Sports and Gift Card, $100. We're going to give it to Roger Myers. Roger Myers. I just sent you a message on Facebook. Not even sure where you're from. So Roger Myers will reach out to you again following this game. Just picked up $100 from Academy Sports and Outdoors. One at 23 to go in the ball game. What a game here tonight. No matter who wins, these two teams, they have made this night special on all way around. Seventy three or seventy three to sixty five. It is an eight-point game. Seventy-three, sixty-five. So a timeout called. Great showdown indeed. Lee Wallace is tuning in. Danny Salzar, a happy birthday. Absolutely. For Danny Salzar, happy birthday. He is an assistant coach on the Blyville squad. Thank you for letting me know that. Thank you, Mary. I appreciate that. Happy birthday to Coach Salzar on the Blyville squad. Listen to this fan section right now by both teams. It is absolutely deafening in here. No matter who wins this ball game, each team, they deserve, they deserve the title no matter who wins. It has been that kind of game. One minute to go, eight point ball game. And we're gonna get a whistle here. I think a, a foul coming up on person. I think it's going to be a foul. So it's going to be on, on Jamari Person. 
That is team foul number five now. One more foul to give before we're in the bonus. Wide open three ball. This one is no good by Marshall. Snipe, JB Snipe, he'll take a three, it's off. Rebounded by Marshall. 38 seconds left. Tylen Chapman for three, it's off the mark. And now 29 seconds, eight point game. Shamar Marshall is just gonna back it out and a foul gonna be called. 24.6. We are in no shape or form riding off any team. If this doesn't turn out for Haywood, they've got nothing to be ashamed about. They played a great ball game here tonight. I know the scoreboard says they're down by eight points, but man, Haywood, they come to play tonight. Blyville, they said, for those Blyville fans tuning in, I gotta tell you, they brought up, they brought up a player at the banquet, and I wanna say it was Shamar, it was Shamar Marshall. He made it very clear. They came to this tournament undefeated, and they were gonna leave undefeated, and that's where we are right now with 23 seconds left. Not, and believe me when I say this, Haywood fans, You've got a great ball team, no doubt about it. They are amazing to watch, very fun to watch. And I've enjoyed every bit of this. Tylen Chapman, still not giving up, just like that. Still not giving up, 21 points for him, timeout called. Rashard Marshall, you can go and pick a lot of players. Keyshawn Washington, 19, TJ Jackson, 14. Check out that section over there in Blyville country there, Tim. Look at them. That is absolutely amazing stuff right there. Absolutely amazing. I was gonna say Rashard Marshall, 34 points, 11 rebounds. This man was 12 of 12 on the free throw line at six foot nine. He shot the ball 11 for 13 tonight, 85%. I thank you for letting us come into your home all week. The last three days have been nothing short of amazing. Tracy, thank you so much. This is, like I said before, no sympathy. This is my 40th basketball game this month from December 1st through tonight. Man, it's been such an amazing ride. Such an amazing ride. Tim, you've done a great job this month, my friend. My boy Chance doing his thing on the scoreboard tonight for everybody. Hats off to Haywood for an amazing night. Haywood's got nothing to be ashamed about, but Blyville fans, you came, you conquered. Congratulations to Blyville. This was a hard fought journey for the Chickasaws. Down by 13 last night. Down by 13, forcing overtime. And that's gonna be the way the game comes to a close. I will stand up and I will clap. What a game. What a way to end this tournament. Get that celebration on camera right there by the Chickasaws. Liveville Nation, congratulations on a hard-fought game. Coming up, we will have a live interview on the way with the winning coach. We're going to stay with us right now. They're going to present the tournament trophy. We'll leave the audio going, and we'll come right back.
What a job by Haywood. They're going to be presenting the trophies here in just a moment, second place and first place. We are going to talk to Coach Pierce. We will talk to Rashard Marshall coming up right after this game. Let's go back down courtside for the official presentation for second place to the Haywood Tomcats. What a ball game for them. What a tournament for Haywood. What a tournament. Boy, I tell you what, Tim, we'll let you get Haywood in that shot. We've got final stats here, final numbers. Thank you so much, Willie, from Three Rivers College. We'll give you all the numbers. Haywood, man, what an impressive team. I know they're going to leave here disappointed. I know that. But, man, they had a heck of a ride. Haywood is such a good team, well-disciplined, well-coached. Coach Rodney Chapman, he is class act all the way. He is gold in my book. Now we go down once again for this year's tournament champions. They are 90 minutes away from Popper Bluff. They are the Blyville Chickasaws. They said back in the banquet they were going to come in undefeated and they were going to leave undefeated and that's exactly what they did. They called their shot. It's not cocky when you can back it up and they did just that here tonight and yesterday. What a great team by Blyville. Congratulations to the Blyville Chickasaws and their fan base. We will have the all-tournament team in just a moment also. Also, we're going to be talking with the head coach. We'll talk to him as well as Rashad Marshall. Rashad Marshall in just a moment. Gives me a chance to kind of catch my breath just a little bit. Mackenzie Pierce will join me in just a little bit. And now, now the cheer and dance team for Blyville, they're going to come out and they're going to celebrate, and they should. It's a well-deserved victory. There's no doubt about it. So now we're going to have the all-tournament team for just a moment. Then we're going to talk to Rashad Marshall and Mackenzie Pierce. I know it's family back home that couldn't make it. I'm sure they want to hear from the coach himself, and we'll do that. We picked seven members from, this, from the tournament field, and let me tell you, it was one of the toughest seven I've had to ever pick. So Landron Blocker from Little Rock Christian, he is going to be on the all-tournament team. Anthony Medlock, he was on my all-tournament team. Isaiah Sealy, absolutely. No surprise there. No surprise there, Janarius Snipe from Haywood. Never a doubt in my mind on that one. Never a doubt. Keyshawn Washington, no doubt in my mind. What an athlete. All tournament. Corlin 
Roland Muldrew. I know who the other one is. He wears number 25. It has to be. And our final member of the ultimate team, also a unanimous selection, number five, number 25, Rashad Marshall. There you go, Rashad Marshall. Well deserved. That young man, he's got a bright future ahead of him, six foot nine. Headed to Old Miss after this year. Tracy Taylor, absolutely. You make sure and tell Coach, Coach Chapman how much that we've enjoyed having him in this tournament in Poplar Bluff. He was a class act all the way. JB, Janaria Snipe, they were amazing. Tylen Chapman, so much fun to watch. So much fun to watch. So coming up in just a moment, we're going to have... So we're going to have the coach come up. Here comes Rashawn Marshall as well. We'll get Marshall. We'll get Coach Pierce up as well. Oh, we've got ourselves a great player coming up here, Tim. Hang out with us. Don't go anywhere. Snipes headed to Colorado State. Yes, he is. We're going to let... We're going to let Marshall get right in here. Have a seat, big guy. Absolutely. Put this on for me. Drop that mic. There you go. Just drop, there you go. No, I don't like talking. <laughs> All right. So, first off, congratulations. Thank you. Thank Mr. you. Marshall. And I tell you what, you were so fun to watch. And your fan base, man, they were absolutely amazing. Last night, down by 13, you guys pulled into high gear, go into overtime, going into a game tonight against Haywood. Walk us through the emotions and walk us through the game in general. Hey, all I got to say first is, hey, first is Blav here, man. I'm glad everybody showed out tonight, came out and supported us. Hey, I'm thinking my teammates, practice, we're playing hard, practicing hard every day, you know. You were down low all game long. Every ball game this year, undefeated, you get double teamed, triple teamed. Free throw line, 12 out of 12. Are you kidding me? Oh, yes, sir. Yes, sir. That was an impressive move at six foot nine, and you play like you – I mean, you, you have so much rhythm. It is amazing. And talk about your teammates, Keyshawn Washington, you two A on dog. the all-tournament team, TJ Jackson. A dog. Unbelievable. Yes, sir. All of them dog. Shamar Marshall, Jam uh, Jeremiah Wells, uh, TJ Jackson. We got Keyshawn. Hey, we all dogs. In the tournament banquet back on to or Wednesday, you guys came in. I forgot who even spoke now. You guys Jamal made it Marshall. very clear. Yeah, that's who I thought yes, it sir. was. You guys made it very clear. You guys coming in undefeated Leaving and staying undefeated. the same way. Yes, sir. Tell you, after last night's win in overtime, how tired was this Blyville team? We were very tired. When we got back to the hotel, that's all we were saying, man. We tired, but we're not done yet. We got one more left. One more left. You got it done. So now the most important thing is you'll take this win. You guys will move on to the second part of your season. What I want to know, what your fans back home want to know, you guys are going to make a deep run for that state title. Oh, yes, sir. We're not done yet. You know, we just got to keep on fighting, keep on practicing. You know, we're going we're gonna to be there again. Your fans showed out in Popper Bluff. They showed out tonight on I YouTube and Facebook. Base. I love Blav here, man. So do me a favor, that camera right there, look at them and oh, yes, tell them sir. how much you love them. Hey, I love y'all, Blavia. Thanks for showing up, man. Thanks for showing up all three days. You know, we ain't done yet, man. Six foot nine, going to Old Miss. Congratulations. You were a fun sight to watch tonight. 34 big points. Oh, yes, sir. What was it like getting those points here tonight? How difficult was it for you? Hey, you made it look easy. Hey, you know, hey, I, love, I love how they play defense on me. But, you know, we came out. What I liked was your dance and cheer team. They got the oh, crowd yes. into it, oh, no yes, doubt sir. about it. Yes, sir. Shout out to Blyville cheer team, man, for showing out. Shout out Miss Keanu for bringing all of them. Yes, yes absolutely. Sir. And I also got a, a, a big shout out to, uh, was it called the Dixie Pig there in oh, Blyville? Yes, I got Shout a big bottle of barbecue Pig, sauce. I love it. Oh, I'm, yes, I'm excited. Blyville fan right here sitting beside you. Congratulations. You, Go enjoy you. the win and good luck in the future oh, to yes, you. Oh, yes, sir. All right. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you. Absolutely. Rashard Marshall joining us live. We're going to get in the head coach now. We'll get head coach McKenzie Pierce, and we'll talk to him about what this game means to him, the team, and more importantly, maybe more importantly, the community of Blyville in itself. 
We'll let Coach Pierce go ahead now and get mic'd up. Coach, three straight nights, three straight ball games. The last two, man, they were a battle all the way to the end. No doubt. Two really good teams. And, uh, you know, shout out to Haywood. They're, they're a really good team. They're tough. They play hard. You know, they're, they're a team that, as a coach, you enjoy watching them because they play the right way. They play together. They play hard. Uh, you know, they're very respectful. They, they, they play the game the right way. And they were a tough out. Um, they gave us all we wanted. And like I said, we had opportunities to kind of uh, put them away, and they kept clawing back. They could have folded. We, I thought we did a great job in the second half coming out and asserting our will. And um, we had a chance to kind of put away. We had three bad turnovers there at the end of the third quarter, kind of let them leak back in. But we were able to come back in the fourth quarter and deliver another big punch and, and keep it at a double-digit deficit. On the side note, the, maybe the most important comment I can make to you, you've got somebody back home, super proud of Dad, Connor. Does that ring, ring a bell to you? Say that again. Connor? He couldn't be here tonight. Super proud of you back Cooper? at home. Or Cooper, Cooper, I'm sorry. Yeah, Cooper, there were so many Cooper. comments coming yeah. in. I can't keep it straight. But he was watching all night yeah. long. Asked me to give him we'll, a shout we'll, out. We'll bring that. We'll bring that back for you, there, buddy. There you go. I know your family is back home watching. And I was telling Tim, we cover Bluff. This was my 14th year covering Popper Bluff in this tournament. I don't think I've ever been involved in an atmosphere quite like this. You guys. Haywood, Blyville tore the house down here in Bluff tonight. Yeah, it was an unbelievable atmosphere. Uh, you know, shout out Chick Nation for showing up, traveling. They came in deep tonight. Um, you know, they they support us every night. We feel the love 24-7, 365, and we knew they'd be here tonight. And uh, like I said, like I told them last night, we were going to black it out. So they had to show up tonight, and they did that, and they showed up loud and proud. You know, we talked to Rashard Marshall a moment ago at 34 points, but, man, Keyshawn Washington, 21 big points again. This guy was everywhere on the floor. He was rebounding, getting the assist, and when it mattered most, he was getting those steals. No doubt. He's a big-time player, both those guys. Like I said, obviously Rashad gets, you know, the accolades, and uh, he's a four-star, should be a five-star. Uh, but Keyshawn, you know, like I said, He's 5'7", but he don't play like 5'7", and there's there's some college coaches that are going to miss out on this cat because they're scared of him being 5'7", but it's like we said last night, if he was six foot, you wouldn't be able to get him. He's a big-time player. I think he's one of the best point guards, not only in the state, but in the country. I mean, he's just an unbelievable player. He's, he's just – his demeanor is just unreal. He never wavers. You know, you could be up 20, down 20. He's got the same face, same look, same energy. I said the, the, mo the, the thing – he's just a true point guard. He's a throwback point guard who can score in the flow of the game. You know, a lot of times, if things are going well, we're come, if we come out like like we did the first night here, you know, he wasn't he wasn't scoring a lot. He was getting everybody right. involved. And, right. But kind of like last night, things weren't going good, and he kind of took it over and kind of same thing tonight. And like I said, they, they were they were really – you could tell they were really putting a lot of pressure on Rashad and, and trying to press up on our shooters, and it gave him drives to the basket, and he was able to finish over a lot of size and athleticism out there. I was talking to Rashad a moment ago and Shamar Marshall, man. It's not cocky when you can back it up. You come in the tournament, he, you, you didn't like what he said when he said, we coming in and undefeated, leaving the same way. You guys proved tonight why you guys are 16-0. Where does this win rank in terms of, you know, importance to the team so far this year? Uh, you know, I we try not to get too high or too low. Obviously, it's a big win because it's it's a it's a great tournament uh, with I mean, eight tremendous programs in it. So obviously, that says a lot about us. But you know, we're we're a veteran group. Uh, we've been through this. We've won. Uh, I mean, we've won. We ain't lost a conference game in three years. We've won several conference championships, Christmas tournaments, Thanksgiving tournaments. We know what our end goal is, and uh, that we're trying to keep uh, the main thing the main thing, keep the eye on the prize. And so we're going to celebrate tonight. We're going to enjoy it. It means a lot. Uh, but like I said, this doesn't this doesn't make or break our season either way. This doesn't determine. You know, it's a great win. We're excited. That's what we came here to do. But like I said, we got we got bigger fish to fry, and we'll enjoy it. We'll enjoy it uh, tonight, tomorrow, and get ready for January second at home versus Pocahontas. Two more questions. We'll let you get back to your team. Number one, I've I've heard it all night long. Is this team ready? I know it's only December right now, but is this team ready to make a deep push coming up in the state playoffs? I believe so, but you know it's one day at a time, and the state playoffs are still you know eight, nine, ten weeks away. Um, you know I talked about. A couple of weeks ago, I was doing an interview. I said, you know, the biggest thing I worry about is complacency. Uh, you can't get complacent. I mean, we got to continue to work. We got to continue to get better because at the end of the day, you know, we're not sneaking up on anybody. We're going to get everybody's best punch night in, night out, and we got to continue to work and grind every day in practice, and that's where we're going to make our money. 
I think Tim, and I speak for Tim as well, but you've got three Blyville fans sitting right here. Tim is one. My son Chance said, Dad, that's a basketball team right there. Sir. He's been here all week watching your team. So final message, you've got, we've got over 500 right now of the, of the Chickasaw Nation watching on YouTube. Tonight, look in that camera. Tell them how much it means to you. They were following you guys all week long, showing up in here and showing out all week. Hey, thank you as always. We appreciate you. We appreciate the love and support back home, people that were able to travel here. I'm really proud of the guys. You know, I think uh, the biggest thing about this team is they play for each other. They love one another. And, and we always want to be the bright spot in our community. We always want to be a positive. When people talk about Blavel, Basketball wants to be the next thing that, that pops in their mind when people say Blyville. And uh, we, we hope that we're reflecting good on the community, and we appreciate y'all. And, and everywhere we go, we're representing the maroon and white. Coach, I appreciate the opportunity. It's been my pleasure to have you on, my honor to bring you on. Congratulations. Go enjoy the win. Best of luck to you guys going forward. And eventually, later on this season, bring home that state yes, title. What yes, do you sir. say? Yes, sir. We're going to do our best. Yes, All sir. right. Coach Pierce, it. thank you so appreciate much. It. Appreciate, appreciate you. It. Thank you all. Mackenzie Pierce here joining us live, the Blyville head coach doing a phenomenal job with the Blyville Chickasaws. They are now 16-0, and 0, and this will cap off in unreal December. When I told you this earlier, I wasn't lying. 40 games this month alone that Tim and I have done this, and I got to tell you, without Tim, I couldn't do this without him. Best camera guy in the business. Let's thank a few, for, a few folks. First off, get over here, boy. This kid right here, a rock star all the way around. Love this kid. He's my heart, my son. Showed up this week, last week, did the scoreboard for you guys to make sure you knew what the score was and the time. Thank you, buddy. I appreciate you a lot. Also, we want to thank, again, the Popper Bluff R1 School District. I want to thank John Scott, the school board president, Dr. Scott Deal, superintendent. Also, the director tournament, or the tournament director and the Mules athletic director, Kent Keith. I also want to thank on our staff, I want to thank our general manager, John Rice, our sales manager, Cheresca Stockton. Once again, Tim Hicks, great job as always. Thank you so much to all the fans, all the teams. You guys have kept us going all month long. Without you guys this week, we couldn't do what we do. We can't wait for next season. We want you back with us. Next Mules game, shout out next week in Joplin. We'll be there. Have a safe and happy new year. Thank you again for tuning in. I'm Frankie Castillo. We're saying so long tonight from the 35th annual Popper Bluff Showdown. You've been watching live coverage. It is presented by First Midwest Bank, Popper Bluff R1 Schools, and today's talk, KWOC. Good night, and we'll see you back here next year.